Hi, I would like to invite you to Patreon or to the official website where I upload over 250 chapters of various books, including content not permitted on YouTube, and where most of the updated or completed audiobooks for the latest releases are available. That was easy. Adamus arrogantly said and walked next to his brother Alec. He patted Alec's shoulder and grinned viciously. Alec sighed with relief and said. That we should probably leave Ramu. Why? Adamus asked, his smirk disappearing from his face. What if they send another martial king? They still have that mad king on their ranks. Alec shivered after he mentioned that name. Adamus snorted. Dot so what? I don't need to be scared of anyone anymore. Alec paled. Dot be but brother, dot enough. Adamus said sharply. That we won't be escaping like rats. Alec sighed and shook his head. He has a bad feeling about this. Dot boss. They both heard a loud shout. They turned their heads around and saw one of the henchmen starting to panic. What is it? Adamus asked with annoyance. Dot T they are not dead. Enforcement department soldiers aren't dead. Adamus and Alec widened their eyes. Impossible. Adamus shouted with disbelief. But then. Bill O.M. an explosion appeared on the front gate, a few hundred meters away from them. From there. A group of men with angry expressions walked in. All of them wore a soldier uniform with colors of black and gray. While the man leading them was a muscular-looking man, with a buzz-cut hairstyle. He was standing with a menacing aura in front of the soldiers. Dot that's them. One of the henchmen paled in fear. T.S.K. Adamus clicked his tongue after seeing his subordinate starting to panic. But he was also greatly surprised seeing them alive. Mars and his soldiers were looking at the trembling henchmen. Then their gazes turned to Adamus. And their faces turned solemn. Captain. One of the soldiers said with hesitation. Mars sighed. Yep. It seems that their boss is Marshal King now. How bothersome. The soldiers aimed their guns towards the henchmen, a much more serious demeanor surrounding them. Mars' aura also soared to the sky. He emitted an invisible pressure. And the henchmen felt it clearly, which made them even paler. Adamus saw his subordinates cowering in fear, he only scoffed. He raised his hand. A green ball appeared on his hand which illuminated the night sky. Nuclearian sky hell. He shot the ball straight to the sky. All of the people present looked at the green ball which kept flying straight into the sky. Then once the green ball reached a certain altitude. It exploded. Swish hundreds of miniature green balls exploded from the previous glowing green ball. The miniature green balls accelerated straight to the ground. Mars looked at the scene without a expression. He saw that Adamus had absolutely no control simply fancy attack. His henchmen will be the only ones who will be affected by that attack. Because Mars will protect his soldiers. Mars put his hands wide. Like he was about to receive a hug. But then his body started to emit black smoke. Harmful Rodfanger. The black smoke instantly covered the soldiers, but it didn't harm them. Instead, after they got covered by black smoke. The black smoke solidified, which covered the soldier's body. They were unable to move. But also when the miniature green balls hit them. They stayed unharmed. Dot arh. One of the henchmen cried in agony after the green ball hit his shoulder, which instantly melted his arm off. Most of the henchmen got very serious injuries. Some of them even died. Damn it. Adamus cursed, but then he scoffed. He couldn't care less that some of them died. He was only slightly angry, because his attack didn't harm the soldiers. Adamus raised his hand, it was now pointing at the sky. Flames started to appear from his hand. Instantly the area around the hideout heated up. The ground started melting below him. His henchmen and his brother instantly retreated away from him. Pyrolyrian absolute hell. A huge fireball appeared in his hand. Soldiers and the henchmen were sweating heavily. Mars was still standing calmly, even though 90% of the heat was concentrated on him. But he didn't even sweat. Dot die. Adamus roared madly and threw the fiery flaming ball towards Mars. Harmful ignorance. 
the area in front of the fireball turned into black smoke. And instantly after the fireball collided with black smoke. It disappeared. Heat disappeared as well, and only the warm weather of summer remained. It was like a bad dream. How? Adamus roared in shock. Mars sighed and the earth around him cracked. With his face turning serious, he leaped through the air. Straight towards Adamus. Gur. Adamus gritted his teeth. His hands turned green and started shooting green balls at Mars. Nuclearian Death Show. Mars while in the air, looked Kami towards incoming green balls made of nuclear energy. He put his hand forwards. Black smoke started covering his body. Harmful synergy. The green balls hit the black smoke which was covering his body. But the green balls instantly disappeared once they were hit. Dot what? Adamus was shocked, truly shocked. It shouldn't be possible to block nuclear energy that easily. What is the true ability of Mars harmful? Mars landed on the ground, few meters away from Adamus. Growling. Adamus growled like an angry dog. He covered his arm on a green light and was about to attack Mars with it. Smack but then Mars punched at him. Straight at his face. Ah. Uh. Adamus stumbled backward, his cheeks started swelling. Again he tried to fuse his body with green energy, but then again Mars punched at him. Mars started punching him without mercy, not even using his power trait. Adamus' face started bruising, he looked like a stuffed balloon right now. Every time he tried to use his nucleokinesis. He noticed punch coming straight towards him. Mars mercilessly beat him up for another minute. Soldiers and the henchmen only looked blankly at the scene. Adamus who was at the same rank as him. Was getting absolutely demolished. And Mars wasn't even using his power trait. Soon afterward, Adamus fell down on the ground. His body filled with wounds, he couldn't even move anymore. But his eyes were still looking at Mars in despair. Mars crouched and looked him in the eye. Do you know why you lost? Mars asked. He shook his bruised face. Because you didn't use your martial arts. You were too drunk on the power the power trait gave you. That you forgot your basics you should never ignore the martial arts you trained your whole life, only because you received power trait you thought that your martial arts is useless power trait is made for your martial arts and if you don't use your martial arts. Your power trait will never be complete. Mars took a last look towards Adamus who was wailing in despair. He made another hit at Adamus' face, which knocked him out. The henchmen surrendered after seeing their leader getting defeated. Alec also with a hopeless expression, surrendered. Mars put the special handcuffs on the wrists of Adamus. These special handcuffs separate your body's connection with the unlocked limiter. This means that your power trait will be locked once you use the handcuffs. To get power trait you need to remove your limiter. But the limiter is always present. Using these handcuffs. The limiter will be connected again. But once your handcuffs will be taken off, your limiter will be removed again. These handcuffs are one of the best technological achievements in the world, and it was created in Arya. That's why Arya is the greatest in terms of technology and healing. Even Mark the Central Continent is far away in terms of technology. Soon afterward, multiple cars appeared on the hideout which belonged to Enforcement Department. Soon all the henchmen, Alec and Adamus were locked up in the cars. And soon afterward the cars left, taking them to the Enforcement Department's headquarters, where they will decide what to do with them. Usually, Marshall King is a valuable asset to have. So maybe Adamus will be recruited, but with serious supervision. And if they think he is too dangerous, he might get into maximum security prison. Or dead. Next, the soldiers entered the cars which were left for them after the helicopters got destroyed. And shortly afterward, Mars as well. Mars took the back seat. Soon their cars also left the hideout. Mars took the radio phone from his chest pocket. Reports. Point two target secured. A static voice said. Keep them safe until they leave Ramu, until then, stay on a lookout. Roger. Static voice said. Mars put the radiophone back to his chest pocket. Mars took the map and crossed the huge red circle. And now the whole map was full of crosses. Meaning that they took out the entire underworld of Ramu in a single night. 
The underworld of Ramu before today had around 50k members. But after this night, there is zero. And all this happened because of a certain young man from Irio. Usually, enforcement department isn't allowed to intervene between underworld's business because it can cause an all-out war. But now underworld leaders of other cities can't say anything. Because Ramu's underworld tried to intervene with the tournament, which is part of the enforcement department's territory. And if other underworld from other cities tries to start a war with the enforcement department now, then enforcement department will get help from other countries. Because they only did their jobs, and if the underworld is trying to intervene with their jobs, then there might not be underworld left. But if enforcement department tries to attack underworld without proper reason, then no one will help them in the war. Because underworld has rich supporters everywhere. Even in some of the highest places of hierarchy. But this was indeed a cruel warning to the underworld. And now that the news has spread everywhere in Jensa. And because of that. Arya's defensive forces will keep watch every action underworld does for next few months. Many sleepless nights were ahead of them. Boss. A middle-aged man ran in a hurry to the room, which was filled with the smell of tobacco, alcohol, and sex. Ugh, what? A deep voice was heard inside the room. The deep voice came from the bed, and three figures were currently lying there. An incredibly muscular-looking individual was lying down, while two brown-haired ladies were clinging to his body without any clothes, their naked bodies holding tightly at the torso of the muscular man. He was around 250 centimeters, and his naked body was on display which was filled with tattoos and scars. He raised his head and looked at the middle-aged man who ran to the room. The middle-aged man can now clearly see his features. He has dark red hair, an attractive face, and a sharp jawline. His muscular body perfectly described his strength. He sat down on the bed while the naked lady stayed asleep while still clinging to his muscular body, but it was a slightly unusual view because two women were barely 170 centimeters, while the red-haired man was 250 centimeters. The middle-aged man gulped heavily, with slight fear while looking at the monster of a man in front of him. What is it? The red-haired man roared in anger, which made the middle-aged almost fall down to the ground. Boss Arkentham. The middle-aged man said with a shaky tone, he then continued. Dot Ramu's underworld has been defeated. The red-haired man also known as Arkentham raised an eyebrow in surprise. He stood up from the bed and now his naked figure was shown clearly. His whole 500 kilograms of pure strength was a sight to behold, even his step caused slight cracks to appear on the ground. He grabbed his nightrobe and started wearing it. His nightrobe was dark red, fitting for his medium-length dark red hair. Arkentham ignored the middle-aged man and started walking out of the room. The middle-aged man followed swiftly behind him. He kept walking silently in the corridors, only light from the windows brightening his way. Shortly afterward he arrived at the big hall. A huge table was in the center of the hall with over fifty chairs. The fifty chairs were already mostly occupied, with only one chair remaining at the end of the table. That seat was way fancier compared to others. With word, Emperor. On the chair. Once Arkentham entered the room. Everyone in the chairs, stood up to show their respect. Arkentham gave a small nod in return and walked to the fancy chair and sat down. Once Arkentham sat down, everyone in the hall sat down as well. Let me hear it. Arkentham motioned to the man sitting close to him. The man nodded and stood up in his chair, he took the papers from the table and started reading. Dot a few hours ago a certain news came out in the Ramu's news station. They talked in the news about the tournament held in Ramu being rigged and the Ramu's higher-ups were responsible for it. And after doing that they showed three videos that made their claims correct. In the first video. Certain referees worked with a team to try to get certain individuals disqualified. In the second video. Referee of Armia vs. Irio Match confessed the rigging and blamed the Ramu's higher-ups for forcing him to do it. And in the third video. It was a video where Ramu's mayor talked on the phone. He talked about sending another martial commander to attack SLYCH because the first one failed. After the news came out it spread like a wildfire, and now the news has spread everywhere in Jensa, but because it is late and most of the citizens are sleeping, we can assume that the bigger impact will happen in the morning after everyone wakes up to hear about it. 
we are expecting that the news will spread everywhere in Arya in the next few days. After news ended the enforcement department with help of their direction Mars, started to attack Underworld and Yakuza hideouts. They first managed to capture most of the Ramu's higher-ups without any problem. Then they eliminated Yakuza's members and their leading figures. Then lastly they eliminated 80% of Underworld and captured Adamus and his men. The man put down the papers back to the table and sat down in the chair. Arkentham looked thoughtful, he was surprised that the enforcement department acted so quickly that he didn't even have time to hear it before it all ended. This is bad. Arkentham murmured. Dot let's stop the puppet manufacturing for now. A lot of eyes will be on Jensa for next few months. Arkentham said and his 49 trusted subordinates nodded. What we'll do with the two individuals who got targeted by Ramu's higher-ups? One of the men asked. Arkentham shrugged. They aren't any importance, forget them. The meeting lasted for another hour until his 49 subordinates left to go take care of their territory, since it will be very hectic next few months, who knows what will happen. Adamus reached Marshal King. He could have been the next emperor. But his arrogance destroyed him. Arkentham thought with disdain, he shook his head in disappointment. He stayed alone in the hall while looking at the report's papers delivered by his trusted subordinates. He noticed a certain paper, it had a report from Irio. About three weeks ago, one of the warehouses got attacked by someone and they managed to infiltrate the underground base there, and kill one of their men. Burkham. Some nobody, but the killer might have found out about the crates. Arkentham thought with a pondering expression. This news usually is not important, because the warehouse is emptied a long time ago, and even if the police or enforcement department finds the place, there is nothing left. But now that entire Arya's attention will be on Jensa. A lot of monsters will be hiding in the shadows, waiting for Arkentham to make a mistake which they can use to wipe him out. Arkentham started looking through the reports of Irio. He saw that before dying, Burkham was captured by some young man. The police let her come go, but then someone infiltrated the warehouse and killed him. Arkentham thinks that the young man could be the culprit. He had around 50 reports of Irio in front of him. With annoyance he started to go through the papers, to find out the identity of the young man. Ten minutes later, he finally found the police report. Burkham escaped from custody. Martial rank, martial leader. Crimes, dozens of first-degree murders. Captured by, Kuragami Ichiro. Kuragami Ichiro. Arkentham knows that the name sounded familiar. He again went through the reports of Ramu. And then found out that the first video talked about Kuragami Ichiro. Coincidence. Or. Arkentham would never care about some insignificant martial leader brat. But now his life work is at stake and nothing can go wrong in the next few months. With blood and tears, he worked to get to the top of Jensa's underworld. He doesn't really think that Ichiro will be a big threat. But just to make sure. He decided to send a martial commander to take care of him. There are at least few martial commanders located in their base in Irio. Arkentham started writing an order. Elimination order. Target, Kuragami Ichiro. Martial rank, peak martial leader, assumed. City, Irio. Mission importance, E rank. Mission difficulty, Frank. Time limit, one week. And just like that, the elimination order was created. Arkentham took the order and stood up from his chair. He started walking out of the hall, he entered the corridors and went to find the commander of Irio's underworld base. Arkentham's underworld is located in many different cities. But there are only a few big bases. In Irio there is only a small base, where one of his 49 trusted subordinates will be commanding it. The commander of Irio's base has the martial rank of martial commander. Arkentham exited the building and saw the commander of Irio's base about to enter the car. But then he saw Arkentham walking towards him. He exited the car instantly, he stood straight with respect. Elimination order. Arkentham said simply and offered a paper. The commander of Irio's base also known as Luren took the paper with a surprised face. He saw the target and looked at him with widened eyes. But seeing the Arkentham's serious face, he only nodded. Arkentham turned around and again walked to the mansion. He entered the corridors and started making his way over to his room. Shortly afterward he arrived. 
He opened the doors and saw two naked women sleeping with small breaths coming out of their rose-colored lips and curved noses. Arkentham took off his nightrobe and lied down on the bed, in the middle of two beautiful naked women. With a deep breath, he closed off his eyes and shortly afterward fell asleep. Jensa's underworld has one true leader. There are separate underworlds in Jensa, where Arkentham's influence doesn't reach yet. But Arkentham is still the true leader of Jensa's underworld. Arkentham is known by many names. Jensa's only martial emperor. Underworld's big boss. Red-haired demon. Rank 786th in the emperor rankings. But the most commonly used is. Emperor Arkentham. Arg, a groan of pain came from the man who seemed to be heavily injured, his whole body was filled with bruises, wounds, and bones popping out of his flesh. He was currently laying on the ground, under a bridge, he was attacked by a young-looking man, but he couldn't recognize him because the darkness covered his face, Ugh, the man on the ground painfully tried to lift himself up from the ground. With more groans of pain, he managed to put himself into a sitting position. How long was I knocked out? The man thought with disbelief. He was about to return to the hotel, reserved for the referees of the tournament. They aren't allowed in the same hotel as the fighters, because there have been rumors of players paying the referees in secret. That's why Ramu's higher-ups decided to be discreet and not let them stay in the same hotel. This man left the stadium and kept walking for half an hour until he met a shadowy figure in front of him. He didn't think that it was strange at first, and he thought that if he was going to get attacked, then no problem, because he is peak martial leader. Some random thug is usually not any stronger than martial soldier. But this shadowy figure in front of him attacked him without any warnings. But he didn't panic, he calmly attacked back. But then despair filled his face shortly afterward because he noticed that the shadowy figure was way stronger than him. He noticed that his attacker isn't martial captain. But instead peak martial leader, but the shadowy figure was way stronger than him, even though they are in the same rank. The fight lasted for another few minutes, and his body was filled with bruises and blood started flowing from his body. He was planning to run away first, then get some help. But before he could do that the shadowy figure disappeared from his spot appeared behind him, and punched his back, which made him fly straight to the ground, which caused a cracking noise. Some cracking noise came from the ground getting broken, but some were from his bones. He fell down to the ground heavily and started wailing in agony. He noticed that the shadowy figure crouched and started talking. You shouldn't have rigged the matches this is karma. The shadowy figure said, and left the area, leaving the injured man alone, with his body in a broken state. How does he know? He thought with shock. It wasn't possible for anyone to know do more people know. This is bad. That's what he thought. He planned to drag his body back to the stadium, to warn the others. But when he tried to push his body to its limits, he noticed everything turning blurry and suddenly darkness covered his vision. He passed out with his body broken. Blood still flowing from his body. He stayed unconscious for another day, and he woke up when the sky started darkening. The man thought with disbelief. How long was I knocked out? He passed out when the sky was fully dark, but now the sun was only about to disappear from the sky. He was currently in a sitting position, he looked at his wounds, and it didn't look good. He looked around him and saw that he was under the bridge somewhere. Why didn't nobody help me? The man thought with anger, an injured man passed out on the ground, but no one helped him. He was feeling angry. Ah, write my phone. The man anxiously thought, he remembered the words that the shadowy figure said yesterday. He needs to inform them that their secret is out. But when he started going through his pocket, he didn't find his wallet phone hotel keys, I was robbed. He roared in anger. He started hitting the ground below him in frustration. No one helped him, even though he was injured and possibly could have died, without his martial leader physique. Now he was even robbed. This man's name is Lederman he was the one who tried to get Ichiro disqualified. And now he isn't having a good day. Lederman looked around him and saw a few passers-by walking not far away from him. Help! He roared, hoping that they would help him. The passerbys turned their heads around, and they saw the man who yelled. Their faces turned into shock first, then into disgust. They kept walking even faster than before, without any intention of helping. W. Watt. 
Liederman yelled with widened eyes, he couldn't believe it. Why didn't they help him? That's what he kept thinking. It wasn't hard to call an ambulance. But they didn't even do that, instead, they ignored him. Liederman didn't know the real reason, why they didn't help. It was because the news has already spread everywhere in Ramu and everyone knows Liederman's face now. No one would want to help a man, who was willing to cripple a young man, who has his whole life ahead of him. Liederman's career is over. But also Hiena's team members. They had a bright future ahead of them. They could have joined a strong high school and gotten closer to their professional career. But now they will never be able to fight in tournaments ever again. They will also probably be banned by Martial Arts Association. The Martial Arts Association is the one that holds the tournaments and the ranking tests. They are also the ones who created the ranking system. There is one martial arts association in every city in the world. But there are only six main martial arts associations in the world. Every continent has one. In Arya main martial arts association base is currently located in country of Nightlight. In Jensa, there is only a minor martial arts association, which controls every tournament and ranking test in Jensa. And the martial arts association holds even more power than the government. That says a lot about their influence. Liederman is currently aware, what would happen to him, if the news came out. He would definitely get fired. But he doesn't care, because now his life is on the line. Liederman isn't aware that Ichiro recorded his meeting with Hiena. Otherwise, he would be trying to crawl his way out of Ramu with his broken limbs. Because his death warrant has been signed. But he thinks that his life is in danger because he thinks that if Ramu's higher-ups find out then they might get rid of him, to get rid of loose ends. At first, he thought that by telling them, they might not get angry at him, but instead grateful for warning them. But that was just wishful thinking, Liederman knows it. He tried to stand up from his sitting position. But it was difficult with his broken limbs, and he has lost a lot of blood. But with help of the wall next to him, he managed to push himself up. Arg! He groaned in pain, he feels that his left leg is broken. His right leg is alright, but it is filled with bruises, and that makes walking extremely painful. He started dragging his broken leg behind him while hopping with his only remaining leg. He is planning to leave Ramu right now. He won't risk going to the hospital. Liederman has been hopping for five meters until he heard a bone-chilling voice behind him. Where do you think you are going? Liederman turned his head to the voice. He saw three figures, cloaked in black hoods. Liederman's face went pale. He recognized them. How could he not? He planned to hire them to cripple Ichiro because it would be madness trying to cripple him by himself, he might get caught, and there isn't even a guarantee that he will win against Ichiro. That's why he planned to hire them those three are part of the League of Assassins. They are usually professional killers hired by the underworld to do their dirty deeds. Liederman went pale and started stuttering. WWWY are you here? The cloaked figure in the middle scoffed and said. Are you stupid? Because of you, everything we have done so far went into a cloud of smoke. Three don't understand. Liederman cried out. Humph. The cloaked figure snorted and threw a phone towards Liederman. He caught it clumsily and looked at the news. He went even paler, face filled with despair. He knew that death came knocking on his door. The three cloaked figures surrounded Liederman. P please forgive me. Liederman cried out, he cowed out to the ground while his face was stained with tears. The cloaked figures looked coldly at him, they took their knives and pointed at Liederman. Your idiocy has ruined us all. The cloaked figure in the middle said with disdain. Die. All three figures yelled at the same time and slashed their knives towards Liederman. Ark. Liederman cried out and jumped towards the cloaked figure. The cloaked figure widened his eyes for a moment in surprise, but then he easily dodged Liederman's desperate action. Liederman fell down to the ground heavily, he holds his broken leg in agony, his face filled with despair while looking at the three cloaked figures. The three cloaked figures pointed their knives at Liederman. Then with the sound of wish Liederman's head was chopped off. Sun went down the darkness filled the underground bridge and the members of the League of Assassins disappeared without leaving any trace only leaving the dead body of the former referee alone in the darkness clank three figures watched the news, which was about the rigging scandal. 
one of the figures took the remote and closed the TV with anger on her face, she has brown-colored hair, and has an attractive-looking face with a curved nose and delicate eyebrows. She was the one Ichiro met in the break room, she is a fighter from Virange Tanya. Damn! She roared in anger. Next to her sat a feminine-looking boy, his height was around 160 centimeters with short black hair, his name is Andy, he turned his head towards Tanya and asked. Dot w what is going to happen now? Tanya clicked her tongue and said. Tournament will be cancelled of course, and we managed to get into top 8 for the first time in 30 years. Just our luck. The third figure in the room had blonde hair which reached her shoulders, she had an average face if compared to Tanya, but her innocent vibe brings out the protective vibe from any male, her name is Haley. They were celebrating for reaching the top 8, which was one of the best results in Virange history. But that celebration ended early. Haley then remember and asked. Dot in the first video they talked about crippling Ichiro. You said you met him, didn't you Tanya? She asked innocently. But Tanya's face grimaced. Dot don't mention him, he is partly at fault that this tournament got cancelled. Andy sighed, Dot Ichiro is the victim. Tanya scoffed. Dot he will be the victim of physical abuse next time I meet him, that why do you hate him so much? Every time someone mentions him you are gritting your teeth in hate. Haley asked. Andy was also curious. Does it matter? Tanya stood up and yelled in anger. Haley and Andy flinched. She really hates him. What did he do? Andy thought. But one thing is certain. Kuragami Ichiro is my nemesis. Tanya proclaimed, Haley and Andy looked at her with widened eyes. Tanya snorted and stomped towards her bed. She lied down on her bed and started hitting the pillow while thinking about her nemesis. I hate him. Tanya screamed internally. Every time she remembers Ichiro calling her as a thought. Or making fun of her height. Her mind gets instantly clouded in anger. Just wait Ikarant, I will make you pay for making fun of my height. She narrowed her eyes while thinking about her revenge. Haley and Andy were speechless while looking at the behavior of their captain. Their captain has always been tomboyish, while being quite violent, especially in the training. That's why she earned the name of Demon Queen. This might be the first time they see their captain this angry. Yes, she can get angry, like when she is in her periods. Once she has her periods, no one in the martial club goes to the school that day. And even some teachers don't go. On that day, no one would even dare to breathe in the same direction as her. That's why almost everyone has learned her menstrual cycle. And Andy and Haley are aware that her periods shouldn't be in a few weeks. They thought it was weird for her to be this mad. They keep wondering, what did Ichiro do to her? If people from Virange find out that Ichiro made fun of her height. Then everyone there would be screaming in anger and yelling, do you want everyone to die? No one shall make fun of her height. This is the number one rule in Virange. Ichiro has pretty much broken every important rule in Virange. People from Virange are currently happily staying in their homes because Tanya is thousands of kilometers away from them. But they will suffer once Tanya returns. Because it will be a long time before her anger has calmed down. For the next years or so, people from Virange will be cursing the name of Kuragami Ichiro, and that name becomes taboo in Virange and nearby cities. Instead, they will have a different name for him. He who shall not be named in presence of Demon Queen. They will learn that saying his name in presence of the Demon Queen. Is the worst decision they ever made. But that is all in the future. At present time. Tanya's plan for revenge has started forming in her mind. But it is a plan which will be executed in the far future. But then suddenly. Earth trembled. Crash the three figures heard a loud crashing sound. Andy and Haley looked out of the window and saw huge clouds of smoke appearing on the horizon. Tanya stood up from her bed. She walked next to them and watched the cloud of smoke. Dot two that fire. Andy stuttered while pointing at the buildings, which are in flames. Tanya narrowed her eyes. With her home senses, she can clearly feel the power ripples coming from the direction. Especially coming from two different figures. Three figures stood silently while looking at the buildings being in flame. They saw multiple fire trucks driving in that direction. But then suddenly. 
the three figures widened their eyes in fascination. Because suddenly bright green light appeared in the area of flaming buildings. The green light disappeared shortly afterward. The flames also calmed down and shortly afterward disappeared as well. Dot w what? Haley muttered. Power trait. Tanya thought with shock. She felt two powerful presences there, and now she is sure that it comes from martial kings. It means that there is a battle between kings happening. Tanya was excited, she wanted to leave the hotel and run there to watch the battle between the two kings. Tanya has watched the battle between martial monarchs on the TV before, but never in person. It has been said that you can't feel how strong they truly are while watching from TV. But if you watch the battle from a nearby area, you can clearly feel the power erupting from them. Of course, normal civilians think that the martial monarchs are like gods even while watching the fights on TV. Because their power trait is always mesmerizing and powerful. Something that only God can do. It is a realm which ordinary people cannot reach. Especially in Jensa. The battle between kings is almost impossible to see. Because there are only about five martial kings in Jensa. But there are also some people whose strength is a complete mystery. They are usually called rankless ones. They are usually from the underworld, keeping their strength secret and not doing any martial rank tests. But instantly when their identity is exposed, they get their rankings. Arkentham was one of the rankless. He was a martial king when he got exposed. At that time, he was called rankless king. Rankless kings are the ones who have broken their limiters and reached the realm of martial king, but they are called rankless kings because they are never informed about their limiters being broken. Arkentham could be called now as a rankless emperor, but the martial arts association decided to give him rank without the test and put him in the rankings as well. Adamus could be also be called rankless king because he kept his limiter being broken as a secret from the association. Martial arts association treats the rankless ones like they are criminals because most of them are. But there are some rankless kings working for martial arts association, or for some other powerful individual. That's why the rankings are not completely perfect. In martial king rankings there are over 5,000 individuals. But in reality, there could be more than 6,000. Usually, rankless aren't the ones who seek fame. Instead, they are usually violent brutes. They might be robbers, murderers, or simply assassins. Most of the rankless fight in the underworld tournament, which is the perfect place for them to earn some money. There have also been some fights between martial kings and rankless kings. Light versus dark. Good versus evil. Rankless kings usually wreak havoc, while trying to fulfill their violent desires while killing people. Martial kings are usually the ones who are hired to stop them. But there have also been fights between martial emperors and rankless emperors and also between martial monarchs and rankless monarchs. But it has been a long time since a huge battle has broken between martial artists and rankless ones. The last time was 14 years ago. It was a huge battle that was fought between Martial Saint and five rankless monarchs. In that battle, Martial Saint managed to kill four of the rankless monarchs, but his body was filled with injuries after killing the four. And in the end, the last rankless monarch took down the Martial Saint. Ending the battle which was won by rankless ones. But that battle made the relationships between martial artists and rankless ones unbearable. Even a single collision between two forces can unleash an all-out war. And today. That collision happened. Adamus the rankless king. Was defeated by Mars the martial king. That was prelude to war. Few hours after the fight between Mars and Adamus. Two. 30 a.m. Ring Mars felt vibrations coming from his check pocket, he took a small black phone and saw a call coming from, Mad King. Fuck. Mars cursed, he thought declining the phone call for a moment, but he knows what happens if he does that Mad King isn't the guy with the best temper. Mars gritted his teeth and accepted the phone call. Clank, Mars. He heard a loud roar from the phone. Fuck. Mars cursed and took the phone away from his ear. Even the phone in Mars' hand, cracked a little bit as a result of Mad King's roar. What do you want? Mars roared in the phone. Mars, we are fucked, man. Mad King said on the phone. Mars raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? 
Sai Mars heard a loud sigh on the phone. Shortly afterward, Mad King answered. You defeated Adamus right? Yes, and? Sai another loud sigh came from the phone. You shouldn't have done that. Mars had a bad feeling about Mad King's words usually, he isn't afraid of anything, but now he seems panicking. Why? Mars asked. Adamus was rankless king. Do you understand the consequences? Mars sighed. Report didn't say that Adamus broke his limiter, we didn't have any other choice. Well, he broke it. And Adamus told about it in the underworld network before you attacked. That's why he was already classified as rankless king. But now you, the martial king, took down a rankless king, we are fucked, man. Mad King anxiously said. Mars's face went slightly pale, but he managed to calm himself down. What is the situation? Mars asked. Not good. Underworld is currently very busy and I have even heard few rankless kings are rushing towards Jensa. Fuck. Mars cursed, he was currently sitting in the back seat of a military vehicle. They are not far away from a nearby prison, and they plan to drop the henchmen there and take Adamus to the enforcement department's base. But now this news came out. What about the other enforcement departments, what are they doing? Mars asked. Thankfully they are preparing to move their forces against the rankless ones, but man. This is only the beginning, soon Jensa will be a battlefield. Not just Jensa entire Arya will be a battlefield. Mars facepalmed. This was supposed to be a very simple operation. But not knowing fully what Adamus was capable of was their mistake. Mars there is a solution, which could lessen the impact of the war. Mad King suddenly said. And what is that? Mars already knew what he was going to say. Release Adamus, maybe with that the battlefield will be mostly focused on martial kings and rankless kings, and hopefully, any emperors won't show up. Mars put his hands on his face. He fucked up, he knows it. He again put the phone next to his ear. He said slowly. All right, good, release him in the border of Jensa. We don't really want him to say in Jensa to wreak havoc. Mad King said. Yes, Mars said and hang up the phone. He took his radiophone and said to his subordinates about the change of plans. They turned left and started making their way towards the border. An hour later, they arrived at the border of Jensa. In front of them was a huge metal gate that separates Jensa and the country next to them called Anson. One of the subordinates of Mars walked towards the guards and showed them the papers that they were part of the enforcement department. Mars saw them nodding and opening the gates. Shortly afterward, Mars and the dozen cars left the metal gates and entered Anson's borders. They drove a few kilometers until they finally saw a city not far from them. They stopped the cars. Mars stood up from the car and walked to the car which holds Adamus. Mars opened the door and saw Adamus' cocky face. He took Adamus from the car and threw him to the ground. Jurich. Adamus slightly gritted his teeth. Mars put the key to the lock of the cuffs and unlocked it. He could instantly feel Adamus' strength coming back. Leave, and you should know what happens to you if you wreak havoc here. Mars solemnly said. Adamus chuckled and asked. And what would happen? Mars grinned and said. We will kill your brother Alec. Adamus stopped chuckling and looked at Mars with an angry face. Release him as well. Mars chuckled. You don't understand, do you? Underworld doesn't care shit about your brother, only you, because you are rankless king, that's why we don't have to release anyone else. You fucker. Adamus stood up in anger, instantly all the soldiers aimed their guns at him. Adamus stopped moving, he saw all the guns pointing at him, even though he could probably survive the bullets, he would still get injured and he still remembers the beating he got from Mars. Mars smiled slightly and said. Go join your underworld buddies and leave the citizen of Anson alone, and trust me you want to do that because we won't only kill Alec. We will make his life miserable. Adamus gritted his teeth in anger. Alec was his only family left. Their parents died when Adamus was seven. His big brother Alec was only fourteen at that time, but he took care of him. Alec had to drop off the school to get a job, which wasn't easy at his age, but gladly he was peak martial soldier which earned him some jobs. Adamus always knew that Alec would already be in martial king rank if he didn't stop his martial arts career, 
but he had to take care of him, that's why he didn't have time to train anymore. Adamus was always grateful to his big brother, and he would sacrifice his life for him. Fine. Adamus roared in anger, he wishes that he was strong enough to kill Mars and take Alec with him. But he wasn't. Today his arrogance disappeared completely. I will get my revenge one day, Adamus swore. One day I will come back to Jensa, I will release my brother and kill Mars. Adamus watched with a hate-filled gaze as Mars entered the car and left shortly afterward. Only leaving a cloud of dust behind. Grah! Adamus roared in anger and nuclear energy exploded from his body, destroying everything in a few hundred meter radius. He thought that he was a prodigy, who will become rankless emperor one day. But today he felt small. Kukuku. Suddenly Adamus heard a peal of creepy-sounding laughter behind him. Adamus turned his head and saw three creepy-looking figures. What the fuck? Adamus cursed, especially after seeing the man in the middle. He had hunched back with wrinkles all over his face, he definitely looked around 80s, but the strength erupting him is from Marshal King. You seem angry, Kukuku. He said with small laughter. Adamus looked angrily at him and asked. And who the fuck are you? The old-looking man stopped laughing and looked with a serious face at him. You are Adamus right the new rankless king? Yes, and so what? Adamus said angrily and was preparing to fight. But then the old-looking man waved his hand and innocently laughed. Hee hee, we aren't here to fight you. Then why are you here? Adamus said, but he didn't take down his guard. We want you to join us. Join who? Adamus asked with a raised eyebrow. The old-looking man smiled slightly and said. War is coming it will make the previous wars look like child's play but this time the war won't be only martial artists versus rankless ones it will be much more. Adamus looked interested and waited for him to continue. He spread his hands and said powerfully. This war will determine the ruler of the world. Join us, we are the ones who are hiding in the dark, and with help of our supreme leader we will rule this world one day. Adamus looked surprised, then he said with some curiosity. Supreme leader he seems strong, the old-looking man chuckled. He is we have reasons to believe that he might be able to defeat Abyss. Impossible. Adamus cried out, he started to have felt that this whole thing is a scam. Easy now Abyss is getting weaker every day while our supreme leader is getting stronger every day, the old-looking man said mysteriously, he still remembers the moment when he saw his supreme leader's strength first time. It was like power of God. We can give you the strength to rescue your brother, the old-looking man said with a sly smile. Adamus looked at him with widened eyes, he sighed and nodded. All right. Kukuku, good. The old-looking man laughed and turned around. He started walking towards the city near them with two other creepy-looking guys following him closely behind. Adamus took a last look towards the metal gates on the horizon, he narrowed his eyes and clenched his fist. He will come back stronger than ever. A mature-looking beautiful woman with long jet black hair and violet eyes was currently looking at the phone which showcased the news, she looked thoughtful while her beautiful face looked mesmerizing. She was one of the quest commentators in the tournament. Her name is Quella Dracolonia. She was currently staying in a hotel room, which was way fancier compared to others. The hotel room was as big as one floor, that's why the top floor of this hotel is only for VVVIP. She had enough wealth to spend her entire life on the top floor, even though single night costs one. Zero zero zero, zero zero zero, but her being the young princess of the Draculonia family gives her limitless influence and wealth. But why was she quest commentator in a small country like Jensa? She had her reasons. But the reason why she was one of the quest commentators in this tournament is, because she followed Mars here. Mars is her dot bodyguard. Till she leaves Jensa. Even though Mars doesn't want to do it, he has no other choice other than to keep Quella safe. But currently, she is staying alone in the hotel, which is practically a fortress. Especially her room. That still doesn't mean that she is weak. She is a martial general fighter without any training. Her bloodline was strong enough to push her to the peak of martial general, with help of the age of growth. She didn't learn mind-body to reach martial captain instead. Her bloodline made her body strong enough to ignore the strength you get after achieving the mind-body her body strength and durability are already in the realm of Martial King. 
but she can't reach Marshal King with only the help of her bloodline. Miss Quella had a limitless talent to reach martial divinity. But her lack of interest in martial arts disappointed many. Especially her parents. That's why she is in Jensa. She can't return home without becoming Marshal King. And Quella decided to go to one of the weaker countries, she decided on Jensa, because it was the closest one. Jensa is a so-called low-tier country. It represents the country's average strength, and the only reason that they are even called low-tier country is that there is one emperor and a few martial kings. There are countries that are lower tier than low-tier countries. Those countries are called bottom-tier countries. Sounds kind of harsh, but those countries don't have any martial kings or emperors. Quella could go to those countries. But she has another reason for going to Jensa. Mars can keep her safe, that's why there is almost no one who is capable of hurting her. And if someone tries to, Quella only needs to say her family name, and her attacker would stop attacking instantly and start kowtowing mercy. Even Arkentham isn't reckless enough to attack young princess of Draculonia. And fun thing is that, Ramu's higher-ups weren't even aware of her identity. Not many were. Still not many are fully aware of her identity, but most of the people already are aware that she is very wealthy. Ramu's higher-ups were totally clueless that two persons they should not ever disrespect were being commentators for their tournament. Quella was the one who dragged Mars to be one of the commentators. Because to her, it looked fun while gritting his teeth, he accepted. But this helped him as well. Mars at first came to Ramu to check out new prospects for enforcement department. That's why the commentator job was fine for him because he saw clearly everyone's weaknesses and strengths. He took Quella with him to the Ramu, because if she gets hurt in any way while being in Jensa, then there won't be Jensa anymore if her parents hear about it. And they will hear about it. That's why it has been very stressful for Mars in the last few months. Especially now, because few rankless kings are approaching Jensa. Mars is still fearful of Arkentham's existence. But he knows that Arkentham isn't an idiot. Arkentham won't attack him or Quella without good reason. But Quella wasn't as fearful as him. She doesn't care about mere emperor. Her family has always been full of martial gods and demigods. Her grandfather was martial half divinity during his prime. Surrounded by powerful figures all of her life, she isn't feeling even slightly afraid of him. It could be either arrogance or ignorance. But her being surrounded by such a powerful aura, day after day, made her numb to anyone under martial saint rank. Quella closed her phone. She is currently thinking about the next course of her actions. Even though she is lazy when it comes to martial arts. She is still a very smart individual. She knows about the problems heading straight towards Ramu. Spring and summer are called tournament phase. Because most of the tournaments are held during this time. That's why a lot of eyes are in every tournament, to seek out new prospects for their organization. Most of the high schools from Arya are having a close eye on the middle school tournaments. And universities are having a close eye on high school tournaments. That's why this incident in Ramu will cause huge havoc in the upcoming months. Especially in the morning after everyone learns about it. But the bigger problem came because Underworld was included in this incident, and also Rankless King. But Quella still isn't aware that Mars defeated a Rankless King, but if she knew, then she would already be on the next bus, leaving Ramu without hesitation. But Quella is already deciding whether she should leave or stay. If she decides to stay, then it might be too late to leave in the morning. She is Marshal General and there aren't that many Marshal Generals in Jensa, that's why she should be safe if she decides to leave Ramu behind. But then the second reason arises. She needs Mars' help to reach Marshal King. Mars has already broken the limiter. And Quella doesn't know how. Martial arts journey is usually lonesome, you can only count on yourself. But there are some exceptions. Nobody can help you break your limiter. But there are ways to speed up the process. Quella has already received some help from Mars and is already one step closer to reaching the Martial King. And it has only been less than a year after she left her home. Usually, it would take some people over ten years to break the limiter. But Quella, in one year, is already at the breaking point. She needs one more push, and she breaks it. Sai Quella sighed deeply and tucked her hair behind the ear. Her smooth thighs were shown while she is currently wearing a slightly revealing nightgown. 
Her D-cup-sized breasts changed the outline of the nightgown drastically. Quella kept tapping her chin, thinking about a solution to the current problem. That I guess I will leave. Quella decided, she walked to her closet. She took off her nightgown and her beautiful half-naked body was on display. She took a simple black shirt and jacket with black jeans. Now she looked like an ordinary teenage girl, except her beautiful face was far from ordinary, she also didn't look like she was in her thirties, instead, she looked like she was about to enter her twenties. She took her phone and dialed Mar's number. Ring the phone ringed for a moment until finally, the call connected. Clank that what is it? Quella heard a Mar's tone which was filled with annoyance. Dot it's me, Quella answered. Miss Quella? Is everything all right? Mars's tone instantly changed to worry, he knows that if Quella gets harmed in any way, then he will lose his head. Yeah, but I will leave Ramu, Quella said while taking her purse with her. Dot what? Mars roared in the phone loudly. Giggle Quella giggled, she walked to the elevator which was connected with her room, and was about to open it. Dot and no. Wait for me at least. Mars was almost crying on the phone. Quella rolled her eyes and entered the elevator, she clicked the bottom number, which will take the elevator to the lounge. That I didn't ask for permission. Ramu won't be a peaceful place for next months, that's why I'm going somewhere quieter. Quella answered. Dot W.I. Quella didn't wait for Mars to finish his sentence instead, she hang up the phone call and put her phone in her purse. She waited for a few moments longer, until the elevator reached the lounge. She exited the elevator and walked towards the exit of the hotel. People who work in the hotel recognized her as the VVVIP. They gave a very polite bow. Quella exited the hotel with a slight smile and saw the lights illuminating the night city. Dotton Quella tapped her chin and thought aloud. Where should I go now? She shrugged her shoulders and started walking in the streets. Her beautiful face attracted a lot of attention from women and men alike. But her powerful aura was on display, that's why no one dared to approach her. Especially since Quella hasn't learned the control of aura, that's why her martial general aura was unrestricted. She kept walking on the streets until she saw a video about today's tournament. The screen showed the fight between SLYCH and Ichiro. The screen showed the city the fighters are from. Under SLYCH, words, Armia. Were shown. And under Ichiro's figure, Words, Irio. Were shown. Irio. Quella thought. That place should be safer. This is the place. A handsome looking individual said, he had strikingly beautiful white hair, with angular eyebrows, sharp jawline, and bright gray eyes. He was currently looking at the metal gate which was located not far from his position. Yes. Next to him, an average looking man said, he was only about 170 centimeters tall with messy black hair and brown eyes, he was currently wearing a traditional priest outfit with the color of black. The handsome-looking individual's name is Rankless King Soloran. The average-looking individual's name is Rankless King Heathen. They are currently standing outside the metal gates which lead to Jensa. Time to wreak havoc. Soloran had a huge grin on his handsome face. Heathen sighed and asked. Why are we doing this? that we are here to lit up the flames of war, remember? Soloran rolled his eyes and said. But why us? He then asked with annoyance. Soloran shrugged and answered. That we were the closest ones, but it is fucking annoying that the underworld dogs think they can order us. He spat out angrily. Easy now. If they hear you, they would kill you an instant. He then reminded. Soloran clicked his tongue and started walking towards the metal gate. Heathen rolled his eyes and followed behind him. After they arrived at the 50M mark from the metal gates, they heard a loud yell. Dot halt. Who is there? Both of them looked up and saw a man with a guard uniform yelling. Heathen turned his head toward Soloran. Soloran smirked, he raised his hand and snapped his fingers. Snap, shock terror. The snap of fingers caused a huge shockwave, which traveled straight at the metal gate, crushing it to pieces. Crick crash Soloran looked with a slight smile as the metal gate fell down on the ground. WHHH the whole area around the gate started flashing in red lights, with the loud sound of sirens echoing. Dozens of guards instantly appeared in the place of the metal gate, while the strong-looking man was leading them. 
The guards aimed their guns at them and loaded the guns. The strong-looking man raised his hand and yelled. Dot fire. Bang 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 hundreds of bullets instantly flew straight at Solorin and Heathen. Solorin put his hand forward and again snapped his fingers. Snap, shock terror. WHSH shockwave traveled through the air, which crushed the bullets into nothingness. Wah! The guards went pale, while the strong-looking man started sweat dropping. Marshal King. The strong-looking man thought with panic. Solorin lowered his hand, he looked at the destruction in front of him which caused pleasure to run through his body. Solorin's power trait is called shockwave generator. It allows him to create a powerful shockwave with only a snap of his fingers. Your turn. Solorin told with a smirk. Heathen sighed, he started kneeling. He put his hands together for a prayer. He closed his eyes and started to concentrate. Wind around them stopped blowing, the world turned silent. The guards gulped with fear. While the strong-looking man was trembling. Don't tell me he is another martial king. Few heathen took a deep breath and started murmuring. Miracle of the North, night shall turn day. Heathen's body started glowing on bright yellow. The dark sky suddenly disappeared. The guards and the strong-looking man looked with fascination, then they paled. They saw the sun appearing in the sky. But it was dozen times bigger than the ordinary sun. The ground below them started melting, air turning hotter and hotter with each passing second. Fuck, this your ability is so annoying. Solorin cursed and jumped away from Heathen because the heat next to him was almost unbearable. If you look closely, you can clearly see the ground below Heathen melting. Few Heathen took another deep breath. With a slam, he opened his eyes which has turned from brown into glowing yellow. Shishi. Arg. The guards and the strong-looking man cried out painfully, while their bodies were covered in flames, but it didn't last long because soon their bodies turned into ashes. Also, the fortress, which separates Anson and Jensa disappeared completely, while the trees and grass around the fortress turned into flames. Heathen's glowing yellow eyes disappeared, and his brown eyes replaced them shortly. Few heathen took another breath. The sky darkened again and the sun disappeared without leaving any traces. He then stood up from his kneeling position, he patted the dust off from his pants. He looked at the destruction around him, he only shrugged. He took a step forwards. That I guess I am in Jensa now. He then said, with a slight smile he started walking onwards while enjoying the view of destroyed nature. Shortly afterward Solorin appeared next to him. Phew, that was scary. He grinned. He then rolled his eyes. Heathen's power trait is called Do You Believe in Miracles? Do You Believe in Miracles allows him to do things that are miraculous, like the sun appearing in the night, but that power alone has a huge drawback he can't use it without praying and more powerful the ability, the longer it takes to summon. Solorin and Heathen kept walking towards nearby settlements, but since they are so close to the fortress only wasteland is in front of them, reaching to the horizons. Solorin narrowed his eyes and stopped walking. Heathen perked up his ears and also stopped. You heard that? Solorin asked with narrowed eyes. Yes. Heathen answered they looked ahead and saw a cloud of dust on the horizon. Someone is coming, Solorin said and started preparing for a fight. Heathen also clearly felt the power coming from the cloud of dust. Dutton Peak Marshal King. Heathen told with a slightly surprised face. Solorin also looked surprised while feeling the energy coming from the cloud of dust. Both Solorin and Heathen are Middle Martial King. Mars is also Middle Martial King. That's why meeting Peak Martial King in a small country like Jensa is a big surprise. But Peak and Middle aren't that different in Martial King ranks if compared in strength, because, with powerful power trait, a Middle Martial King can even kill low Martial Emperor who has weak power trait. Starting from Martial King, the ranks aren't determined with the test, instead, they start emitting energy after limiter gets broken. The more powerful energy, the stronger the person's body, mind, and soul are. But that energy doesn't determine the strength of the user's power trait. But usually, the power of their body, mind, soul, and the power of the broken limiter gives. For that person. But stronger the energy. Stronger the power trait gets. That's why even the weakest power trait keeps getting stronger, but those who get stronger power traits first have a huge advantage. 
Power trait comes from the broken limiter, but the power trait isn't the only thing the broken limiter gives. The broken limiter also starts erupting energy which makes the person's body stronger and more durable. That's why martial emperor can have useless power trait, but their body is far stronger than martial king's. But martial king with strong power trait, but the weaker body can still kill martial emperor. But killing martial emperor is very hard. Because the energy makes their bodies very durable, they are almost like a tank. That's why people who reach martial king have to increase the power of the energy first. But it isn't that simple. Heathen and Soloran weren't feeling even the slightest tinge of fear while looking at the cloud of dust. Even though the upcoming person is a higher rank than them. Both of them have very powerful power traits and they are only one rank below. They have faith that they can even kill Arkentham if they work together. Of course, they haven't met Arkentham or even heard about his strength. But he is only 786th rank emperor, how strong can he even be? That's what they keep thinking. They finally saw the upcoming person appearing from the cloud of dust. He moved like he was teleporting and shortly afterward, he arrived 100 meters away from the duo. The person who arrived had a scary looking grin on his face, with messy long red hair. His body was very muscular, standing at a height of 200 centimeters at least. His face was filled with scars, which made it almost impossible to see his features, but they could see his clear red eyes, fitting with his hair. Hello. That person said with a huge grin. Soloran raised an eyebrow. And who the fuck are you, dot keek keek, ha 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 ha. He chuckled first until he burst into laughter. Soloran and Heathen looked at him warily, with narrowed eyes. That I guess I am not very famous yet eh? The mysterious person said. Everyone in Jensa recognizes my face. He murmured sadly, because of his scary face, everyone would start running if they even see a glimpse of him. But it isn't only because of his looks. It is also because of his reputation. Sigh the mysterious person sighed and said. That I am the so-called Mad King. Soloran and Heathen widened their eyes, they know about the name of Mad King, which is quite infamous in the underworld. But everyone thought that the Mad King was Mars subordinate because he is weaker. But it seems that Mad King is at least stronger in terms of energy. That I know you. Soloran grinned. Mad King also grinned. Good. Heathen sighed while looking at the two madmen, he took off his gloves. He looked straight at Mad King's eyes and asked. Dot do you believe in miracles, dot na, nah, miracles are only fantasy. Mad King smirked and his body turned into bloody red. Soloran and Heathen took their fighting stances. Soloran raised his hands in front of him while looking closely at Mad King's movement. Heathen on the other hand put his hand for prayer while his eyes started turning in different colors. Mad King cracked his knuckles, he smirked viciously. The first fight in the war between martial artists and rankless kings. Begins. Crack crash wish dot bring it on. Soloran screamed angrily. Wasteland around the three figures was already destroyed beyond repair. Huge craters and burnt grass were everywhere they looked. Mad King grinned viciously, without a hint of fear while fighting against two rankless kings. Soloran put his hand forward and snapped his fingers. Snap, shock terror. Shockwave traveled through the land, going straight towards Mad King's towering figure. But then Mad King's body turned into bloody red. And he started slowly melting. The shockwave destroyed his previous position. But Mad King was nowhere to be seen. Soloran looked around him warily. He is getting annoyed by a second because Mad King's ability was perfect for running away. Mad King's power trait is called Bloody Mess. With that ability, he can turn his entire body into blood. Heathen was currently kneeling on the ground while his hands were on prayer. He was about to finish his prayer until he felt a presence appearing behind him. He clicked his tongue, he quickly stood up and sidestepped to left. A huge explosion happened in his previous spot, with a huge cloud of dust appearing. Soloran and Heathen could see Mad King's grinning figure in the cloud of dust. He doesn't let me use my ability. Heathen was also getting very annoyed, Mad King is obviously very wary of him and won't let him do anything. Soloran appeared behind Mad King and did a large swing towards Mad King's head. But Mad King turned into blood again and disappeared from his spot. Soloran's arm went straight through the blood. Soloran gritted his teeth, 
once he landed on the ground, he instantly leaped into the air. Once he was in midair, he pointed his arm towards the ground and started snapping his fingers. Snap 10x, shocking turmoil. Wasteland instantly trembled like a huge earthquake happening. But it was only the aftermath of Soloran's attack. The place he bombarded with, was completely empty of any life. Only a few kilometers long craters were left. But he could sense that Heathen and Mad King are fighting somewhere else, they dodged the attack. Soloran looked at the west and started making his way over to the battlefield. On the battlefield. Heathen took a 50 centimeters long crucifix from his priest outfit. He put his hand on the bottom of the crucifix, which instantly made the crucifix a few meters longer. Heathen looked at the approaching Mad King's figure. He spun the crucifix around him and swung it towards Mad King's figure. Mad King's right arm turned into a bloody mess and struck the crucifix with it. BAM the crucifix managed to push Mad King a few meters back, but the bloody arm managed to block most of the impact. Mad King grinned and turned his left arm into a bloody mess as well, but the bloody arm suddenly turned into a spike. Red Impaler Mad King attacked the abdomen of Heathen with the blood spike. Heathen quickly took his crucifix back from the bloody arm and swung it towards the incoming spike. Clank Heathen managed to block the spike with his crucifix, but as result, he was sent flying a few dozen meters. He slid on the ground a dozen more meters until he finally managed to stop. Mad King again rushed with his body filled with the color of red. TSK, Heathen clicked his tongue, and again spun his crucifix. He swung it towards Mad King, but his body turned into blood and the crucifix went straight through. He then widened his eyes. But Mad King already was in front of him. Dot die. Mad King roared, he turned his arm into a bloody mess and swung it towards Heathen's figure. Heathen couldn't do anything, except look helplessly as the arm impaled him. Mad King's arm went straight through Heathen's body, but it didn't do anything. But then Mad King grinned and the bloody arm disappeared and only the muscular arm of Mad King was left, which left a huge hole in the torso of Heathen. Dot ugh. Heathen spat a mouthful of blood. His jawline was full of blood, pouring from his mouth. Die already. Mad King roared and was about to attack the neck of Heathen. Snap but then his body was hit by a powerful shockwave. Mad King widened his eyes and was sent flying a few hundred meters. Soloran appeared on Mad King's previous spot and looked at Heathen who is coughing blood. You alright? Soloran asked nonchalantly. Does it look like I am alright? Heathen cried out. Soloran grinned. Heal yourself then. With those words, Soloran started calmly walking towards the figure of Mad King. Heathen's face was pale because of the blood loss. With shaky legs, he started kneeling. He put his hands for a prayer. He started muttering. Miracle of the South, miraculous healing. His eyes turned glowing green, and shortly afterward the huge hole in his body disappeared, only leaving his body intact, without any scars or wounds. Few heathen took a deep breath, wiped his sweat, and stood up with still shaky legs. CRKKK crack wish he turned his head towards the battle, he saw the sky and earth tilt and crack under their might showdown. Heathen sighed deeply, with slight annoyance he picked up his crucifix from the ground and started sprinting towards the battle. Mad King's body turned into blood, and the blood instantly disappeared to the ground. His previous spot instantly exploded. In the midair, Soloran looked at the scene with annoyance. Dot he is like a fucking cockroach. Soloran spat out angrily. He saw Heathen appearing again on the battlefield. Heathen, do some miracle shit. Soloran yelled angrily. Heathen had veins popping from his forehead, he looked at Soloran and yelled. And what the fuck am I supposed to do to stop him from disappearing? That I don't fucking know. Do something. Soloran yelled with a tone full of annoyance, he is tired of fighting against Mad King. Their battle started five hours ago, and the sky has already been getting brighter. In dozen minutes or so, the sun will appear in the sky. They traveled during the night to sneak in easily, but then they met Mad King and have been fighting the whole night. They both are getting more and more tired and annoyed. He then gritted his teeth and yelled. Dot cover me, dot all right. Soloran replied and concentrated fully, his eyes turned bloodshot, no one will be able to sneak close to Heathen anymore. 
he then kneeled and put his hands for a prayer. Miracle of the North, barren wasteland shall turn into oasis. Heathen's eyes turned into bright blue, and his previous black hair also turned into light blue. Previous wasteland. Filled with craters, burnt grass, and cracked earth. Started changing with visible speed. First water started flowing from the previous cracks and craters. Then the previous dead-looking wasteland started turning into grassland, filled with nothing but bright green grass. But then the water started flowing even faster from the ground, and instantly the new trees filled with leaves and bright green grass were surrounded by water. It didn't take long for the trees and grass to completely disappear, and only a huge ocean was left. Solorin and Heathen were currently standing at the crucifix which was now about five meters long, but could still float perfectly. Now, where the fuck is he? Solorin screamed angrily. Heathen also looked around him, but he felt no sign of life. He only saw the vast blue sea, which looked beautiful while the stars were shining in the sky. But the stars soon disappeared and the sky started brightening. Solorin and Heathen saw a sun rising from the horizon. Dot he left didn't he? Solorin muttered, he had his head down and Heathen couldn't see his expression, but he can already guess his expression. Yep, Heathen answered. Dot fuck. Solorin roared, which instantly caused huge waves. Heathen looked blankly at him and said. Can we fucking leave now? Solorin gritted his teeth but nodded. Yes, let's fucking leave this place, even the people from the military are this shameless. I really don't want to meet the citizens from this fucking place. Agreed, fuck this place. Heathen agreed and started controlling the crucifix to start sailing towards the borders of Jensa. A few kilometers away from them. Few Mad King took a deep breath after he finally reached the nearby land. He left the battlefield while traveling through the ground while his whole body was in tiny particles of blood. But then suddenly everything around him turned into the water. And shortly afterward he had no other choice, but to turn his body normal again and start swimming instead. Ha, I almost died. Mad King exclaimed, his chest was going up and down out of exhaustion. Heathen and Solorin weren't the only ones who were exhausted. Mad King couldn't stop concentrating during the five hours, because if he stopped even for a moment, he would have died. He had a chance of victory after he thought that he killed Heathen, but then he saw a miraculous sight and saw Heathen healing with incredible speed. That was the moment when he decided to retreat. He could have won, but he had a higher chance of dying. Dot if they come back. I think I need Mars' help. Mad King didn't want to admit it, but for the first time in his life, he needs help defeating someone. He doesn't have the luxury to underestimate Solorin and Heathen. Especially because their power trait is very fucking powerful. Mad King is certain that even Mars heal or harmful is inferior. He stood up from his position and left the area shortly afterward, he already felt two powerful energies going in a different direction from him, towards the direction of Jensa's borders. That I guess this is only the beginning. Mad King murmured solemnly. Yon fifteen years old young man was laying on the bed in a spacious hotel room, he had slightly messy black hair, but it was strikingly beautiful. His bright black eyes were shown while he was slightly narrowing his eyes, he put his hands on his face, trying to block the light which came from the window. Ichiro, wake up already. He heard an annoyed yell from the bathroom. The young man was Ichiro, he stood up with annoyance and with slight lazy steps, he walked to the bathroom. He saw Lucas brushing his teeth in hurry. What is the hurry? Ichiro asked lazily. Lucas rolled his eyes. Our plane leaves in an hour. Ichiro's eyes widened. Oh shit. Yep. Ichiro quickly speed ran his morning tasks. It wasn't a pretty sight, but what are you going to do about it? He finished his morning tasks and quickly put on his outfit, which consisted of a white long sleeved shirt and black sweatpants. He grabbed his bag, which he already packed up last night. Lucas was already waiting at the door. Yon Ichiro walked next to him and yawned. Let's go. He said with a slightly lazy tone. Lucas opened the door and Ichiro followed closely behind. They entered the elevator and shortly afterward they reached the lounge. The lounge was already quite packed, most of them were logging out of the hotel. Lucas and Ichiro saw their club advisor waving towards them. They approached the club advisor and heard him saying. We already logged out of the hotel. 
I was about to call you because you two didn't show up. I couldn't wake up Ichiro, he was sleeping like a log. Lucas blamed Ichiro for being late. Ichiro scoffed. The club advisor sighed. Well doesn't matter now, soon the taxis will come, so let's go wait outside. Lucas and Ichiro nodded, they started walking behind the club advisor, while going through the sea of people who were located in the lounge area. Once they reached outside of the hotel, they saw other students from Irio standing on the sidewalk. The students saw them appearing, they gave a slight nod and kept minding their own business while waiting for the taxi. Lucas and Ichiro stood silently while looking at the cars going by. They saw a lot of people walking with their phones, the same thing showing on their phones it was about the rigging scandal. Now everyone in Ramu knows about it and the faces of the citizen of Ramu aren't looking good. It was the highest honor that they were chosen to host the tournament. But because of this scandal there won't be even martial novice tournaments in Ramu anymore. Taxis are here. They all heard their club advisor yelling, they saw eight taxis appearing. They put their bags in the trunk of the taxi. Then they sat down on the back seats of taxis. Ichiro sat with Lucas and Liam. Shortly afterward, the taxis started their journey towards the airport. Liam turned his head towards the duo and said. This scandal has already spread in Irio, even my parents called me to talk about it. Lucas turned his head and said. My parents called me as well. Apparently, people in Irio are quite heated because Lederman targeted Ichiro. Ichiro raised an eyebrow in surprise. Really? Sai Lucas sighed and said. Yes because you managed to fight SLYCH in equal standing, even though you lost your reputation is higher than ever before. Liam chuckled and said. In our school group, a lot of people keep asking about you. Ichiro was quite surprised, he thought he would get hate because of losing against SLYCH. What's up? Lucas asked Ichiro because he looked surprised. Ah uh, I thought they would hate me for losing. Ichiro scratched the back of his head with embarrassment. Lucas looked surprised, then he chuckled and said. They didn't have any hope in our team, but seeing you fight SLYCH and injuring him more than anyone has ever done before made your reputation soar. It is also not only in Jensa since SLYCH was one of the winning candidates in the Tournament of Countries, but the video clip of that match has also spread on the internet, which made you quite famous. Ichiro nodded, he sighed with relief. Did anyone call you? Lucas asked. Ichiro shrugged his shoulders. Don't know, my phone is dead, didn't have time to charge it. He took his phone from his pocket and tried to open the phone, but it only showed a black screen. Lucas took his phone from his pocket. Do you want to call your parents? Sure. Ichiro took the phone gratefully and dialed his dad's number. Ring the phone ringed for a moment until the call connected. Hello, who is this? Ichiro heard a middle-aged voice. Dad, it's me, Ichiro replied. Ah. Ichiro, we tried to call you but you didn't answer. Eiji told after the initial surprise. My phone is dead, I borrowed Lucas' phone to call you. Oh okay, by the way, are you alright? We opened the TV and every channel kept talking about the rigging scandal. A.G. told with worry, especially since his son was very close to being attacked. If the rigging wasn't exposed, who knows what could have happened. I am alright, we are heading to the airport now, we will arrive in the Irio later in the evening. Is it from Ichiro? Ichiro heard a loud yell from the phone. A.G.'s sigh was heard on the phone. Ichiro, is it you? Azumi yelled anxiously on the phone. Ichiro sighed. Yes. It's me, mom. Are you alright? Yup, we are heading to the airport. Azumi sighed with relief. Good, how dare those bastards try to hurt my dear son. Humph. Ichiro wryly smiled. How are the things in Irio? He asked with some curiosity. It's fine. A lot of people were calling to us, talking about you, etc. But there were some bitches who were trying to spread their filthy hands towards my dear son. Ichiro only heard the first part, but then the last part was full of mumbling, which he couldn't understand. I see. Ichiro said with a slightly questioning face while listening to the weird mumbling. Ichiro, we are about to arrive, Lucas said while pointing at the huge airport. Mother, we arrived at the airport, I will call you when I arrive in Irio. Alright, we will come to pick you up. Azumi yelled. 
Thanks, Mom. Ichiro replied and stopped the phone call. He gave the phone back to Lucas. What did they say? Lucas asked with some curiosity. Ichiro shrugged. They were worried. Lucas nodded. By the way, what happened to the leaderman? What do you mean? Ichiro asked with a raised eyebrow. He suddenly disappeared, Lucas replied. Ichiro was also looking thoughtful. Maybe leaderman left Ramu before the shit show began. Ichiro shrugged and stopped thinking about him. He was still feeling salty because he was planning to cripple him. Hey, have you guys heard about this? Liam said and showed them a picture that was shown on his phone. The picture was about a huge ocean. Ichiro raised an eyebrow. Ocean? Of course, I know what ocean is, Liam do you think I am dumb? You are, Lucas whispered very quietly. Liam sighed. This picture was taken close to the borders of Jensa, but the weird thing is that this ocean didn't exist yesterday, instead, a huge wasteland was in its place, but suddenly the ocean appeared there last night. Ichiro and Lucas widened their eyes in surprise. It is a miracle, Lucas said with a surprised face. Liam nodded. Indeed. Some religious people believe that it is a work of God, Liam told. Lucas nodded thoughtfully. It is really the work of God or the ability of power trait. Ichiro thought. If it is an ability of power trait how strong is that person? Ichiro sighed, he again feel like he is very small. We are here. They heard the taxi driver say. The trio left the taxi and took their bags from the trunk. They were standing in front of a huge airport, and they couldn't even see an ending point of it. Ichiro saw the Ramu's bustling city on the horizon. Even though he only spent a few days here, it still felt like an eternity. With a last look towards Ramu, he turned his head and walked inside the airport. Ichiro followed behind the club advisor and the other students. They checked in for their flight. Then they gave their bags and luggage, which will go to the aircraft hold after that part was done, they went through the security gates and managed to pass without a problem. Ichiro without a word followed behind others to their boarding gate. They boarded the plane and took their seats in economy class. Lucas sat down next to him. After half an hour the plane finally left the airport and started making its way over to Irio. Ichiro looked at the city of Ramu, which was becoming smaller and smaller until it was a small dot in distance. And, 100k words in total for this novel. Insane. The plane finally landed at the airport of Irio. Ichiro and the rest left the plane, received their bags and luggage. They went through the security gate and entered a busy terminal. See you in school, Lucas said to everyone. The club advisor patted his shoulder and said. Good work out there, see you in the club tomorrow. Lucas nodded and left shortly afterward. Ichiro decided to follow Lucas. That I have missed Irio, Lucas told while looking at the Irio in distance. That me too. Ichiro agreed, he looked outside of the window while walking, and he saw a city not far from them. The sky was getting darker, that's why the lights looked like they were glowing in Irio, especially in the slightly taller buildings. They exited the airport, and something they never expected happened. Dozens of reporters were swarming outside the airport. Ichiro looked surprised, and he was about to go around them. But then the reporters saw Ichiro's and Lucas figure. That they are here. One of them yelled and instantly they surrounded both of them like hawks. What the? Lucas was shocked and quite intimidated. Ichiro only sighed and stood calmly. Ichiro, can I have your interview? A middle-aged man yelled anxiously while holding a mic. Go ahead. Ichiro nodded. How did it feel to fight against SLYCH? That it was hard. What are your comments about the referee's intention of crippling you? Fuck that guy. Dot uh. The reporter instantly went silent. Ichiro only blinked blankly. That is the interview done. Ichiro was also infamous in his past life, for giving very controversial answers in the interviews. And now the so-called dirty mouth Ichiro made his comeback. He saw that the reporter didn't answer. He shrugged his shoulders and started going around the reporters. Leaving Lucas alone suffer in their hands. Ichiro looked around him, trying to find his parents. Shortly afterward, he noticed two familiar figures, who were anxiously looking around them, trying to find someone. 
Ichiro with a slight smile approached them. The two figures noticed a young man approaching, their faces lit up, and approached him. Hey, mom, dad, Ichiro said and was instantly trapped in Azumi's hug. Welcome back. Azumi said happily. Ichiro was taller than Azumi, but the hug almost broke his spine. Ugh, the pain. Ichiro groaned in pain and had to suffer a few moments longer until his mother finally let him go. Welcome back, son. Eiji said and patted the back of Ichiro. Thanks. Ichiro smiled and entered the back seat of the car. The car left the airport and started making its way through the highway towards the city of Irio. While Eiji was driving the car, Azumi decided to ask about Ramu. Did you get new friends? Azumi asked with curiosity. Ichiro stopped looking at the window, he turned his head towards his mother and said. Yes, few. Dot that's wonderful, who are they? Dot slych raf 10, Mars and a girl called Tanya, Ichiro said nonchalantly. Dot w what did you say? Eiji screamed and almost drove the car off the road. slych raf 10, Mars and Tanya, Ichiro repeated. Dot ah. Uh, I see. That's a wonderful son. Azumi replied with slight awkwardness. Not sure how he befriended with that godlike existence, but at least that Mars and Tanya seem ordinary. Azumi thought. Who are Mars and Tanya? Never saw them in the tournament. Eiji decided to ask. Mars is Jensa's military enforcement department's director. And Tanya was fighting for Viarange, but I guess you two missed her matches. Eiji and Azumi blinked blankly. Dot w what did you say? Dot Mars is Jensa's military enforcement department's director, Ichiro repeated, and then he continued with more shocking news. Dot he is also Marshal King, pretty powerful fellow. Azumi turned her head towards Ichiro and thought. Is he drunk? There is no way he befriended someone with that status, dot that's. Wonderful son, Eiji muttered while thinking. I shouldn't have dropped him to the ground when he was baby. It's my fault that he is dumb, there is no way he befriended someone like him. Maybe he didn't even befriend Slych. Because in their match, it looked like they were trying to kill each other. And did he even befriend a girl? Maybe he hallucinated. Azumi thought while feeling sorry for his son. Eiji and Azumi decided to stay silent for the rest of the car trip. While Ichiro kept looking at the window with a blank expression, no one knew what he is thinking right now. I think Tanya is my friend. I doubt she hates me for calling her a thought. Right? Ichiro thought. I made fun of her height too, but that was just friendly banter, I make fun of Lucas all the time, but he doesn't hate it. I think. Ichiro shrugged and enjoyed the smooth car ride. They exited the highway and entered the streets of Irio. Everywhere Ichiro looked, he saw many old people working in their shops while enjoying their life. He also saw many a lot of students chatting with each other while smiling. Ichiro saw a lot of poverty in Ramu, most of it was because the underworld influence in Ramu was high and the higher UPS in Ramu were rotten to the core. But Irio doesn't have the same problem. Irio is somewhat peaceful, even though there is underworld influence. And Ichiro already saw the dark side of Irio, the police's corruption. The underworld. Berkham. Ichiro is aware that the police commissioner is Marshal Commander Rank. Ichiro has been thinking that is the police commissioner aware of corruption or not. Since Marshal Commander is the highest rank in Irio, then Underworld would have limitless influence in Irio if the police commissioner works with them. But seeing the peaceful state of Irio, Ichiro's worry about it, might not be needed. He doesn't know the strength of Underworld members in Irio, but he believes that there is at least one Marshal Commander in their rank. And Ichiro already saw the Marshal Captain back in the harbor, who seemed like he was one of the leading figures. The police officer Ichiro killed, was Marshal Soldier Rank, at least that's what Ichiro believed. Because he doubted that he could have killed Marshal Leader, that's why killing him was a huge gamble, especially if the police officer was strong and could have captured him. But Ichiro made the gamble because he was 100% sure that the police officer wasn't Marshal Captain. Marshal Captain is very strong, and in the police station, there aren't many of them. But the outfit the police officer wore was deputy chief's. This meant that the police officer he killed was the deputy chief, who was quite high in the ranking. But deputy chief, in a small city like Irio, usually isn't very strong. 
especially since most of the stronger fighters try to go pro while trying to earn wealth and fame. Not many stronger fighters go to the police academy and work their asses off, only to end up in a job that doesn't even pay much. But the ones who can't go pro usually end up in the military or police. That's why Ichiro gambled, and it paid off. Especially since the deputy chief seemed old, and he was slightly overweight as well. Obviously ignored the training. Ichiro was brought out of his daydreaming because the car stopped in front of an ordinary two-floor building. They are home. Ichiro took his bag and exited the vehicle. He followed behind his parents to the house. Once he entered the house, he finally managed to sigh a relief. He was finally home, after an exhausting journey. But before he could even put his bag down, he heard the sound of footsteps coming closer. Dot Big Brothier. The missile in a form of a little girl with pigtails ran towards Ichiro and smashed straight on his stomach. Dot Ugh. Ichiro groaned in pain, he was a martial leader fighter and he was injured by a little girl's hug. If Lucas hears about it. He will never stop mentioning it. Dot H. Hey Ayako. Ichiro patted her head. Humph, Ayako pouted and kept clinging to his body. Ichiro sighed and kept walking towards the living room while a little girl was still stuck on his body. Ayako, let go of your brother, he must be tired, Azumi told gently while looking at the pair of siblings. Fini. Ayako told lazily and stopped hugging the torso of Ichiro. Ichiro chuckled, he patted her head once more and started walking towards his room which was located on the second floor. He opened the door to his room and closed it gently. He saw his room which hasn't changed a bit. White ceiling, white walls, and comfy-looking bed next to the wall, and on the wall you can clearly see pictures of different games the previous Ichiro enjoyed while a small desk was in front of the window. He put his bag down, opened it, and took a white-colored charger. He connected it with his phone, and it started showing a logo, which was huge blue. W, which is a logo of a company called Worldly Connect, and they are makers of his phone. The phone was now alive, while it looked like he had only 2% battery left, but it is now increasing. He saw multiple calls coming from his parents. And he also saw a few messages. He opened the messaging app called Worldly Talk and saw messages coming from a guy with the nickname SLYCH3Amelia.UG. Ichiro grimaced seeing SLYCH's nickname in the Worldly Talk. He opened the chat history. SLYCH3Amelia, we didn't have time to say goodbye. You guys left so quick, surprised face. Ichiro sighed with disappointment, he was having fun with SLYCH and wanted to say goodbye at least, but his club advisor was panicking a little bit too much and decided to leave on the first plane. He saw that the message came five hours ago. He is probably in plane still. Ichiro thought. But he still decided to answer. King of Games, sorry, the club advisor was panicking too much. I had to do my morning tasks in a few minutes because we had to rush towards the airport because the plane leaves at 7 a.m. I wanted to say goodbye at least, because who knows when we meet next time, Ichiro then pressed, sent. Ichiro's nickname was King of Games, which is an account the previous Ichiro made, and with his love for games, his nickname became like this. Ichiro could change it. But he doesn't want to, because he wants to try some things as previous Ichiro did. Ichiro looked around the room and saw a gaming console. That I guess I should try games too, Ichiro said while looking at the gaming console. That I am home. SLYCH announced after he opened the door. He entered the building which was a two-floor building with grayish walls. The building has a front and backyard, with a white fence that covers the outside area of the building. The Raffin's house belongs to a middle-class area in Armia. SLYCH's parents don't have good-paying jobs, they could barely feed themselves, but SLYCH gives all of his winning money to his parents which lets them move to the middle-class area and buy a good house. With help of SLYCH's prize money, they don't have to worry about money, but even though his parents try to decline their son's hard-earned money, SLYCH still gives them and doesn't leave any money for himself. But SLYCH's earning isn't that great, since he is only part of middle school, but he gets a lot of sponsorships, because he is a celebrity in some sense, especially since his future is already almost set on stone. He will enter a good high school and join the tournaments, which will let him earn much more than middle school tournaments. Especially since usually the fighters for any team in high school get payment from their school. 
but with help of his prize money and sponsorship money, he managed to get his family out of poverty. His I am home yell echoed in the house, and instantly few footsteps approached his position. Slych put his jacket on a hanger and put his bag down on the floor. He was about to take his shoes off, but then the figures appeared in front of him. Little brother. Slych looked in front of him and his face was instantly captured within Sarah's breasts. Let go of me you big boobs monster. Slych cried out. What did you say? Sarah screamed and pinched Slych's cheeks. You. Slych mumbled in pain. Enough. Sarah stopped pinching his cheeks after she heard her mother's voice. Penelope rolled her eyes at her daughter's antics, she approached Slych and hugged him gently. Welcome back son. Slych smiled slightly and received the gentle hug. Penelope let him go shortly afterward. Welcome back. Next was Zua's turn, they both did a manly hug with few pats to their backs. Slych with a smile hugged his father. That I am back, Slych said. You need to tell us everything. Sarah said and dragged Slych towards the living room. Slych sighed and let her drag him. Penelope and Zu followed behind them with slight smiles. The family sat down on the huge couch in the living room. Where is Amelia? Slych asked with slight curiosity, Amelia told him that she was staying with his family during his stay in Ramu. She went back to her home, she said that she needed to prepare herself for something, not sure what she meant by that, Sarah replied. Slych nodded and looked at their neighbor building from the window. His girlfriend Amelia lived next door with her family, that's why they decided to move in this neighborhood because there were familiar faces close by, but it was pure coincidence that their neighbor was Amelia's family. Tell us about Rommel already. Sarah anxiously kept asking. Slych sighed. What do you want to know, that how was the fight against that Ichiro kid? Zhu was the first one to ask. Slych thought for a moment before he replied. Hard, very painful experience which I don't want to experience ever again. What do you mean? Sarah asked with curiosity. His fighting experience was way higher than mine. Every time I made a slight mistake, he was already using that to his advantage, which made the fight very annoying and hard. Especially since I was terrified of his spear-like attack, which as you can see, made quite of a wound on me. Slych said, he took the shirt slightly off and showed them the slight scar. Why was he so ruthless? He could have killed you. Sarah asked with slight anger. Slych chuckled, he shook his head and answered. Dot he could have killed me if he wanted to, I felt it. At first, he aimed his attack on my heart, but he changed the direction and attacked a place which only causes an injury, but not a permanent one. Dot oh, I see. And besides. Ichiro was injured before the match, which made the match unfair. Slych said with a slightly sad face. Penelope nodded. That I saw him on the screen being slightly pale, but I thought it was because the lighting on the stadium was bad, but it seemed that it was because his injury was acting up. Slych nodded, then he remember one thing. Point one second. He took his phone from his pocket and opened it. He saw a few messages, one coming from Amelia, while another one was from a guy called King of Games. Slych knows that it is Ichiro's account. He opened the Worldly Talk message app. King of Games, sorry, the club advisor was panicking too much. I had to do my morning tasks in a few minutes because we had to rush towards the airport because the plane leaves at 7 a.m. I wanted to say goodbye at least, because who knows when we meet next time, Slych saw the message, and he understood now why they left so early. Members of Armia didn't leave so suddenly, because their coach has more experience and didn't panic because of the sudden news. Instead, they left after the rush hour was over. He started typing in the messaging app. Slych 3 Amelia, I see, our coach let us sleep a little bit longer and we only left around 12 am. I wanted to say goodbye as well, and it might take over a year until we meet again, because you will enter high school and I will only enter the third year, but I have a question. Did you get an invitation to the enforcement department's high school from Mars? Slych pressed, sent. Are you messaging with Amelia? Sarah asked. Slych shook his head. Dot no, with Ichiro. Let me see. 
Sarah yelled and tried to look at the screen. Dot no. Slych pushed Sarah away and hid the phone. Humph, Sarah pouted. Brr Slych felt vibrations coming from the phone. He again looked at the screen and saw a message coming from King of Games. King of Games, yes, actually I did receive an invitation, why are you asking? Slych started typing. Slych 3 Amelia, I received one too. Will you accept the invitation? Slych typed the word, sent. He waited for the answer with slight nervousness. Ding again the phone vibrated. King of Games, not sure yet. I need to decide which high school I go to this month, I guess I will discuss it with my parents because the enforcement department's high school is located in Taran. Taran is the capital city in Jensa. Taran's middle school was also the biggest challenger for Armia in the tournament, but Taran lost to Armia last year, and they didn't manage to face each other this year. Slych looked at the screen and thought deeply. Taran is 500 kilometers away from Armia. While it is about 1000 kilometers away from Irio. He again started typing on the phone. Slych 3 Amelia, I see, I am thinking of going there, so can you tell me if you decide to go as well, would be nice to be on the same team in high school. Slych waited for the answer with a nervous look. But then the ringing voice came from the door. Ring someone pressed the doorbell. Who could it be at this hour? Penelope thought and went to open the door. Slych, Sarah, and Zo looked at the door. Penelope opened the door and saw a girl with blonde hair which was styled in a ponytail, she had mesmerizing green eyes, which makes her overall look quite unique and cute. She looked very innocent with her slim build, cup-sized breasts, and height being only around 161 centimeters, Penelope smiled gently and said. Amelia, did you come to meet Slych? Amelia smiled shyly and nodded. Come in, Penelope said with a slight sly smile and led Amelia inside the house. Slych saw the person who came inside the house, and he was instantly mesmerized, even though he met her last time a few days ago, he was still mesmerized by the cuteness his girlfriend showed. Sarah rolled her eyes while seeing Slych being dumbstruck, she elbowed his waist. Slych was brought of his thoughts, he saw everyone looking at him. He slightly blushed and stood up, and walked to Amelia. Hey, Slych said with an awkward tone. Hi. Amelia with blush replied. Should we talk in my room? Slych suggested and Amelia nodded. Penelope, Sarah, and Zoe only sighed while looking at the couple, who were currently walking towards Slych's room. Slych opened the door to his room and let Amelia in. He followed behind her and closed the door. He was about to open his mouth, but then vibrations came from his phone. Dot oh one section. Slych stuttered and opened the phone. Amelia nodded shyly and sat down on Slych's bed. Slych saw a message coming from King of Games, he opened the message and saw Ichiro's reply. King of Games, I will tell you about my decision, and about us being on the same team. Isn't that a little bit too OP? Think about the kids we will make cry while we dominate. You sure are ruthless, but sure, being in the same team sounds cool. P.S. Change your nickname for fuck's sake, I can't take you seriously while you write with that name. Slych chuckled, with a smile he replied. Slych 3 Amelia, jealous? Slych smirked and closed the phone. Amelia looked at him with curiosity, he rarely sees him smiling, except when he is talking with her. She got very curious. Who are you talking to? Amelia narrowed her eyes. Is he talking with another girl? Slych didn't know what his girlfriend was thinking, he answered. With Ichiro. Slych smiled and sat next to Amelia in his bed. Amelia's expression brightened and smiled. Slych and Amelia sat in silence with their shoulders touching. Slych's throat went dry. While Amelia trembled and tried to gather her courage. You can do this. Amelia thought with a firm look, she looked at Slych with her green eyes. Time for your reward, Amelia said shyly. Slych tensed up with a trembling body. Amelia moved her body and sat down on Slych's lap. Dot Slych was about to ask what she was doing. 
But Amelia didn't let him finish his words, instead, she locked her lips with his. Mmm, Slych opened his eyes in shock. After their slightly amateurish kiss. H happy with your reward? She asked with slight shyness. Slych nodded dumbly. See you tomorrow. Amelia said in hurry and left the room with a huge blush on her face. Slych fell down to the bed, he touched his lips. Dot oh my god. He said, while his cheeks were dyed in pink. Slych 3 Amelia, jealous? Ichiro saw the message Slych sent and was fuming in anger. That I am jealous. Ichiro was crying imaginary tears of blood. Even though I am a virgin, I shall not tolerate this bullying. Ichiro said with a righteous tone. He was currently sitting on the floor in his room while booting up his console. He put his phone on the ground, to let the phone's battery charge in peace. Ichiro looked at the screen of his TV and saw a selection of different games on his gaming console. He saw fighting games, racing games, and some dating simulators. Ichiro went through the entire game selections. Until he finally got interested in one of the games. The screen showed a picture of three figures and it looked like they were fighting against some dangerous looking monster. The three figures' bodies glowed in different colors, the female in right glowed in blue, the man in the middle glowed in black while the young looking man in left glowed in green. And the dangerous looking monster's eyes were glowing in red while his teeth were bearing towards the three figures. The three figures were facing against the dangerous looking monster, but the three figures didn't have faces of fear. Instead faces of determination. Interesting. Ichiro thought aloud, he looked at the game's name. Night's End. The game's name was called Night's End and it was currently one of the most popular video games. The game is an MMORPG type of game, you adventure through the game, level up, and most importantly, exterminate the dangerous looking beasts. Ichiro used his controller and pressed the word, play. Which instantly made the TV screen go black, and shortly afterward the game booted up. The screen of the game appeared. Enter the journey. Shop. Training. Friend list. Credits. Ichiro looked at the different choices, behind the words, a video was shown. In the video, the three figures fought against the dangerous looking monster and eventually killed it. Ichiro looked at the TV screen and saw his gamer tag, King of Games. And next to the tag was his level. Level, 395. That seems a lot. Ichiro thought aloud, he wonders how many hours did the previous Ichiro play. He clicked the, friend list. Ichiro looked at the screen and widened his eyes slightly. He had around 3,000 friends. And most of them were around 150,200 levels while highest one was 267 level. Why did he add so many plebs to a friend list? Ichiro shook his head in disapproval. He remembers from his memories that the previous Ichiro accepted every friend request, but he never interacted with anyone, he only adventured through the game and leveled up his account, while defeating the boss monsters solo. Ichiro next clicked, enter the journey. The screen went white first before the screen showed a vast world that looked magical. Birds the size of a plane were flying in the sky, while the trees were even bigger than skyscrapers. Ichiro's avatar appeared in the forest, in the middle of nowhere. He went through the inventory and that it was full of potions, weapons, and some run-looking items. He took one of the swords with the name of, Excalibur Extreme. He saw the rank of the weapon being, beyond mythical. Damn, sounds powerful, Ichiro exclaimed, he started walking through the forest. This looks beautiful. Ichiro said while looking at the scenery around him, the place was fully green, which screamed the word nature. In real life. Ichiro took black-colored headphones from the cabinet and put them on his head. Inside the game. A picture of a mic appeared, meaning that voice chat is now working. Ichiro nodded and kept walking through the vast world of Night's End. Ichiro's avatar was fully glad in some red-gold-colored armor, with a cape that made him seem like a hero from an ancient fairy tale. He walked deeper into the forest, and the green-colored forest disappeared and only dark-looking scenery was ahead of him. The scenery in front of him screamed the word, darkness, dot cool, Ichiro said, and walked deeper into the forest. After he entered the dark area of the forest. Forest started trembling. Ichiro looked around him but didn't see what caused the huge earthquake to happen. 
dot human. How dare you enter the sacred forest of Darcelian? A huge roar was heard in the forest. Multiple figures appeared from the depths of the forest and surrounded Ichiro's avatar. Dot human, you shall die for this insolence. The man in the figure roared in anger, on top of his head, words were shown. Follower of Darcelian Dark Knight Interium Level 220. Black cloaked figures around him also showed the same words of being a follower of Darcelian but didn't have a personal name. They all also had levels of around 180. Level 220. Get good noob. Ichiro told mockingly, he unsheathed his Excalibur and pointed towards Interium. Dot kill this insect. Interium roared with a mad looking face. Dot your H. Five black cloaked figures around him sprinted towards Ichiro's avatar. The black cloaked figures unsheathed their black colored swords. Wish the five black cloaked figures with perfect timing swung their swords towards Ichiro's avatar. Ichiro looked at the screen and saw that by doing certain combos, he will unleash an ultimate attack. With an insane speed that is impossible for humans to achieve, he started pressing buttons on his controller. X square circle circle R1 R1 X R2 X square. Once he was done doing that, he saw his avatar glowing. In the game. The five black cloaked figures had their swords inches away from hitting Ichiro's figure. Interium and the black cloaked figures had visible smirks on their faces. But then Ichiro's avatar started glowing on red. Life Destructor. Ichiro swung his sword which was coated in red color. Red energy went through the five black cloaked figures. And instantly their HP bar went from 100. 000 to 0. Wah. Interium looked shocked, with a fear-filled face he started slowly walking backward. Easy game, Ichiro said, he saw that the dead black cloaked figures gave some kind of items after their death. He took the items quickly and looked at the trembling figure of Interium. Ichiro smirked in real life and started moving his avatar closer to Interium. Dada stay away. Interium cried out and started running away. Ichiro pressed L3 and started running towards Interium. He easily ran past the figure of Interium and appeared in front of him. Interium widened his eyes, with trembling hands he took a sword from his waist. He pointed the trembling sword at Ichiro's avatar. Ichiro again started doing an attack combo. After doing that, his body started glowing in the color of gold. Life extinguisher. He swung the gold-coated sword and aimed at Interium's neck. Dot no. Interium cried out, but it was his last words. His 255. 000, 000 HP went down to zero in instant. Ichiro looked at the screen and saw his attack doing 10. 535, 000, 000 damage. RRRR again the earth trembled. Ichiro looked at the mountain, and he was sure that the roar came from there. He was planning to go there. But then the top of the mountain exploded and hundreds of rocks started flying straight towards the ground. It looked like a rain of meteors appeared in the sky. Ichiro used his impossible hand movement and dodged the falling rocks with ease. After the rocks, he saw a huge shadow appearing above him. He turned his avatar's face towards the sky and saw a huge black-colored dragon with a menacing-looking face. The black-colored dragon was looking with murderous intent towards Ichiro. The black-colored dragon also had a name on top of his head. Evil Dragon Darcelian Level 380. Dot ah, uh, shit, Ichiro muttered in his mic, he wasn't sure can he kill him, because the level difference is nothing at all. He tried to remember how the previous Ichiro used to fight and a few fighting scenes came into his mind. He quickly clicked the inventory and took another sword. Clarence Despair Extreme. Beyond Mythical. A beautiful red and black colored long sword appeared on his left hand. He swung the two blades masterfully around him, it was like he has done it thousand times. Roar. Darcelian's roar echoed in the forest which caused some of the trees to fly out of their roots. Dot let's do this you big fucking lizard. Ichiro said and started pressing the buttons in a masterful manner. The two swords instantly glowed in the color of black and white. The colors fused together. Darcelian felt immense strength coming from the puny human in front of him. He looked with his dark red eyes towards the human, who was about to swing his swords. He only looked with disdain towards the insect in front of him. 
Ichiro already finished charging up his swords, he aimed his swords towards Darcelian. Death Destructor Ichiro swung the swords, and instantly huge white and black coated slash of pure energy started flying through the sky. The energy approached Darcelian's huge figure with alarming speed. The closer the energy got, the more danger Darcelian felt. And after energy was only about 10 meters away from him. Darcelian widened his dark eyes in shock. He felt. Death. Slash ROAR Darcelian roared in pain and despair, the slash went straight through his body. Darcelian only looked helplessly as his body was sliced in half. His vision went darker and darker, until his heart stopped beating. Evil Dragon Darcelian exterminated. Ichiro saw a huge screen appearing in front of him. He put his swords back to his sheaths. That was fun. Ichiro said, but then moment later. Announcement appeared on the sky. World announcement congratulations player king of games first clear of sacred forest of Darcelian. World announcement congratulations player king of games rewards 100. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 exp beyond mythical item 1. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 golden coins beyond mythical name tag. World announcement congratulations player king of games first solo clear of sacred forest of Darcelian. World announcement congratulations player king of games rewards 100. 000, 000, 000 000 EXP Sacred Sword of Darcelian 1 000 000 000 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 Golden Coins World Announcement Congratulations Player King of Games First Clear of World Quest World Announcement Congratulations Player King of Games 1 000 000 000 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 EXP Heavenly Blessing of Michael 10 000 000 000, 000, 000, 000 000 golden coins. World announcement congratulations player king of games first solo clear of world quest. World announcement congratulations player king of games 1. 000 000 000 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 exp heavenly armor of serial 10. 000 000 000 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 golden coins hero of hall of fame. World announcement evil dragon Darcelian has been defeated. The tyranny of Darcelian has ended and the world of Night's End shall turn into era of peace once again. World announcement God has taken notice of King of Games achievement God might have found a successor. Hall of Fame 1. King of Games level 415 defeated the evil dragon Darcelian. 10. Rock player, what the? Star lover 42069, King of Games I want your babies 3. Beroval, how? My friends and I are only in the village saving quest, how did he manage to beat the world quest already? KOG underscore is underscore the underscore best, he is the king of games, he has done some messed up shit for years. Beating a world quest alone. That is fucking easy for him. Sancho, I bet all my earnings that he is a hacker. This game has only been around for 3 years and he is already over 400 levels. Hello game developers, what the fuck are you guys doing? KOG underscore is underscore the underscore best, another one of these fools. Undying, Sancho you are new right? There have been tons of reports against him, but the game developers always had one answer, he is just better than everyone else. He isn't cheating, he isn't hacking. There is a way to level up faster while defeating opponents who have a higher level than you, but that needs incredible mechanical skills, which many doesn't have, but King of Games has the best mechanical skills in the world. Surname 44, Undying Well said Undying Senpai. KOG underscore is underscore the underscore best, Undying 3333. The internet was busy, with hundreds of conversations going on at the same time. But during this time, Ichiro was still in game while being oblivious of the shock he caused. Ichiro's avatar left the sacred forest of Darcelian. With steady steps, the armored avatar kept walking on the small rocky road. That what should I do now? Ichiro thought, he looked at the map a few moments ago, and he saw that there was a small village not far from him. He decided to go there and decide what to do next after arriving in the village. Ichiro kept walking for another half an hour, some people would find it boring to spend so much time doing nothing in game. But Ichiro didn't even use the sprint button on his controller instead, he only walked at a leisurely pace. A few moments later, Ichiro started thinking that he might be lost. 
but then he saw a small wall coming to his sight. He saw that it was about a hundred meters away from him. The small wall was made of wood and looked very unreliable. But it can keep the smaller beasts away from the village, but if some of the bigger ones come. The wall wouldn't do anything. Ichiro started walking towards the shabby-looking wall. Once he arrived, he instantly heard multiple footsteps running in a hurry on the other side of the wall. Ichiro didn't move, instead waited. Sometime later. The gates of the village opened. Ichiro saw multiple figures coming with shabby-looking outfits, which looked more like a rag than actual clothes. Ichiro saw that only one of them had a name. The figure in front. Village Chief of Lord Vane Lambard Level 201, Hello Adventurer, what is your purpose here? Lambard asked with slight wary. Ichiro is thinking that should he use the mic to answer, because there isn't any other way to answer. Ichiro tried and said, that this was the closest place to human civilization, that's why I am here. He said in a simple manner. Lambard nodded and looked thoughtful for a moment. He can clearly see the items the adventurer in front of him was extraordinary, he can't be ordinary that I see, come in then adventurer. Lambard motioned to go inside the village. Ichiro walked casually and entered the village. He finally could see a clear picture of the village's state. Most of the houses were broken, holes filling the walls, floor, and ceilings of the house. Also, the villagers were wearing rags as their clothes, which is surprisingly even dirtier looking than the village chief's rag-like clothes. That this is our village called Lordvane, I know that it looks shabby, but it is our home, so I would like you not to think bad of it, Lambard said towards Ichiro and waited for his reaction. Ichiro looked surprised in real life. I have seen a lot of poverty in my last life, and I have never made fun of them, and I will not start now. Ichiro thought, that I am only a guest of this village, I try not to be disrespectful. Ichiro moved his avatar and did a small bow. Lambard looked shocked, but his face went normal quickly, he gave an approving nod and started walking deeper inside the village. Ichiro moved his avatar and started looking around the village. Even though the village is in poverty, it still looked like the villagers and children were happy with their lives. He walked deeper inside the village and saw a very strange sight. He saw a player with a female avatar sitting on the bench, while a dozen children were in front of her, dot all right kids, that was all for tonight. The female avatar said with a voice filled with youthfulness and gentleness. The kids in front of her groaned in disappointment but nodded sadly. The kids left after giving a last hug towards the female avatar. Ichiro looked at the scene with fascination. The female avatar looked gently towards the kid, but then she felt a gaze on her. She turned her head and looked straight at Ichiro. She looked shocked at first because rarely do any players come here, that who are you? She asked, her tone instantly was shy, she rarely comes in contact with any player, dot ah. Ichiro was brought out of his thoughts and he slightly panicked because it was his first conversation with another player. She kept looking at Ichiro, waiting for his answer. Cough Ichiro coughed to get out of embarrassment, but he only coughed in real life. Why am I coughing? Ichiro thought, he shook his head, that this was the closest place on map. Ichiro replied. The female avatar nodded and stood up from the bench and was about to leave. But then Ichiro yelled, dot wait. The female avatar stopped, she turned her head and looked at Ichiro, dot w. Why did you treat them like they were humans? Ichiro asked, he was very curious. The female avatar exclaimed in the voice chat. She thought for a moment and decided to answer, she sat down on the bench. Ichiro walked a little bit closer and waited for her answer, that what do you think about this game? She asked. Ichiro thought for a moment, before answering, dot magical, dot indeed, it is magical, but we the players are only visitors in this world while the so-called NPCs are true residents, dot but isn't this just a game? Ichiro asked with curiosity. The female avatar looked at Ichiro's figure, dot have you not seen it? The NPCs feel so real, they can talk to you normally like you are talking with another player or human. How is that possible without NPCs having even slight artificial intelligence? Ichiro looked shocked, dot there have been rumors of this game's NPCs having first artificial intelligence, but there haven't been many proofs, but the way NPCs are acting. They can evolve, they can live their lives however they want, they aren't connected to anything. They are like humans. 
Ichiro looked thoughtful while looking at the female avatar sitting on the bench, that that's why I hate those people who kill NPCs for fun. The female avatar said angrily, then she turned her head towards Ichiro and asked, that have you killed any NPCs? Ichiro thought for a moment and went through his memories. And he saw that he has only killed monsters, that only monsters, Ichiro replied. The female avatar nodded but was still not trusting fully, especially since most of the players want to try to kill an NPC for a test. But then she remembered how she talked about the NPCs. Ah. So embarrassing. I always get enthusiastic while talking about them. In the real life, she blushed heavily out of embarrassment. Ichiro not knowing anything about her embarrassment decided to ask, that why are you playing this game? The female avatar trembled for a moment, she kept thinking that should she answer or not, that it's fine if you don't want to talk about it, Ichiro said immediately after seeing her conflicted look. It seems that he hit her sore spot. Why did I even ask, she is completely random and I must look like a creep right now. Ichiro started hitting his head in real life to get rid of his stupidity. That it's fine. Ichiro stopped hitting his head after hearing the female avatar's words. She continued a few moments later. That I started playing because I hoped that I would become wealthy in the game and transfer the money to real life. I have a mother who is sick, she might never wake up and the operation which would make her healthy again. Is very expensive. Her tone was filled with sadness. Ichiro looked shocked, he asked. How much do you need? The female avatar sighed. Got at least ten. Zero zero zero, zero 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 golden coins. I only have thirteen twenty-three golden coins. It's hopeless. She remembers the words her uncle said. That to earn the money quickly was to do some escort jobs. She would need to sell her body and she might earn the money in half a year. But she got rid of all connections with her uncle and said that she will never do it. She had hopes that she would earn great wealth in the game, but her hopes have been crushed day after day. She misses her mother. Should I do it? She thought with trembling hands. Ichiro was thinking. 10, 000. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 golden coins. That's not much is it? He looked at the screen and saw his total golden coin count. Golden coins, 32. 467, 342, 025. He has 32 billion golden coins. Wait you can transfer all this into real life money. Why didn't previous Ichiro do it? Ichiro thought with a shock, he went through his memories. Dot ah, Ichiro exclaimed, he facebombed in his real life. Previous Ichiro was genius in games, but he also lacked common sense. Previous Ichiro never knew that you can transfer the coins to real money, he thought it was mostly to buy things from the shop. And he never bothered to check it out, he only killed monsters while never interacting with other players. He looked at the female avatar. Well, I have a lot of coins. He took a bag of 100. 000, 000 golden coins. Here. Ichiro dropped the bag next to her. The female avatar was brought of her thoughts, she looked at the ordinary looking bag next to her and grabbed it. She received an announcement. Player King of Games transferred 100. 000, 000 golden coins player Night Butterfly received 100. 000, 000 000 golden coins. Dot wa. Night Butterfly exclaimed, she turned her avatar's face in shock towards Ichiro. That I can't take this. She tried to give the bag with clumsy hands back. Ichiro shook his head. Dot don't need it, I have 32. 367, 342. 025 golden coins left. Night Butterfly's mouth went wide open until her eyes started moistening in real life while tears started dropping out of her eyes. Dot T thank you. I will never forget this. She said with a sobbing tone. Dot no need for thanks. Ichiro shook his head. Dot H here. Night Butterfly said while still having same sobbing tone. Ichiro looked and saw that she sent a friend request. Night Butterfly level 129. Accept reject. Ichiro clicked accept. Night Butterfly instantly started transferring the money to her real life account. She has been dreaming of curing her mother for months, and now that she has money for it, she is very anxious and nervous. 
After she was done, with teary voice she said. Point two I'm sorry but I have to go. But I will never forget this. Ichiro smiled slightly and nodded. Night Butterfly's avatar disappeared into pixels. She was so shocked that she completely forgot to check the player's name who gave the money. But the next time she comes online. She is in for a surprise. Ichiro tried to find where you can transfer the money into real life money. He knows that he has own bank account. After searching some time later, he finally found it. Amount. Ichiro thought and decided to put 1 billion golden coins first. 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 golden coins exchanged for 100. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Dot what? Ichiro exclaimed loudly. Point 2 a.m. Ryak. He cried out. That I am rich. Ichiro started celebrating in his room. He quickly used his controller and logged off the game. He giggled like a kid he took his phone and was about to open his bank account. But then a notification appeared from the system. Host has transferred 100. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 to system, system thanks for the patronage, dot transferred. Patronage? What the fuck? Ichiro roared in anger, dot language. Ichiro heard a loud female scream from downstairs, dot fuck. Ichiro said quietly, dot system, what the fuck is this? Host becoming wealthy would severely hinder his martial arts journey, dot wa. Ichiro looked shocked. Host will be able to use his wealth once he reaches martial saint realm, dot f, f u c k. System give me my money. Ichiro started hitting his head, thinking that it would affect the system as well. Host, stop it. You are hurting yourself, not me, dot fuck you. Ichiro growled in anger and started hitting even stronger. Host, stop being stupid shithead. Ichiro stopped hitting, his face grimaced. He asked, that what did you call me? Shithead, dot jara. Ichiro's eyes went bloodshot. Enough host. For your patronage of 100. 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 your debt of 1000 coins will be removed. Congratulations. You received 1,000 coins. Name, Karagami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Age, 15. Level, 5, SP, 0, coins, 0, 850, EXP. HP 7575. Strength, 55. Agility, 50. Stamina, 72. Vitality, 45. Quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Martial arts, Taekwondo, Iron Style, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weakness Detection ILV-1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Killing Blow, Rare, Dot, this allows you to kill anyone with one strike, but the attack needs to hit the target's body you can't kill Martial King or above with rare. Killing blow only martial general and below. Death ignore, mythical, dot, death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert blacksmithing mastery, gives you abilities of master blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before, dot don't care, give me my money. Ichiro fell to the ground dramatically he started rolling on the floor while throwing a tantrum. Host, for fuck's sake. Stop acting like a child, dot fuck you, I am a child. Ichiro growled in anger. Hmm, oh yeah. It seems that your last life personality has already been wiped out. You have your experiences and mind of your previous life, but nature has been changed. You are basically the fusion of previous Ichiro and the Ichiro from Earth, that how come you can speak so fluently now? You used to be a mute bitch before. Host, that isn't polite, I can electrocute you and I won't hesitate to do so. And I am becoming more sentient the moment you upgrade the system to a higher level, that I don't want to upgrade the system anymore. Ichiro groaned while lying on the ground. You have no other choice. Either you will stay as martial leader, or you will continue your martial arts path, that you are very annoying, are you, man or woman? Neither. But I would like you to think that I am a man, 
because who knows what kind of perverted fantasies you will have of me if you think I am a woman, but do you think I am a pervert? Ichiro roared. Affirmative, but my day has been ruined. Ichiro groaned. Host. Even though you are the stupidest person I have ever met, you still did a good thing today. Helping the player called Night Butterfly will have considerable consequences in your life, and it will be in a good way, dot really. You can see the future or... Ichiro asked with curiosity. I can only see the destinies of certain people, and I saw clearly how Night Butterfly's destiny changed because she met you. If she didn't meet you today, her life would have gotten very dark, that I see. Ichiro was now happy, even though his life was ruined because of the bitch system, but knowing that he helped someone get rid of a dark future, he felt proud and happy, that what was so dark about her future anyway. She would end up selling her body but will never get enough money in time before her mother dies, she will never be able to leave that job, and eventually, she gets tired of her dark life and ends up committing suicide three years later, dot what? Ichiro stood up from the ground and yelled. You saved her miserable life, now doctors will fully cure her mother, and she will have a happy childhood. Ichiro nodded, he narrowed his eyes, dot who ruined her life. Underworld located in winter light, dot should I go and kill them? Ichiro thought deeply. If you go there, you will die in an instant, and besides, your destiny is connected with the underworld. You will have time, be patient host. Sai Ichiro sighed and sat on his bed he scratched his head in frustration. Be patient, host. Your time will come focus on getting stronger, dot understood. Ichiro mumbled he laid down on the bed, dot system, can you see my destiny and my future? I can't, but I know that you are the most crucial piece in the world, dot what do you mean? You are the main character, that I see. Ichiro said with a questioning face. I don't see what you will become. There are two essential pieces in every world. The one who becomes the so-called villain and the one who becomes the so-called hero. I can't see which one you are, that I see, dot so. Is another individual one also reincarnation with a system? No host. You are the only reincarnator and only one with a system in this world. The destiny tells me that there are two beings born in this world. The one with a painful journey ahead. The second one is the one who shall carry the responsibilities of many. Even though you are a reincarnator. You were born on this world with natural means, which means that you are the same as anyone else in this world. And host. I suggest you get rid of the thought that you killed the previous Ichiro, it will hinder your path, and you won't be able to reach Marshal Captain without your mind being on proper order. Point two don't think I killed him. Ichiro said with slight uncertainty. Host. I can see your deepest thoughts you feel guilty every time you look at your parents. You are their son. You are Kuragami Ichiro. You are the one who has a deep love for games. You are the one who was born on this world, dot b but. Ichiro stuttered with a slight teary tone. Enough, let him talk instead. Ichiro raised an eyebrow, but then everything went dark. Ichiro's body lay on the bed lifelessly with eyes closed, dot but inside his mind. A figure of a young man was floating in the black void. Ichiro looked around him in panic he started breathing heavily, dot did I die again? Or was it all dream? Ichiro thought aloud with panic while floating in the dark void. Swoosh but then bright light of pure energy appeared around him. Ichiro looked warily around him, but he didn't feel any hostility coming from the light instead, he felt warmth. The light disappeared, and a figure with a pure white outfit appeared in front of him. The young man in front of him looked exactly like him. Except he has pure white hair, white eyes, and white eyebrows. He looked like a divine being. Ichiro had the same face as the white-haired young man in front of him. Except Ichiro has jet black hair with black eyebrows and black eyes. Ichiro. The white-haired young man said with a soothing voice. Are you him? Ichiro asked with curiosity. That I am. Ichiro looked instantly quilty, he turned his head away from him, but then he felt a warm hand on his shoulder. He turned his head and saw the white haired young man gently smiling at him, that I know that you are guilty, but don't be. We are the same I am you. You didn't kill me because I still live since I am you, and you are me. The white haired young man said gently. Ichiro opened his eyes wide open, that you need to get rid of this thought. To reach Marshal Captain, your mind and body need to be in perfect connection. So far, neither of them is perfect, 
but soon your body will be in perfect connection, but your mind is the one who should be the first one to be fully connected. You need to accept that we are the same otherwise, you will never reach Marshal Captain. Ichiro went deep into his thoughts, that I understand. How should I do it? Ichiro asked with a firm look he has felt guilty for weeks now, every time he is playing with Ayako. Every time he talks with his parents. He feels immense guilt after hearing the soothing voice of the white-haired young man in front of him. He concluded. The white-haired man smiled gently he put his soft-looking hand on Ichiro's forehead that you need to experience my memories fully. Swish Ichiro opened his eyes wide and saw the light covering his body. The next thing he saw was the memories and experiences of the white-haired Ichiro. Ichiro opened his eyes and saw his room's white ceiling. Was it dream? Ichiro thought first, but the moment he tried to stand up from the bed. He noticed that he couldn't move. Sleep paralysis. Ichiro thought with shock. He tried to speak but couldn't. System help. Ichiro cried out in his mind. But no answer came. Fucking system help, useless bitch. He cried out with bloodshot eyes. Big brother, wake up. Ichiro heard a loud yell, and Ayako opened the door with a slam. Ayako, my lovely sister, help me. Ichiro cried out. Wake up. Ayako jumped straight at Ichiro's stomach. Oof. Ichiro caught Ayako's tiny body. Ayako, what do you want? Dot mom said to wake you up, Ayako said while his shining black eyes looked at Ichiro. Dot all right. Ichiro nodded and stood up lazily. But inside his mind. What is this? It wasn't me talking. Ichiro, in his mind, yelled with a shock. Is this the experiencing the memories thingy? Ichiro finally realized that it wasn't a dream. But this seems very ordinary day. Why is he showing me this? Ichiro kept thinking while looking at the things the previous Ichiro used to do. Ichiro did his ordinary morning routine, and after that, he walked downstairs at a leisurely pace. He walked to the kitchen and saw his little sister sitting at the table while waiting for breakfast to come. And saw his mother working in the kitchen. Ichiro walked towards Ayako and pinched her cheeks. Mo. Ayako pouted while Ichiro chuckled and sat down on the chair. Azumi brought the food to the table, and the two siblings started munching on the food with alarming speed. Azumi sighed but smiled gently while looking at them. Ichiro finished the food and went back to his room to dress up in his school outfit. Ichiro, in his mind, noticed that the necktie he had was with the color of yellow, which means that current Ichiro was in his second year. But the outfit was different, and it wasn't the same as the school outfit from Irio's public middle school. The outfit was gray with slight strides of black. It seems that Ichiro wasn't in the Irio's public middle school. Ichiro in his mind thought it was strange but didn't care about it too much. He looked at the mirror and saw a handsome black-haired young man with a small amount of baby fat still in his cheeks. Ichiro took his school bag and went downstairs. He opened the door and started walking towards school at a leisurely pace. Ayako is still in elementary school, that's why his parents will take her to her school, which is located in a different direction from Ichiro's middle school. Whistle Ichiro whistled while walking towards the school. While he was walking, he saw many older people about to open their stores. Ichiro greeted them with a smile, and the older people replied with gentle smiles. He also saw multiple students walking in the same direction. His figure attracted quite a lot of attention, especially from the younger girls. But the ones who were in second year as him shook their heads once they saw him. Since he wasn't interested in martial arts, he was considered an anomaly. And they think that Ichiro is mostly a nerd who likes video games. You can earn a lot from video games because the concept of video games is very famous. Especially the game called Night's End, which got released a year ago. Ichiro also tried it out and liked the game very much since then, he has been grinding levels and became the best player in the world. Everyone knows the name King of Games. But of course, current Ichiro wasn't aware because he never interacted with anyone in the game. That's why most of the students in his class think that he is a fool with a dream that will never be reached. A scarce amount of players earn enough. But current Ichiro has earned more than the entire player base combined. Currently, Ichiro in the school doesn't have any friends to talk with. He hasn't met his friends Mark Ali-san and the rest yet. His school days usually are very dull. 
but he still gets good grades because, without good grades, his parents wouldn't approve of his gaming habit. Ichiro was still some distance away from his school he already saw a building of Irio's public middle school, but his school is still some distance away. It was about two kilometers away from Irio's public middle school. He was about to start walking faster because he might be late, dot ha ha ha. But then Ichiro heard menacing sounding laughter coming from multiple figures. He perked up his ears. He listened closely and heard laughter coming from one of the alleys. With curiosity, he walked closer to the alley. There he saw five delinquent-looking individuals beating up a young-looking man who kept lying on the ground. The young-looking man has his body filled with wounds, blood gushing out of his body, coloring the ground underneath him in red. Ichiro widened his eyes his body trembled while looking at the brutal sight. The delinquent-looking individuals looked around 19-20 years old, probably in college already, except if they got dropped out because they look like they don't give a shit about school. Ugh. The young-looking individual again groaned in pain his vision was starting to get blurrier, that this bastard has only ten, this poor bastard. One of the delinquent-looking individuals growled and kicked at the young-looking man with anger. Bam bam bam. Urgh. The young-looking man's face was stained with tears he felt his bones getting crushed because of the strength of the kicks, point one zero isn't even enough for lunch. The delinquent-looking individual growled while scratching his head. One of the delinquent-looking individuals grabbed the young man's hair and asked, Dot where is your house, and tell me where you hid your money. I can't. My sister is alone in the house. The young man thought anxiously, Dot that's all money I have. He screamed out while he kept spitting blood out of his mouth, Dot fucker, stop lying. The delinquent-looking individual again was about to kick him, but then a loud yell was heard from the alley entrance, Dot stop it. The five delinquent-looking individuals looked warily at the alley entrance and saw a young man with black hair and a handsome face standing with a trembling body. Who the fuck are you? One of them asked, Dot I'll leave him alone. If he doesn't get treated, he will die. Ichiro screamed and hoped that they would understand. But the five delinquent-looking individuals started chuckling, Dot Wy are you laughing? Ichiro cried out. One of the delinquents walked towards Ichiro. Ichiro started stepping backward while feeling the scared first time in his life, that we are part of the underworld. Do you know what that means you, moron? Even if we kill, or rob, no one would do shit. The delinquent approached Ichiro even faster, dot eek. Ichiro screamed in fear, dot keek keek. The delinquent chuckled evilly he enjoyed his fearful look. The delinquent suddenly started sprinting. Under Ichiro's astonished look, he appeared in front of him. He punched the abdomen of Ichiro, which sent Ichiro flying for a few meters until he fell on the hard ground painfully. Ugh. Ichiro screamed in pain he clutched his stomach while rolling on the ground in agony. The delinquent kept chuckling he approached Ichiro and stepped down on his face, dot your righteous bullshit is useless here only strong may triumph. He stepped down on his face even stronger. Ichiro's face started bleeding while the ground below him began to crack, dot yo. Ichiro couldn't even form sentences anymore he felt his skull was close to breaking, dot let's see how much money he has. One of the delinquents in the alley suggested, he walked towards them. He crouched and started going through Ichiro's pockets until he finally found his phone and wallet dot this phone seems expensive. He said thoughtfully, dot no. Give it back. Ichiro cried out while stretching his hand towards the phone it was a gift he had received from his mother. Their family isn't that wealthy that's why the phone was essential and valuable, dot shut the fuck up. The delinquent growled and punched at Ichiro's face, dot arg. Ichiro grimaced in pain, his nose broke, and blood started flowing from his lip. The delinquent smirked and went through the wallet. He took pair of money bills, dot hmm, fifty only, better than nothing. The delinquent shook his head in disappointment he put the wallet and phone in his pockets and walked back to the alley. There was still one of the delinquents holding Ichiro down while stepping on his face, dot dame, let's go. One of the delinquents from the alleyway roared, dot all right. Dame stopped stepping down on Ichiro's face and left with other delinquents who were still laughing. Only the broken-looking young man was left on the alleyway the ground around him was stained with blood. While Ichiro was trying to push himself up, but he didn't have any strength. He could barely feel his legs because of the fear he felt only moments ago. Ichiro in his mind, kept looking at the scene with an angry looking face. You dare to rob me? You dare to humiliate me? Don't worry, Ichiro, I will handle them. 
Ichiro thought with anger while talking towards the scared-looking Ichiro, even though he couldn't hear him. He felt every emotion Ichiro felt. Anger. Pity towards the young man. Fear. Helplessness. Ichiro never felt this helpless, even when looking at the martial captain from afar. But looking at this scene. The memories of previous Ichiro. He felt genuinely helpless, dot ah. Ichiro exclaimed because the memory shattered like a piece of glass. He looked around him and saw that he had returned to the black void. Dot, what do you think? He heard a voice behind him. He turned his head around quickly and saw the white-haired Ichiro. Ichiro gritted his teeth and clenched his fist. Dot, anger, right? That's what I felt. The white-haired Ichiro told with a pained face. Ichiro stayed quiet and waited for him to continue. Sigh the white-haired Ichiro sighed, that I felt helplessness, I felt fear. I thought I would die. Ichiro interrupted, that why didn't I have any memory of this happening to you? The white-haired Ichiro wryly smiled, that system locked some of the darker memories this was one of them. The system didn't want any distractions, that why did you show these memories now? Ichiro asked, that this is one of the tests for you to reach Marshal Captain. We can't keep these memories secret from you anymore otherwise, you will not be complete as a person, dot are there more of these memories? Ichiro asked with a slight stutter he doesn't want to feel the helplessness ever again, the white-haired Ichiro sadly nodded, dot there are still few, dot fuck. Ichiro cursed he scratched his head in frustration, dot I know, but this is necessary for your growth. The white-haired Ichiro approached Ichiro and told. Ichiro stayed quiet for a moment longer until he decided to ask, dot why didn't you want revenge, dot who told that I didn't want to. The white-haired Ichiro raised an eyebrow. Ichiro looked at him in surprise, that I wanted to hurt those delinquent bastards, I wanted to break them, that's why I started training martial arts. I spent countless months improving my physique, but I didn't even reach the martial novice, I didn't have any talent, the white-haired Ichiro sighed out of frustration. Ichiro widened his eyes, that do you remember once you started training that our body wasn't as terrible as someone would assume? After all, I am known to be only interested in video games, but my body wasn't that bad, that that's true. Ichiro thought aloud. After he got his memories back, his body wasn't that bad, but it was still weak in some sense. But not as bad as someone who doesn't exercise at all, that I decided to give up in martial arts, and I became very fearful of my surroundings. The white-haired Ichiro suddenly said. Ichiro looked at him straight in the eye. The white-haired Ichiro sighed, that I had nightmares of that day for months I thought it would never go away, but one day. The memories of that day were so vague that I stopped thinking about that day. Ichiro sighed and thought. Would I ever be able to forget such experience? Probably not. The white-haired Ichiro then smiled and said, that I don't know if it is destiny or not, but do you remember Lucas telling a story about almost killing a college student once, dot ah, I do, Ichiro said and looked at the white-haired Ichiro with a questioning gaze. The white-haired Ichiro chuckled and told, that the young man who got brutally assaulted in the alley was Lucas' friend, and the delinquents were the ones who felt the wrath of Lucas, dot really? Ichiro widened his eyes, dot yes. The white-haired Ichiro nodded and continued, dot but he didn't tell the whole story of what happened. Indeed, he didn't kill the delinquents, but he did cripple one of them. Ichiro widened his eyes in shock. The white-haired Ichiro chuckled and nodded, dot he crippled the one who stepped on my face, that I wanted to be the one who did that. But oh well. The white-haired Ichiro muttered sadly. Then the white-haired Ichiro turned his gaze towards Ichiro and wryly smiled, that it's time for you to experience another memory, dot damn. Ichiro groaned in annoyance. The white-haired Ichiro walked towards Ichiro and patted his shoulder, dot please promise me that you will give a life for our family, which they deserve. I earned a lot of money, but that can be easily lost without having proper strength. You can protect our family and use the money to make our family happy, dot of course. Ichiro shouted with a firm look, dot good. The white-haired Ichiro chuckled, then his arm turned into bright white light. Swoosh Ichiro again saw the light pierce through his body his vision again turned dark. A moment later, he again opened his eyes. He saw him sitting on the bench, which was located on the rooftop of the school building. Hmm, we are in school. Ichiro thought with slight worry the last memory was already terrible, and this must be as bad. Clank Ichiro turned his head towards the door which led to the rooftop he saw a black-haired young girl opening the door. 
She had a beautiful, youthful face, slick eyebrows, a cute pointed nose, and beautiful blue-colored eyes. Hey, Ichiro. The young girl said with a smile after she approached Ichiro's figure. Ichiro stood up and, with a slight blush, replied, Hey, Amanda, why did you call me here? Ichiro said with slight stutter and nervousness. Amanda smiled sweetly, which instantly brightened up the place, that I like you, please go out with me. She said enthusiastic tone, dot I like. Ichiro exclaimed, dot mm -mm. Amanda nodded cutely, dot ah. Ichiro's face was instantly dyed in pink. He was about to answer with yes, but then he heard slight laughter coming from the door. He turned his head with a questioning look and saw a few of his classmates filming them, dot eh. Ichiro exclaimed, dot pft. A blonde-haired girl in the door bursts into laughter. And two young men next to her also burst into laughter, dot w what is it? Ichiro asked, dot sorry Amanda, just look at his face he totally thought you were serious. The blonde-haired young girl said while giggling, dot eh. Ichiro turned his head towards Amanda. He saw her previous cute look turn into a mocking look while looking at him, dot eh Amanda. Ichiro asked with a nervous face, dot don't say my name. It's creepy. Honestly, did you think I was serious? Did you think I would actually like a good-for-nothing fool like you? In your dreams. Amanda spat out with disgust. The three figures from the door walked next to her. A black-haired young man grabbed Amanda from her waist and pulled her close to his chest, that you see, my boyfriend is peak martial novice fighter, soon he will become martial soldier, and he will be able to join Irio's public middle school's team next year. Amanda proudly declared. Ichiro's eyes moistened while looking at the four figures he saw their mocking looks, filled with disdain and disgust. The black-haired young man grinned viciously, that no one would ever like you, even though you are slightly handsome, it still doesn't change the fact that weaklings shouldn't exist in this world. This world is for the strong. He then approached Ichiro and punched him straight at his gut, dot ugh. Ichiro spat out saliva from his mouth and kneeled on the ground while clutching his stomach. The four figures laughed and walked out of the rooftop, leaving Ichiro behind. Ichiro fell to the ground he clutched his stomach in agony. Wi. Ichiro muttered with tears spilling out of his eyes. Inside his mind. Arg. Ichiro kept roaring for a few minutes already. He first started roaring in mind because he knew that nothing good would come seeing a girl appearing in the vision. Then he roared even more after he saw how bashful Ichiro acted while being in front of her. He felt that Ichiro had a massive crush on that Amanda girl. His heart was crushed into million pieces in that memory. But Ichiro still didn't feel hate any hate towards Amanda. Ichiro in his mind, kept asking why. He only felt anger, envy, and pain. But most of them were aimed towards the black-haired young man in front of him. Who was probably everything Ichiro wanted at one point. Crash crack the memory again shattered into million pieces, and Ichiro appeared in the dark void. He looked around him and tried to find the white-haired Ichiro. The white-haired Ichiro appeared in front of him with a melancholy face. Why? Why didn't you hate her? Ichiro asked with a pained look. The white-haired Ichiro sighed and shook his head, that I loved her. And everything she said was true. I knew it. This place is for the strong, and I was probably the weakest student in there entire school. Ichiro bit his lip. Ha! The white-haired Ichiro breathed heavily. Love is a painful thing. I loved her since elementary school. And the memory of that rooftop was probably the most painful one. I still haven't healed from it. The white-haired Ichiro smiled sadly. Ichiro clenched his fists and hugged him tightly. The white-haired Ichiro looked shocked he widened his eyes. That I promise. I will make her regret. Ichiro cried out while his eyes started moistening. The white-haired Ichiro looked shocked, but then he smiled with slight tears coming from his eyes. He nodded with gratitude. How many memories left? Ichiro asked after he ended the hug. Only one. The white-haired Ichiro told. Ichiro nodded, but the worry still remained. The white-haired Ichiro touched his shoulder and both of them were instantly covered in white light. The memory started. Ichiro opened his eyes and saw him standing on a bridge while looking at the vast lake in front of his eyes. Sniff Ichiro's eyes were filled with tears. 
His face was ashen, and his entire body was trembling. If you look closely, you can see injuries all around his body. Why am I alive? Only to suffer. He thought aloud with a shaky tone. He was leaning on the guardrail. Beyond the guardrail is a fall of 50 m into the lake, which was filled with sharp-looking rocks. With shaky hands and a trembling body, he started climbing the guardrail until he was finally sitting on top of it. Sabichiro's face filled with tear stains while sobbing noise came out of his mouth. Why? Why is everyone so ruthless? I never harmed anyone. Why do they keep bullying me? Ichiro thought angrily while tears kept falling out of his eyes. This month has been definitely the worst time of his entire life. Last month his crush Amanda crushed his heart into million pieces. And the day after that. The video of Amanda confessing and eventually beating me up was spread in the school. Result was. A lot of bullying. He was literally beaten up every day until he didn't even dare to lift his head up, and today he received the worst beating so far. Amanda's boyfriend and his friends assaulted him after Ichiro left the school gates and planned to leave for home. They beat him up till he was forced to beg for mercy. HH have mercy. Ichiro cried out while the black-haired young man looked at the kneeling young man in front of him with a sadistic grin. The black-haired young man stepped on Ichiro's head, making him faceplant straight to the dirty ground. The students around the scene did nothing they only turned their heads and kept walking away from the scene. But some of the students stayed and recorded the scene with slight smirks. The black-haired young man enjoyed this attention very much. He is pretty much the king of the school. His girlfriend is the prettiest student in school. His friends are all at the top of the school hierarchy. But there was one thing he wasn't. The so-called title of the most handsome student in the school didn't belong to him. But it belonged to the begging insect in front of him. It enraged him. Especially since sometimes his girlfriend's gaze lingered in his direction, sometimes a little bit too long. That's why he suggested making fun of Ichiro on the rooftop. Amanda was slightly reluctant but finally agreed. He felt immense pleasure while humiliating him. Sure. I will give you mercy. The black-haired young man grinned viciously. Ichiro looked hopeful, with his face filled with bruises. That I will let you go. But you need to crawl instead. The black-haired young man grinned widely. His friends also had smirks on their faces. The black-haired young man stopped stepping on Ichiro's head. Ichiro's face went pale he felt very humiliated. Dot go on. The black-haired young man ordered while pointing in the direction where Ichiro usually comes from. Tears started forming in the corner of his eyes he started crawling through the ground like a worm. Under mocking laughter, he kept crawling while tears were falling from his eyes. The black-haired young man recorded the scene and planned to spread it everywhere. Ichiro finally crawled far enough and couldn't see the black-haired young man's figure anymore. He stood up, with his pants filled with holes. Sob sniff he started running through the streets while his outfit color was changed from gray to brown. He looked like a homeless man. Ichiro kept running until he arrived at the bridge. He kicked the guardrail in anger he saw a lake and dangerous looking rocks floating in the lake. Maybe. Should I? Ichiro thought, with a pale face he walked to the guardrail and looked at the rocks below him. His face morphed into panic. He always had a fear of heights. But this is something else. He knew that falling there. It would be instant death. But then he thought about the memories of the past month. Why am I alive? Only to suffer. He thought aloud. He climbed the guardrail and sat on top of it. Why? Why is everyone so ruthless? I never harmed anyone. Why do they keep bullying me? Ichiro thought with the face of sorrow. That I should end it today. He thought, and he was about to jump out of the bridge towards his demise. But then memories of his smiling parents came to his mind. Memories of Ayako laughing happily while playing with him. Then the memories turned into visions. He saw his parents crying their eyes out while holding a photo. He also saw Ayako becoming severely depressed. He saw their lives becoming dark. Without even slight happiness in their lives. Ichiro widened his eyes he quickly left the guardrail and fell down on the ground of the bridge heavily. Ha ha ha. Ichiro, with a pale face, kept breathing heavily. 
His chest went up and down. He put his hands on his face and screamed. What the fuck was I about to do? Crash crack memory shattered like glass once again. Ichiro appeared in a dark void while he was still filled with shock. Surprised, right? The white-haired Ichiro told after he saw Ichiro's shocked face. Ichiro dumbly nodded. That I was close to committing suicide that day, but I am glad that I didn't. That I never told my parents about my bullying you must be curious about my different school uniform, right? He asked. Ichiro was brought out of his shock after hearing the white-haired Ichiro's question. Did you change schools because of the bullying? Ichiro asked. The white-haired Ichiro smiled sadly and nodded. Thought it wasn't easy to convince my parents, but I told them that the Irios public middle school was closer. He sighed and said. They finally accepted my reasoning. I ran away from the bullying like a coward. He wryly smiled. Ichiro clenched his fists, he bit his lips in anger. He wasn't feeling anger towards the white-haired Ichiro. Instead, he felt immense anger towards the students from his previous school. The white-haired Ichiro saw his angry-looking face. He chuckled and said. That I guess I need to feel sorry for my old classmates. Ichiro looked towards the white-haired Ichiro with bloodshot eyes. What do you mean? The white-haired Ichiro chuckled and formed a mirror in his hand. Swish he threw the mirror towards Ichiro. Ichiro caught the mirror and saw his face on it. His eyes were bloodshot because of the anger. His whole face was morphed into extreme rage. Ichiro grabbed the mirror harder, which destroyed the mirror. Are you now going to tell me that I should not go there and get my revenge? Ichiro told while gritting his teeth. But then the white-haired Ichiro roared in laughter. Dot ha 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 ha. Ichiro looked strangely at him. The white-haired Ichiro kept laughing a few moments later until he finally managed to say his words. Did you notice? You said, dot my. Revenge, you have finally accepted that we are the same. He said happily. Ichiro looked shocked, and now he remembered. Dot my revenge. Ichiro thought aloud. Crack the dark void started having light appearing from different cracks. The dark void was cracking. The white-haired Ichiro approached Ichiro and hugged him tightly. Ichiro looked surprised, but then he returned the hug. Good luck Ichiro. This will be the last time we meet. The white-haired Ichiro suddenly said. Ichiro's eyes widened. What? The white-haired Ichiro chuckled. Because we will be the same from now on. I am you, and you will be me. From now on. There won't be two Ichiros. Only one. The dark void around them finally cracked into pieces. Only light void remained. Ichiro felt a person hugging him disappearing slowly. The figure in front of him was fusing with him. Ichiro looked at the scene with panic. Dot no, dot don't be sad. It would be weird because I am you. The white-haired Ichiro chuckled and finally disappeared. The white-haired Ichiro fused with Ichiro's body. Swoosh Ichiro saw a bright light appearing in front of him, which instantly covered his figure. Before he could even scream. He disappeared from the light void. Ha! Ichiro cried out he looked around him and saw that he was inside his room. He saw the light piercing through his window. System. How long was I there? He asked with curiosity. One night. The current time is 6 a.m. Ichiro sighed heavily he felt multiple emotions going through him. Now. He remembers everything. Every sorrow, every pain, every insult he ever received. Ding ding Ichiro heard a familiar dinging sound coming from the system and multiple messages appeared in front of him. Congratulations host. Quest to reach Marshal Captain. First part completed. Mind connection rank, beyond mythical. Body connection not completed. Rewards, 10,000 coins, 1,000 EXP, 100 stat points. Failure, stay in martial leader for eternity. Penalty, system removal. Time limit, 1 month. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Age, 15. Level, 5, SP, 0, coins, 0, 850, 1600 EXP. 
HP 9090. Strength, 70 from 55 to 70. Agility, 65 from 50 to 65. Stamina, 87 from 72 to 87. Vitality, 60 from 45 to 60. Quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Martial Arts, Taekwondo, Iron Style, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weakness Detection ILV-1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Killing Blow, Rare, Dot, this allows you to kill anyone with one strike, but the attack needs to hit the target's body you can't kill Martial King or above with, Rare. Killing Blow only Martial General and below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, gives you abilities of Master Blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Congratulations host. Mind connection strengthened your body. You are one step closer to perfect body connection. Good luck host. Alright. Ichiro said with excitement he sat down on the chair with a small wooden desk in front of him. He currently had a notebook in front of him with a pencil in his right hand. He started writing. Revenge Plan 1. The five delinquents who dared to harm and humiliate me. I will go to their school and beat the living shit out of them. 2. Amanda, the bitch who broke my fragile heart. I will go to the school and beat her fucking boyfriend in front of her. 3. The shit-faced black-haired cunt. I will humiliate him in front of his entire school, and since I am famous now, yay, the whole scene will be uploaded into the internet instantly, maybe people will start calling me bully, etc. Blah blah blah. Who gives a shit, they almost made me commit suicide, and I will hurt him and his friends. Ichiro nodded with excitement after he wrote his master plan. Host. This isn't a plan you only wrote what you were planning to do to them. Shut the fuck up, system, Ichiro growled in anger he closed the notebook and placed it into the secured cabinet, where no one would find it. How much is the time, system? I am not your personal clock. True, you are my personal insult machine, now tell me the fucking time. 7, 25 a.m. Fuck you, host. I love you as well, system. Ichiro stood up and started wearing his school outfit. Pervert. Ichiro ignored the system's comment. The uniform consisted of a white shirt with black lines and a blue necktie with white pants. He walked to the bathroom and looked at him in the mirror. In the mirror, a handsome teenager was shown. Ichiro didn't look like he was in his fifteenths because his height was already 183 centimeters and growing. He still had his same messy black hair, which gave him a wild feeling, which strangely made many young girls around Irio very aroused even some older women but we don't need to talk about that. His black eyes looked at his reflection in the mirror, the memories of him getting bullied insulted beaten he kept seeing the memories, like a film reel. Especially Amanda every time he remembers her his heart aches. Ichiro touched his reflection in the mirror. The bullied young man is no longer, he removed his hand from the mirror and walked out of the bathroom. He entered the downstairs with a leisurely pace and saw Ayako waiting for him. Big brother, let's go. Ayako kept yelling with an energetic expression. Ichiro's mouth curved into a small smile, and he nodded. Ayako opened the door and started hopping towards the school. Ichiro closed the door and walked behind Ayako. They walked for a few minutes until they finally entered the streets, which led to the Irio's public middle school. They could already see students walking while laughing. But the moment Ichiro came into view. Kia. Few young girls instantly screamed while huge blush covered their faces. The boys on the other hand, looked at him with sincere respect. Ayako was stunned seeing everyone's actions and got slightly scared. But Ichiro put his strong hand on her tiny shoulder and gave a reassuring smile. Ayako smiled sweetly while slight blush crept on her cheeks. Under the watchful eyes of students and some elderly people, they kept walking towards the school. A few minutes later, they arrived at the school gates. Students were swarming through the gates. Let's go, brother. Ayako started dragging Ichiro behind her, but he didn't move. Ayako turned her head and looked at him with her bright black eyes. Brother? He patted her tiny head and said. I have some business to take care of. 
Juice everything all right? Ayako asked with worry. Ichiro nodded with a smile. No need to worry. Mmm Ayako nodded slightly, but the worry remained she started walking towards the gates while taking slight glances towards her brother. Ichiro took a deep breath and kept walking he didn't enter the gates instead, he walked past the school. Students who recognized him were surprised while looking in the direction he was walking to. A few minutes later, he stopped seeing any students from his school instead, students with gray and black outfit were shown. His outfit brought a lot of attention because they know it is from number one middle school in Irio. Some of the students glared towards him, but then they saw his face. Their faces went pale, and they quickly ran to the sides and let Ichiro walk past them without an incident. The young girls around the area saw the scene and were slightly scared, thinking that it was one of the delinquents from the notorious college of Irio. But once they saw his face and figure, his athletic figure can barely be hidden inside his school outfit. Their faces turned into the hue of pink, and they instantly recognized him. Most talked young man in the entire city of Irio since day one of the middle school tournament. The main character of countless wet dreams. Some of the young girls almost fainted while remembering some of the bold dreams they had of him. It wasn't their fault. It was his fault for being so handsome. That's what they keep thinking to themselves. But they really want to wrestle with him in the bed. The boys and the girls with grey school outfits let Ichiro walk peacefully while not daring to stand on his path. Some of the students were filming his every move. And some texted their friends that Ichiro was walking towards their school. Ichiro also saw some of his older classmates. They didn't even dare to take a glance in his direction. They still laughed about him before the tournament. Thinking that he is bullied in his new school as well. But then the tournament came no one dares to speak badly about him anymore. If the teachers hear they will beat up anyone who dares. Currently, Kuragami Ichiro is the golden boy of Irio with Lucas. No one will allow any kind of insults towards him. And the principal of his old school was aware of his severe bullying. That's why it was his biggest nightmare seeing Ichiro standing proudly against SLYCH without fear because if Ichiro finds out his life is over. He honestly didn't care that Ichiro was bullied because the bully was the biggest star in his school he could have become representative of Irio, which would bring endless glory to his school the principal received an invitation for him to be a backup fighter but he declined, telling a lie that he was injured and couldn't fight. But he didn't want those two to meet because the principal was aware that Ichiro was way stronger and probably would have crippled him if he had seen him. And then the principal of Irio's public middle school would have definitely heard about the incident and will find out about the bullying incident the principal had already heard that Ichiro was walking towards the school. He was panicking he gathered all the teachers and talked about the calamity which was currently walking towards their school. But Ichiro has already reached the gates of the school. He looked at the familiar sign at the top of the gate. Irio's secondary middle school. The students looked at his figure with fascination. It has already spread everywhere that Ichiro was visiting their schools. Most of the students were thrilled to see him. But his old classmates were terrified, they stayed in their classrooms, not daring to go out. In their classroom the black-haired young man who used to bully Ichiro is also known by his name, Damien Sharpedge. He looked at the panicked students around him with disapproval. He also saw his girlfriend Amanda fidgeting with nervousness. She thinks that he hasn't noticed how she looked at Ichiro's confident figure on the TV. Amanda was like a love-struck maiden. It enraged Damien. He planned to show Amanda what happens if she dares to look at other guys. But then everyone started talking that Ichiro was walking towards their school. Damien was honestly terrified. He hoped that it would be a false alarm. But then everyone said that Ichiro was standing in front of the school gate the students in the classroom looked out of the window towards the school gates and saw a lonely looking black haired young man standing there. He is here. One of the students yelled while looking at the school gates. Damien flinched he started to tremble slightly while his face started turning pale. His friends around him also weren't looking good Amanda wanted to go to the window and see his dreamy face. But she knows that Damien will get very angry. She has already started to regret dating Damien in the first place. He is nothing but a jealous bitch. Amanda regrets everything she did to Ichiro. The confident figure of Ichiro in TV aroused him to no end. The way he calmly smiled while facing opponents who could defeat Damien in one move. 
Mm, Amanda slightly moaned in her mind while thinking about the sexy figure of Ichiro she knew that he had a massive crush on her. Which means that she could make her fantasies come true. I want you, Amanda thought while her face was dyed in pink. With excitement she waited for Ichiro to show up. Ichiro stepped through the gates and entered the premises of the school. Murmur loud murmuring noises came from the students around him. But he ignored them and continued walking at a leisurely pace. The students in front of him walked out of his way and let him walk peacefully towards the school building. He entered the school building shortly afterward and saw the shoe lockers. The day after, Amanda crushed his heart. This place in front of shoe lockers were the first time he heard about the video of it being spread everywhere in the school. And the despair he felt at that moment the sadness was unbearable. He saw some of the students standing stiffly in front of the shoe lockers while looking at him with wonder. Excuse me, where can I find Damien Sharp Edge? Ichiro asked politely. The young girls around the shoe lockers were stunned while pink hue dyed their cheeks. Ah on the third floor class 3A. One of the boys said with slight excitement, the young man in front of him is his idol. Thank you. Ichiro gratefully said and started walking towards the stairs. The crowd from the school gates started slowly walking towards the school building while wondering why he had come here. One of them decided to ask the young boy who answered Ichiro's question. What did he ask? The young boy came out of his stupor and said with excitement. He wanted to know where Damien Sharpedge is. A lot of students looked stunned, wondering why is he looking for the so-called king of school. But his old classmates went even paler now they know Ichiro came for revenge. Ichiro kept ascending the stairs and had already reached the second floor. With slow but steady steps, he started ascending towards the third floor step Ichiro took his first step on the third floor he looked around him and saw a few curious students peeking from their classrooms but no one peeked from class 3A Ichiro started walking with slow steps towards classroom 3A shortly afterward, he arrived in front of the door leading to the classroom the students from 3B, 3C, and 3D looked with fascination. They were from the same grade as him, and they, of course, heard about his bullying incident, which happened a year ago, most of them knew, but no one did anything. Ah excuse me Ichiro heard a timid sound coming from his right side. He turned his head slowly and saw a short woman in her thirties standing with a trembling body. Yes. He asked. WW what are you doing I in front of my classroom? She asked while her voice was shaking. Ichiro looked at the trembling teacher. Stay back, sensei it won't take long. He again turned his head towards the door and put his hand on the doorknob. The teacher kept trembling with a pale face she heard from the principal that Ichiro is here for the revenge which might traumatize her class. She wanted to stop Ichiro from doing anything foolish it's her job as a teacher. But seeing Ichiro's determined face, filled with intention to get his revenge she didn't have the guts to stop him. Clank Ichiro opened the door. He saw a classroom that was almost full of students, but a few students were still missing the classroom was deadly silent no one spoke a word some of them took a glance towards the door and saw Ichiro's figure. Amanda instantly started breathing heavily, her cheeks dyed in pink. Damien looked pale but tried to keep his face neutral. But his trembling body failed him. Step only Ichiro's footsteps were heard in the classroom. Ichiro walked in front of the classroom. Long time no see classmates. Ichiro said with a cold tone. Gulp the sound of gulping could be heard in the classroom. WWY are you here I Ichiro? Ichiro looked at the young girl with black hair which reached her shoulders she also had glasses that gave her an intelligent look. She was the class president of this class. She was also the class president during their second year. Ichiro scoffed while looking at the class president, who is the perfect example of a hypocrite. She kept telling everyone that bullying is wrong, etc., but when he got bullied she didn't do anything because it was Damien who bullied him. And she had a crush on him. He looked around the classroom he saw the blonde-haired girl who filmed the video her name is Sophia. He also saw Damien and his group of friends he also saw his first love Amanda. His gaze lingered on her slightly longer. Ichiro also saw her face starting to blush more and more under Ichiro's intense gaze. He raised an eyebrow but ignored the weird scene. I don't have all day I still have 15 minutes before my class starts that's why I won't waste any time. Ichiro told and started walking towards Damien. Each step increases his powerful momentum. Stop it. 
bullying the weak isn't right. The class president shouted angrily. Shut up, hypocritical bitch. Ichiro yelled and slapped the class president. The class president fell heavily on the ground while her glasses broke and a few teeth flew out of her mouth. GGHGHGHGHG. She kept rolling on the ground in agony, but Ichiro ignored her and kept walking towards Damien. WW8, Ichiro, we can talk about this. Damien roared and started walking backward, away from Ichiro. Bam his back collided with the wall, and his escape route was gone. Beg for mercy, then I might, Ichiro told coldly. Damien gritted his teeth in anger. How dare he humiliate me? Help me. He can't defeat us all. Damien roared towards his classmates. The students flinched. But only Damien's friends and the blonde-haired girl stood up and surrounded Ichiro's figure. 7 vs 1 Damien glared towards Amanda, who didn't move a muscle. Keep waiting bitch, I will make you my slut tonight. He roared in his mind. Ichiro looked at the people around him with the same cold gaze. Kill him. Damien roared. His friends instantly attacked Ichiro's figure. Ichiro snorted. Ichiro saw a fist approaching his face he easily deflected the fist with a simple slap. He grabbed his arm and broke it in half. Crack, arg, harg. The young boy who got his arm broken was screaming in agony. Only six remaining. Damien's friends flinched while fear crept into their faces. Ichiro walked towards one of them. The young boy's face went pale he punched sloppily towards Ichiro. Ichiro slapped the fist, deflecting it with ease. He grabbed the young boy from his throat and slammed him to the floor. Crack the young boy instantly was knocked out, with foam coming out of his mouth. His neck must be broken. He won't die. But it will be excruciating next month for him. Five remaining. Finally, the rest of Damien's friends didn't have the balls to attack Ichiro. Do something. Damien kept roaring with a red face. But his friends kept retreating more and more. Ichiro didn't want to waste any more time he disappeared from his spot. And under the astonished gazes of others he arrived in front of two of Damien's friends. He grabbed their heads and smashed them against each other. Which knocked them out. Only three remaining. Kia. Sophia couldn't take it anymore and screamed out of terror she fell down on her knees and started sobbing because of the fear she is feeling. Ichiro ignored her for now and attacked a blue-haired young man. He kicked towards him, but the blue-haired young man managed to block the kick with a nicely timed block. The blue-haired young man wasn't as useless as others. Ichiro looked slightly surprised. The blue-haired young man smirked and was about to attack. But then Ichiro circled around him he arrived behind the blue-haired young man. Ichiro reeled in his fist and punched at the back of the blue-haired young man. Which instantly sent him flying straight to the wall and to the other side of the wall landing at the classroom of class 3b. The blue-haired young man stayed conscious for a few moments longer until his vision turned blurry. He was knocked out under the watchful eyes of students from class 3b. Two remaining. Ichiro approached the blonde-haired girl. PP please. Don't. She screamed with terror, but Ichiro ignored and punched straight at his face. She was instantly knocked out, while her nose broke and half of his teeth flew out of her mouth. She looked genuinely pitiful now only Damien remained. He turned his face towards the trembling figure of Damien. Arg. Damien screamed angrily he pushed his low martial soldier physique to the limit and attacked Ichiro. Swish Damien's attack was truly powerful in some sense his fist approached Ichiro's figure with terrifying speed. Ironic edge. With a dull look, Ichiro easily deflected the fist. Damien widened his eyes, but the next thing he saw was Ichiro's mighty fist contacting with his face. Steel smash. Damien was sent flying through the wall. He was still flying once he reached class 3b, but he kept flying and crashed into another wall. And he went through that wall as well until he finally landed painfully in the classroom 3c his mouth was filled with blood, his nose is broken his face has a giant fist print his handsome look is no more Damien's look was very disheveled and pathetic. Then he heard footsteps behind him he turned his head towards the sound and saw Ichiro walking with a cold gaze. His face started trembling, a lot of teeth were missing from his mouth, but he still tried to talk. M.M.U.C. Mercy. Start crawling, 
then I might. Ichiro told coldly and looked at the pathetic sight in front of him. Ichiro crossed his arms and waited. Damien felt immense humiliation and anger. But he was about to start crawling but then a voice was heard from the classroom entrance. Damien looked with hope towards the voice. Ichiro. This is enough. Ichiro turned his head and saw this school's principal coming with other teachers. You already got your revenge this is enough. The principal said with an authoritative tone. Ichiro raised an eyebrow. Enough, you say not yet, listen to me, young man. I won't allow bullying in my school. Ever. The principal growled. He 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 he, but then Ichiro started chuckling until he was finally laughing like a madman. He grabbed Damien from his hair. Ichiro's face morphed into anger. I Ichiro, what are you planning to do? The principal asked with panic. This. Ichiro yelled and threw Damien straight towards the window. Crash, no. Damien yelled, but he was already falling down. BAM Damien fell down to the ground he was still alive, but most of his bones are broken. His legs are shattered, bones popping out of his flesh. Ichiro. What did you do? The principal. Yelled angrily. Ichiro scoffed he disappeared from his position and appeared in front of the principal. Smack he punched straight at the principal's face, which sent him flying to the nearby wall. The principal's body fell down onto the floor of classroom 3B. All the students and teachers looked at the scene with pale faces. Ichiro walked towards the principal. He crouched and saw his bloodied face. I know that you knew about the bullying you are lucky that I won't say anything about it to my club advisor, Ichiro said with a chilly tone. The principal widened his eyes in shock, he tried to think of a lie, but his mouth didn't make any sound. Ichiro scoffed and walked out of the classroom. He quickly descended the stairs and walked past the shoe locker. He walked towards the body of Damien, who was currently wailing in agony. You should have crawled, Ichiro said and stomped his leg towards Damien's spinal cord. Crack, Arfgai. Damien cried out in agony. His spinal cord was completely broken he is now cripple. Ichiro started walking towards the school gates, but then a loud female sound interrupted him, wait, Ichiro. He turned his head and saw a beautiful black-haired young girl approaching him. Amanda, Ichiro muttered with many emotions going through him. Amanda walked in front of him she smiled sweetly and said. You became so handsome and strong. Ichiro raised an eyebrow in surprise. Then Amanda fidgeted with slight nervousness, and with a shy tone, she asked. Do you want to be my boyfriend? Ichiro looked shocked. What about him? He pointed towards Damien, who was currently crying in agony, especially after hearing Amanda's words. He isn't my boyfriend, he is nothing but a jealous bitch, and I regret greatly dating him and I regret greatly about bullying you, Amanda said the last part in a sad tone. Ichiro can clearly see that she regretted it a lot the reason he didn't hate her as much was because he knew that Amanda isn't a bad person Damien made her do some of the questionable things. But it still won't change the fact that she broke his heart which still isn't healed. Sorry Amanda, but I won't accept your confession, Ichiro said and started walking towards the school gates again. Amanda looked shocked. Why? I can change. I am sorry for the bullying. I really am. Ichiro stopped and said. I know you aren't as bad as them but my feelings faded a long time ago, he lied, he still feels strong feelings towards her, but he wants to let go of his old love. I won't give up. I will never give up. Amanda screamed, but Ichiro had already walked out of the school gates and started walking towards his school. System, how much is the time? 8, 23 a.m. Fuck you host. Gotta run. Ichiro started running towards the school because only seven minutes remained before the class begins. And, 2,332 words, not bad. Ring bells kept ringing in the school, announcing that the school day had started. Ichiro sprinted through the school corridors and arrived at his classroom. He quickly opened the door with a slam which attracted everyone's attention. With quick steps, Ichiro walked inside the classroom. He walked towards his seat and sat down under the astonished gazes of students and the teacher. And during this, Ichiro kept a perfect poker face. Why are they looking at me? Never seen a student before. Ichiro scoffed inside his mind. 
Cough the teacher coughed to get everyone's attention. Young man, where have you been? You are late. The teacher said with a slightly angry face, but he wasn't actually angry at all, instead thrilled because he is teaching a future martial king or beyond. Since SLYCH's talent level has been said to be monarch level talent. Even though Ichiro lost to him, and SLYCH is younger. Ichiro was still at least king level talent. That's why the teacher is very anxious because teaching a martial king is the highest honor. Sorry, sensei. Ichiro stood up and bowed deeply. You uh, yes. The teacher said with a slight stutter, he thought that Ichiro might make some excuse, as most of the students would. Indeed, the golden child of Irio, apologizing when needed, excellent lad. The teacher thought with approval. Ichiro sat down on his chair and kept concentrating on the lesson. During the lesson, he could feel multiple gazes on him, but especially strong gaze came from the young girl next to him. He glanced with the corner of his eyes towards the right. He saw an innocent-looking young girl staring at him with an intense gaze. Her name is Suzuki Aina, if I remember correctly Ichiro thought. He leaned towards her and whispered. What is it? Eek. Aina screamed out of surprise, which attracted everyone's attention. She lowered her head out of embarrassment. Ichiro wryly smiled while scratching the back of his head. Ichiro started again concentrating on the lesson, but this time he ignored the gazes. Ring after a long class, the school bell again rang. Finally, Ichiro said he turned his head towards the young man sitting behind him. It was his friend Mark Ali-san. Mark had ordinary brown hair and brown eyes with a more attractive face than the average male, but his body didn't look very athletic. Yo Mark, Ichiro said. Yeah. Mark looked at him with a surprised gaze. What is it? Ichiro raised an eyebrow. Nothing. He stuttered while feeling everyone's gaze land on him. Ichiro shrugged and said. I played Night's End yesterday wanna play it later. Ah oh, really? Mark asked with widened eyes. Yup. You never played with us before why now? Mark asked. Killing monsters is getting boring I want to do the group quests, Ichiro told him. All right. Mark said with excitement. Send your account information in worldly talk, I will add you, Ichiro told and stood up to leave the classroom. All right. Mark said with excitement and took his phone quickly shortly afterward, he started typing the message. Jake, wanna play as well? Ichiro asked his other friend who was currently listening to their conversation. Jake had medium-length blonde hair, with bluish eyes and angular eyebrows. His body was more athletic than Mark's because he is in a football club. He, Mark, and Ichiro used to talk about video games all the time, but then Ichiro went and joined the martial arts club, and their talk has been reduced a lot. Ah yes. He almost yelled the answer. Give me the account name, etc., Ichiro said and finally started to leave the classroom. Once he opened the door to leave the classroom, he noticed many people standing in the corridors. He ignored most of them because they didn't hit up any conversation with him, but he felt their gazes on him. He started walking towards class 3D. It is Lucas' class. He arrived there and opened the door slightly he peeked inside the class and looked around until he finally found Lucas. Lucas was currently laughing with his group of friends, which surprisingly even had girls. Ichiro opened the door, which didn't catch Lucas' attention. But some of the students glanced in his direction. And they widened their eyes after seeing the young man who walked inside. The girls in Lucas' group who saw him were stunned while their heart rate started rapidly rising and their breath quickening. Yo, Lucas. Ichiro said after he walked behind Lucas. Eh. Lucas turned his head in surprise and saw Ichiro's grinning face. Ichiro. What are you doing here? He asked. Class over. I was bored, and I came here. Easy. He said simply and sat down on the chair which was next to him. Lucas rolled his eyes. I heard that you didn't enter the gates in the morning and that you were late where did you go? You will probably hear about it today, Ichiro said without caring much. Lucas raised an eyebrow he was now curious. HH hello. One of the girls in the group managed to say. Yo, Ichiro said while giving a small smile. But it was destructive. The young girl who said hello had a minor nosebleed after seeing Ichiro's smile. 
Lucas rolled his eyes at sight he didn't feel envy because of the looks the girls give for Ichiro, because he doesn't really have any feelings for the girls in his class. Instead, he has very strong feelings towards a specific high school student but Lucas doesn't have any hopes of her accepting his confession. What are you going to do after school? Lucas asked. Why are you asking? Nothing much. Do you want to grab a coffee? New cafe was just opened not far from here. Lucas suggested Ichiro thought for a moment before nodding. Sure, but I need to visit some people after that wanna join. You uh, sure, Lucas said with a slightly untrustworthy gaze. He didn't know what Ichiro was planning, but it is never good to follow Ichiro's ideas. Ichiro grinned slightly but hid it well. Ring the school bell again started ringing. E excuse me that's my seat, Ichiro heard a shy voice next to him he turned his head and saw a timid looking girl with long bangs which covered her eyes. Ah, uh, sorry. Ichiro apologized he stood up and left the seat. The girl gave a slight nod with a shy smile and sat down in her seat. See you later. Ichiro told Lucas and left the class. See you. Lucas waved his hand and sat down on his chair, waiting for the class to start. The school day went slowly, but Ichiro managed to survive it because he kept annoying the system while ignoring the lessons. Ring the last school bell ring was heard, and instantly students swarmed out of the classrooms with exhausted faces. Fuck school, Ichiro said and ran out of the classroom. Freedom. Let's play later today. Ichiro told Mark and Jake. They nodded with slight smiles. Ichiro started running out of the school building. He saw most of the students walking towards their clubs, while most students went towards martial arts club. But some of the students left through the gates. Ichiro walked out of the school building and saw Lucas standing silently while surrounded by a group of people. Lucas, let's get fuck out of here. Ichiro said happily. Lucas rolled his eyes. Sorry guys, but I have an appointment with Ichiro. The people surrounding him gave a slight nod and started walking towards their own clubs. All right, let's go, Lucas said and started walking out of the school gates. Ichiro followed closely behind. They walked for a few minutes in silence, and surprisingly even Ichiro stayed silent. Even Lucas was surprised that he could keep his mouth shut this long. So, who are the people who you were planning to meet? Lucas started the conversation. You remember the college students you almost killed last year? Lucas grimaced it wasn't a happy memory. Yes, I am going to beat the shit out of them. Ichiro told. Lucas widened his eyes. Why? They beat the shit out of me last year I am going to have my revenge. Lucas looked at him with a surprised gaze. This is a horrible idea. Why? Ichiro raised an eyebrow. They are part of the underworld we are fucked if we touch them. Let's hide our faces. Ichiro told. Are you sure we should be doing this? This is a horrible idea, I need to do this. I need to get rid of my demons, and those cunts are only ones left. Fuck, Lucas cursed while scratching his head. Fine, let's do it. Nice. Ichiro grinned. Host. I don't understand why everyone follows your plans. Your plans are very shit. Fuck you system, you are a stupid moron who can't understand my intelligent plans. Enlighten me then. I will cover my face so they can't recognize me. I will find them, and I will beat the living shit out of them. What a horrible plan. What if they have Marshall Captain close to them? They are part of the underworld, and going against underworld with your pitiful strength is suicide. I have killing blow, relax. Host, I suggest not to use the killing blow recklessly. It is a precious item. I have a plan, relax. What is your plan? I hope that they don't have Marshal Captain on their side. Oh, dear Destiny was choosing this person as your champion correct choice. Are you sure this is a good idea? Lucas again asked. Yes. Ichiro roared Lucas has been asking the same question for dozen times already, and Ichiro is getting really annoying at this point it is his plan, of course, it is a good idea. Ichiro and Lucas are currently looking through the area close to the college, where the delinquents usually hang out after their school day. Ichiro and Lucas also went to buy a mask that covers their faces. The mask is ordinary black-colored ski masks, which cover their faces nicely. 
Of course, they aren't wearing the ski masks yet, because they would look very suspicious. They also took out their school jacket which would give their identity. They were still wearing their school pants and their own t-shirts. Why am I even following your plans? I am fucking idiot, Lucas said while scratching his head out of frustration. My plans are amazing, I am the brains, and you are the bronze, so don't question my intelligence. Host. For your information, I am the most intelligent person on this planet. What a fucking weird flex. We are here. Lucas suddenly said. Ichiro looked in front of him and saw a vast school not far from them. And words, Irio's College of Fighting were shown on top of the gate. Hmm, Ichiro looked around him while humming. Maybe their school day isn't over yet. Lucas suggested. Wanna go find out? Ichiro asked with a grin. No. Lucas shouted. Let's go. Ichiro yelled and started walking towards the college's gates. Damn. Lucas roared and followed Ichiro closely behind. Put your mask, Ichiro said he took a black-colored ski mask from his pocket and put it on. Lucas sighed and put on his mask as well. Host. This college is infamous for the number of delinquents there are you won't be only facing the four delinquents, you will face the entire school. So. I can tell that there are few peak martial leaders, and one of them is half-step into martial captain stage. So am I, yes, but you won't be only facing him. This is a horrible idea, especially since Lucas is with you you can't run away and leave Lucas alone to die, can you? Of course, I won't leave him. I got a plan, relax. There is a guard, Lucas said while pointing at the guard standing next to the gate. Ichiro scoffed, he started running towards the guard. The guard was standing lazily while looking at the cars go by, but then he felt wind increasing around him. He raised an eyebrow, but then he noticed a shadow next to him. He turned his head but only saw a fist contacting with his face. The next thing he saw was darkness surrounding his vision. He fell down to the ground, unconscious. That's how you do it, Ichiro said nonchalantly. Lucas ran towards him and yelled. What the fuck are you doing? Relax, I got a plan, Ichiro said and dragged the knocked out guard towards the other side of the wall so that no one would see his body. He threw the guard's body in bushes, and now his body was completely hidden. Let's go, Ichiro said and started jogging with a leisurely pace towards the college building. Lucas hated this plan, but he followed behind him. They arrived, they peeked inside and saw the shoe lockers being empty from people. They must still be in the class. How are we going to find them? Lucas asked. System, where are they? I am not allowed to help you. But you said that there are many strong people here why did you help then? I told it to warn you. I can warn you if danger is approaching, but that is the only thing I can do since the system is only advanced. Hmm, Ichiro hummed inside his mind. Well. What are we going to do? Lucas asked with anxiousness, seeing that Ichiro wasn't answering. I guess we will need to wait, Ichiro said. Thank God. Lucas heaved a sigh of relief. Ichiro rolled his eyes. Let's wait till the school is over somewhere close. Lucas nodded. There was a restaurant not far from here, you can see the college entrance from there. Ichiro nodded and started following Lucas towards the restaurant. They put their masks back on their pockets, and with a leisurely pace, they walked to the restaurant. They sat down on the table closest to the window they can clearly see the gates of the college in the distance. What was your plan anyway? Lucas asked. It was to find where the delinquents are, beat them up, maybe throw them out of the window and then get the fuck out of there. What changed? Lucas asked with a raised eyebrow. Change of plans, we will wait instead, Ichiro said while looking at the gate. Are you sure this is a good idea? Lucas asked one more time. I am positive, Ichiro said. What are you even planning to do to them? Lucas asked with curiosity. I know that they are horrible people, and I will make sure that they won't be able to hurt anyone anymore. Are you planning to kill them? Lucas panic whispered towards Ichiro. Ichiro shook his head. Of course not, I am going to cripple them. What did they do to you anyway? You seem very angry. Of course, I don't feel enough anger towards them to cripple them, 
but I know that those people are one of the worst people in Irio, and getting rid of them makes Irio safer. Lucas sighed and kept looking at the gate while thinking about the time he met them he heard their conversation, and he knew that they were scum. But he didn't dare to kill them even crippling that one guy accidentally frightened him a lot. He still has nightmares about killing Urkham he hasn't, of course, told Ichiro about it because he has his own pride to carry. Ring Lucas and Ichiro flinched after hearing a loud bell ringing noise coming from the college, I guess the school is over, Lucas said solemnly. Ichiro nodded and stood up from his seat. Let's go. Lucas followed behind him. They walked out of the restaurant and calmly stood there, waiting for their target to come out. Some of the college students had already walked out of the gates they didn't see the guard's body hidden in the bush. Ichiro sighed a relief because finding his body would cause a lot of chaos. Kakik. Ichiro perked up his ears he remembers this laughter it is what haunted him for months. He saw a group of people walking out of the gates. Total of ten delinquent looking guys. They are here, Ichiro said and pointed at them. Lucas saw them, and he remembers a few of the faces. Host. There are three peak martial leaders in that group, and one of them is the half-step martial captain, but your targets are low martial leaders. All right. Ichiro said in his mind and started following the group of delinquents. Lucas, with a slightly pale face, followed behind Ichiro. They aren't weak, Lucas whispered. Ichiro nodded. I will take care of the stronger ones you handle the others. Are you sure you can handle it? Lucas asked with worry. I can. Ichiro narrowed his eyes while looking at the laughing delinquents in front of him. Shall we visit the Irios Public High School? I heard there were some nice bitches to enjoy, Kakik. A delinquent with the name of Jock suggested with a vicious grin. Ichiro narrowed his eyes while looking at him he remembers him it was the guy who robbed him mercilessly Lucas paled after they mentioned the name of Irios Public High School. He leaned towards Ichiro and whispered. We can't let them go there. I know, after there are fewer people, we will attack, Ichiro said. Lucas nodded and sighed in relief. His crush is studying in the Irios Public High School and she is definitely beautiful the delinquents would definitely do everything in their powers to have a taste of her Lucas bit his lips while looking with murderous intent towards the delinquents. Ichiro widened his eyes he clearly felt Lucas killing intent, which means that the delinquents probably did as well. Put your mask now. Ichiro whispered he quickly put on his mask. Lucas did as well with hurry, and he knew that he had made a mistake. The group of delinquents stopped walking and turned their heads towards the two masked individuals. Who the fuck are you two? The delinquent in the middle said, he is the half-step martial captain, his name is Kuro. Ichiro and Lucas didn't answer instead, they looked at them closely, waiting for any moment to attack. They were currently standing in the street, not far from the college, which means many students were still around. And seeing two suspicious masked individuals facing against the strongest students from their school of course, it attracts a lot of attention. But not only from the students. Some of the citizens also looked closely, and they can clearly see that the group of ten weren't good people. With their ear piercings, tattoos and overall evil look. They know that the two masked individuals are here for revenge. I asked, who the fuck are you? Kuro screamed his voice echoed to the distance. All the students who were watching flinched. Kuro is the so-called boss delinquent. Everyone fears him. No one wants to fight him. But Ichiro looked at him with no expression. Kuro was already 21 years old he is in his last year of college. After college, he will officially join the underworld, and with his talent, he will reach Marshal Captain, which will earn him a lot of respect in the underworld. But reaching Marshal Commander is still some distance away no one knows how far his talent goes. But Ichiro plans to end his future. It doesn't matter who we are what matters is that this will be the last moment you will stand with two legs. Ichiro told coldly he went into his fighting stance, which was orthodox MMA styled. Kakik, jock next to Kuro chuckled, he asked. You seem angry towards us what did we do? Did we kill one of your friends? Did we RPE your sister? Well, doesn't matter, we will find out who your family is and we will go visit them, he licked his lips. Swish the group of delinquents looked with an astonished face because Ichiro suddenly disappeared. Only Kuro managed to keep up he could see barely the blur of Ichiro approaching Jock. Damn. 
Kuro roared he was about to grab Jock to pull him to safety but he was too Lady Chiro appeared in front of Jock with killing intent erupting from him. He put his hand on a spear-like stance and unleashed his attack. Iron Lance. Jock widened his eyes after seeing Ichiro suddenly appearing in front of him but then he felt a sharp pain in his stomach. PFFTT. Jock spewed a mouthful of blood he looked at his stomach and saw a hand piercing him. Ichiro took his hand out of the torso of Jock. Jock fell down on the ground on his knees, he tried to stop the bleeding, but it didn't help. His face was already pale because of the blood loss. H help, he begged for help, but then his vision started going blurry until he finally couldn't hold it in he fell down on the ground and his heart stopped beating Jock was dead. Ichiro again appeared next to Lucas. Why did you kill him? I thought you were here to cripple them, not kill them. Lucas whispered shouted. Sorry I got angry because he dared to speak about my family, Ichiro narrowed his eyes while killing intent filled his eyes. KYA. The spectators around them cried out with horror. They now know that the masked individuals aren't joking around. Kuro gritted his teeth in hate. He was a millisecond too late he knew the moment the masked man pierced Jock's body that Jock was already dead. That's why Kuro stopped trying to save Jock instead he started concentrating his focus on the other masked individual. But strangely, the other masked individual didn't move. The other eight delinquents were shocked seeing their friend die out of nowhere. They started feeling fear but only the two other peak martial leader could keep their composure. System, who are the peak martial leaders? The man in the middle, Kuro, the short man next to him, Ixi, and the man next to the short man, Luvin. Ichiro concentrated his focus on the peak martial leaders, he said towards Lucas. I will handle those three. He pointed at the three figures Lucas nodded. Lucas will be facing against one middle martial leader, three low martial leaders, and two peak martial soldiers. Ichiro is confident that Lucas will handle them, and if he can't, Ichiro will assist him. The delinquents didn't dare to make any moves. They are waiting for Kuro's command. Kuro didn't dare to make moves yet he doesn't know what his opponent could do. And the other masked individual still hasn't moved, and he might be even stronger. Ichiro knows that he needs to separate the peak martial soldiers so that Lucas has an easier time fighting against others. Ichiro took a deep breath his leg muscles bulged slightly. The ground below him started having slight cracks. Boom the ground below Ichiro exploded, but he was already approaching Kuro. Kuro widened his eyes he and others went into fighting stances. Ichiro appeared in front of Kuro and unleashed his punch. Steel smash. Kuro quickly crossed his arms as a block, but the ordinary looking punch completely destroyed Kuro's defense and sent him flying a dozen meters. The delinquents looked with widened eyes. Two other peak martial leaders, Ixi and Luvin, attacked Ichiro. Ixi did sidekick, while Luvin did straight punch. Ironic edge sweeping hand. Ichiro used his left hand's wrist to deflect sidekick, and he used his right arm's palm to deflect the punch. Ixi and Luvin widened their eyes, but they kept their concentration. Ichiro raised his leg and kicked towards Ixi's leg. His kick contacted Ixi's leg, which made him fall down to the ground. Luvin quickly backed him up with a punch. Ironic edge gravity control. Ichiro quickly grabbed the fist and twisted his fist slightly which made his center of gravity off as a result, he fell down on the ground. Bam a loud booming sound came from the left side of Ichiro. He quickly turned his head and saw furious Kuro approaching him. Ixi and Luvin stood up from the ground while feeling very angry after getting humiliated. Especially since over dozen people are recording the fight. Ichiro looked around and saw that he had managed to take control of the fight. The three peak martial leaders were some distance away from Lucas and others. Lucas saw it too, and he decided to make his move. The delinquents were focused on the fight between the peak martial leaders and didn't notice a blur of shadow approaching them. Lucas appeared in front of the group of delinquents. But only one of the delinquents noticed him, and he was peak martial soldier. Watch oh, he was yelling to warn others, but then he felt a kick contacting with his neck. He widened his eyes in horror, but then his vision went dark, and he fell down to the ground lifelessly. Lucas knows that he is still alive, only unconscious. Finally, the rest of the delinquents noticed Lucas. With slight panic, they went into their fighting stances. Do you think you can take defeat us all by yourself? 
one of them screamed with a hoarse voice. Lucas didn't answer instead, he gathered his breath. Proper breathing during the fight is an essential part. If you breathe too quickly you will waste stamina quicker. That's why most of the students aiming to be pro learn first to properly breathe during the fight. But Lucas can see that the delinquent's breathing is a mess who knows if it is because the fear, panic, or because they haven't learned it. If I stall long enough they will exhaust themselves Lucas thought and went into a lower fighting stance. He isn't planning to attack he will focus on defense. Answer me. He yelled, and with angry looking face he stormed towards Lucas. The delinquent raised his arm and punched sloppily towards Lucas. Lucas grabbed the fist and pulled him closer to his body. The delinquent widened his eyes and tried to get his arm back. But Lucas didn't let him, and instead started raining punched on the unguarded torso of the delinquent. Ugh. He gritted his teeth and put his other hand as a block. The other delinquents saw his predicament and decided to help. One of them appeared next to Lucas and punched powerfully. Lucas saw the punch strength being close to his, it means he was at least middle martial leader Lucas used the delinquent he held as a shield and blocked the fist. Ugh. The delinquent he held spat out mouthful of blood and fell unconscious. Lucas threw his body away and now only four remained. The two delinquents he took out was both peak martial soldiers. Which means only stronger ones are left. The delinquents looked slightly shocked seeing Lucas' strength, but they sighed a relief knowing that Lucas isn't as strong as the other masked individual. Let's kill him. The middle martial leader shouted. The three low martial leader delinquents nodded and surrounded Lucas' figure. Lucas breathed calmly. The delinquents were about to attack but then loud yell came from the gates of the college. What the hell is going on here? Everyone turned their heads towards the voice. They saw a middle-aged man with muscular body and angry-looking face. Kuro clicked his tongue and said. Oh, the great principal has shown himself. Ichiro narrowed his eyes while looking at the middle-aged principal. Host. He is a half-step martial captain, I suggest retreating, because if you keep trying to fight Kuro, he will try to stop you. Ichiro looked around him with concentrating gaze. He used to be surrounded by enemies in his past life and he always found a way to survive if he just concentrated enough. If I attack Kuro and the rest the principal will be in my position in three seconds I don't think I can defeat both of them because the two other peak martial leaders are pain in the ass, what should I do, Ichiro thought calmly. The best possible choice would be to leave the scene and get his revenge later but there is a small chance of succeeding in his revenge. The principal crossed his arms angrily while looking at the delinquents fighting. He even thought Ichiro and Lucas were delinquents because it wasn't the first time some rival gang tried to get revenge. He has been the principal of the College of Irio for 13 years, and there is a massive gang fight almost every year. But the past few years have been the worst. Kuro, the so-called boss of the delinquents, is ruthless, reckless, and doesn't respect. The teachers. He has also heard that Kuro will join the underworld's inner circle, which will increase his status by a mile. He saw Kuro's mocking face while looking at him it enraged him, but he was still a principal, and he can't get angry towards his student. That I asked. What is going on here? He shouted with an authoritative tone. Kuro chuckled. Nothing, just friendly banter, right? He turned his head towards the masked man. Ichiro didn't answer instead he looked towards the principal he can clearly see the hate in his eyes, directed towards Kuro. Maybe. That would work. Ichiro thought. Ichiro straightened his back, and now he looked like a proper gentleman. Excuse me, are you the principal of this fine establishment? Ichiro said with a British accent for some reason. The system stayed quiet. Everyone looked at him with strange looks. Lucas facepalmed. The principal raised an eyebrow. What the f? He quickly shook his head and coughed slightly. Yes, I am. Ichiro nodded. That I can tell that you have a rodent problem in your fine establishment. He said and pointed sneakily towards Kuro's figure. But everyone clearly saw it. That motherfucker. Kuro's eyes went bloodshot instantly. The principal bit his lip, trying to hold his laughter. Lucas sighed he felt a headache coming. That I can be your rodent exterminator, Ichiro said calmly. The principal thought deeply, but then he said. Those pests have been a trouble for some time. 
how much does it cost to get these rodents out of this establishment? Everyone looked at him with shock. It was like they were actually talking about some unimportant rats and not about human beings. Kuro gritted his teeth and started emitting killing intent. Ichiro smirked. Free of charge. The principal smiled and nodded. All right, be quick. These pests have been quite loud for a quite long time, and I would be satisfied if you quickly get rid of these noises. He said and turned around to start walking back to the college's building. Ichiro did a gentleman's bow. Lucas scratched the back of his head. How did that work, and that my intelligence is too high for anyone to understand? Ichiro smugly said. The system stayed quiet. The system is incredibly intelligent, but even the system doesn't understand how that worked. Well then. To get rid of these rodents is our first job after all, and it is better not to mess it up. Ichiro narrowed his eyes and said. Lucas nodded and faced the four martial leaders. Ichiro was facing three very angry peak martial leaders. He put his hand on a spear-like stance, but he slightly modified it so that no one can find out his identity. Instead of his hand being perfectly straight, it is very tilted. Dot kill him. Kuro roared angrily, and the two peak martial leaders burst into motion. They approached Ichiro from two different angles, but it didn't matter for him. He calmly waited, lowered his stance slightly. The two peak martial leaders punched with deadly intent. Those punches are meant to kill a person. Finally, Ichiro made his move. The two peak martial leaders didn't see anything wrong, but when their punches finally reached Ichiro's figure, they noticed something was very wrong. They widened their eyes and saw Ichiro suddenly disappearing. Ichiro appeared behind both of them, and his spear-like hand was soaked in blood. Iron Lance Slashless Steel the two peak martial leaders stumbled a few more meters until they fell down on their knees. Blood was dripping from their neck, they anxiously tried to stop the blood loss, but it was useless. They started choking on their blood, and they looked around them with despair, but their heartbeat stopped. Kuro looked with horror as his two friends died. Ichiro still looked calm it was like he had done this a thousand times. And that scared Kuro even more. The martial leaders fighting Lucas also saw the scene and were genuinely shocked. Their distraction brought enough time for Lucas to defeat two of the four martial leaders. The two martial leaders were shocked, but their battle intent has been long lost, and it is only a matter of time before Lucas finishes them off. Lucas appeared behind the other one and chopped his neck, which knocked him out. Only the middle martial leader was left his face was pale, and his body trembling. Ichiro slowly started to approach Kuro, who was stumbling backward. Ichiro slightly lowered his stance and started running towards Kuro. Ah! Kuro cried out and punched. But Ichiro already expected it and easily dodged it he grabbed Kuro's arm and did a catapult throw. Kuro landed on the ground on his back, he saw a bright blue sky above him, but then he saw a shadow of the Grim Reaper. Iron Lance. Ichiro unleashed his spear-like attack and stabbed straight at Kuro's neck. Dot ugh. Kuro twitched painfully, he tried to get rid of Ichiro's hand, but it was impossible. Light in his eyes started disappearing until it was finally gone, and his heartbeat stopped. Ichiro removed his hand from Kuro's neck, looked towards Lucas, and saw him knocking out the final delinquent. Ichiro killed four of the delinquents, and Lucas knocked out six delinquents. Lucas turned his head and was shocked seeing the dead delinquent and felt nauseous as well. He is wondering how Ichiro can stay so calm. Ichiro looked at his blood-soaked hands. Host, leave immediately. I can feel a martial captain approaching this place in a hurry. Ichiro stopped looking at his hands and turned his head towards Lucas, and saw him looking at him with worry. That we should leave now, Ichiro said and started running. Lucas nodded and ran behind Ichiro. The students and other citizens didn't dare to stay on their way they quickly walked out of their way. They ran through the streets, and their black masks attracted a lot of attention. But Ichiro didn't dare to remove the mask yet. He and Lucas would be main suspects if people suddenly saw them running away from the college after the black masked men left. While running, Ichiro looked around to see a good escape path, but he barely knew the streets. He hasn't gone out that much, except going to school. Dot let's go there. Lucas shouted and pointed towards the park. Ichiro nodded and ran towards the park. 
he saw that there weren't that many people there, which was perfect. Ichiro and Lucas jumped over the fence, which led to the park. He quickly took out the black masks. Lucas did the same. Dot let's bury these, Ichiro said and started digging a hole with his own hands. Lucas nodded and said. Good idea. He started digging the hole as well, and in only ten seconds, they had a big enough hole. They put their black masks on it and covered the hole with the dirt. Few Ichiro took a deep breath and stood up his pants were slightly dirted by the dirt. Lucas was the same, and his outfit was also slightly dirted because of the fight. Point two will never again follow your ideas, Lucas said, slightly panting. Ichiro chuckled. Dot let's go. Lucas nodded. He and Ichiro walked through the parks while trying not to let anyone notice them. They were still wearing the same outfit as before and they didn't want to risk it. They exited the park and started calmly walking towards their homes. This will be where we separate, see you in school. Lucas said, he waved his hand and started walking towards his home, he still had few questions for Ichiro, but it can wait. Ichiro waved his hand and took a deep breath. He started dragging his legs towards his home, the blood on his hands feels like it waits a ton. Host, you don't need to be afraid of killing anymore. This is world of the fittest and killing isn't out of ordinary. Ichiro didn't answer. He walked in silence, until he finally saw a front yard of his home. System, am I the villain of the prophecy? I feel like a killing isn't very hero-like. Ichiro asked a question which has been stuck on his mind since the park. Host, what do you think hero is? Someone who saves everyone without caring about himself. And what is a villain? Selfish individual who gets pleasure of hurting someone. Which one are you? That is the thing. I don't know. Ichiro sadly said and walked towards his home. He opened the door and lazily put his shoes on the shoe rack. The house was very quiet, no one is home yet, except him. He made his way over to the upstairs and entered his room. The room was very dark, like his thoughts. He pressed the light switch and the room instantly brightened up. Host. He heard the system SS anxious roar. But Ichiro also felt it. He moved his body perfectly towards the left and dodged a small blade. He turned his head and saw a black figure holding a knife. And who the hell are you? Ichiro narrowed his eyes, his heart started beating rapidly, he feels that the black figure was an opponent he can't defeat. And who the hell are you? Ichiro narrowed his eyes, his heart started beating rapidly, he felt that the black figure was an opponent he can't defeat. The black figure put his knife in front of him and prepared to attack. Ichiro put his hands in front of him in orthodox MMA stance. Tiny sweat drops started forming on Ichiro's forehead it has been a long time since he actually felt a death approaching, when fighting against an opponent. Peak Marshal Captain Wright. Ichiro asked from system. Affirmative. It wasn't an answer Ichiro wanted to hear. The black figure moved his hands towards Ichiro, and a small knife left his hand. Ironic edge catching sweep. Ichiro moved his hand in perfect motion and caught the small knife. The black figure was slightly startled, but his face turned neutral once again. Ichiro examined the small knife on his hand. Looking at the knife, he knows who is attacking him. Why is assassin from underworld targeting me? The assassin was startled, but his face turned neutral instantly. Ichiro saw his reaction he knew that his attacker was assassin but didn't know who he worked for. But now he knows. Underworld did they find out that I was the one who killed Kuro. Lucas might be in danger. Ichiro started slightly panicking, his calm composure crumbling apart. Host. No one is aware of you killing Kuro. This is something else. Ichiro heard System's voice and gained his composure. He almost lost the match before it even started. Ichiro isn't stronger than most because of his techniques or his way of analyzing his opponents. It is his calmness. He has learned to stay calm during the fights, and that's why he managed to defeat Urkham, even though he was slightly stronger than him. If he lost his composure now, he would die instantly at the hands of the black figure in front of him. The assassin unsheathed two small swords from his waist. Ichiro calmly holds the knife in his hand, he rarely uses any weapons, but when he is using it, he plans to kill his opponent. The assassin was the first to make his move he swung his swords, aiming at Ichiro's neck. 
Ichiro crouched, dodging the first sword, but then the second sword was approaching his head. Ichiro started rolling on the ground, barely dodging the second sword. He quickly stood up from the floor and carefully looked towards Assassin. His breathing was already getting heavy, he was trying to use his analyze, but his opponent is simply too strong for him to use it accurately. Ding Ding Ichiro heard a loud dinging noise in his head. System, horrible timing. He roared in his mind and again dodged a sword, which was only an inch away from slashing his neck. New quest appeared. Survive. Escape from the assassin. Rewards, 30 stat points, 500 coins, 1 lottery spin. Bonus rewards. Failure, you and your family will die. Penalty, death. Time limit, 1 hour. Ichiro couldn't care less about the rewards, but seeing that his family will die as well if he fails to escape made him angry. But that slight distraction caused almost his death. The assassin slashed with his sword, and the tip of the blade scratched Ichiro's neck, but it was enough to cause a dangerous wound. Arg! He cried out and stumbled backward he put his hand on the wound and felt the blood gushing out. The assassin didn't stop there he aimed his next slash at Ichiro's leg, trying to take out his mobility. Ichiro raised his leg, barely dodging the slash he grabbed the knife in his hand tightly and threw it towards assassin. Clank the assassin easily deflected the throwing knife with his sword. Now Ichiro didn't have any weapons left, and the dangerous sharp looking swords were approaching him. The assassin started slashing, making Ichiro retreat more and more until his back crashed to the wall. The assassin saw his change and slashed with his sword. Ichiro crouched and started rolling on the ground he quickly stood up, grabbed his lamp from his desk, and threw it towards the assassin. The assassin slashed with his sword and destroyed the lamp, but then he widened his eyes because Ichiro was already attacking him. Iron Lance Stainless Steel His spear-like attack approached his opponent. With a quick motion, the assassin managed to put his sword as a block, but Ichiro's attack still made him stumble backward. He was stunned. Ichiro's attack was definitely at martial captain level. Ichiro coughed a mouthful of blood, and blood started gushing even faster from his neck. The Iron Lance Stainless Steel is still too much to handle with his current body. The assassin was startled but got hold of his composure he knows that he is stronger, and it is only a matter of time before he kills his target. He started slowly moving towards bleeding Ichiro, his steps being completely silent. Ichiro went into his favorite cat stance and waited for his opponent to strike. The assassin lowered his body slightly his eyes underneath the black mask shone brightly. Swash then he slashed. His sword slashed towards Ichiro's stomach area. Ichiro took a step backward and dodged the attack. But the assassin wasn't done he took a step forwards and slashed with his other sword. Ichiro crouched and dodged the sword strike, but a kick came from the assassin, which sent him flying to the wall. Bam, ugh. He groaned in pain and fell down on the floor. Swish another slash came, aiming at Ichiro's unguarded head. Ichiro gritted his teeth and started rolling on the ground, but the assassin didn't stop slashing. Ichiro kept doing everything in his power to dodge the strikes, but it kept getting harder and harder. Arg! A slash hit Ichiro's leg, making him unable to properly stand. The second sword strike hit his shoulder. Then third sword slash scratched his cheek. The fourth attack was another kick, which sent Ichiro flying to the wall. BAM his back crashed on the wall, which caused a considerable dent to appear on the wall. The assassin started slowly approaching Ichiro's figure, his two swords in front of him. He was expecting Ichiro to start to panic because his death is nearing. But Ichiro was calm he has been distracted because failure isn't an option during this quest. And it took some time for him to gain his composure back. Now he has, and he knows what he needs to do to survive this ordeal. It isn't to escape otherwise, he and his family will never be safe. He needs to kill the assassin. His strength isn't enough to do that, but with the help of system and its cheat he can. Ichiro again put his hands forwards he will go offensive for now and find a chance to unleash his attack. The assassin was slightly shocked but was still calm. A person in front of him isn't a threat, only an insect, waiting to be exterminated. But he is still surprised after seeing Ichiro's fighting intent, it was like he isn't even thinking about dying, like it was impossibility for him. He narrowed his eyes and started swinging his swords around him. Ichiro waited calmly. 
Then the assassin swung his swords with incredible speed. The swords looked like it was an afterimage. Ichiro's eyes turned bloody red, he concentrated with all his might and used his analyze. Ironic edge. He put his hand forwards and striked the assassin's wrist. Ichiro's hand touched the assassin's wrist, which stopped the momentum of his sword. The blade of the sword was in touch with Ichiro's neck, but his eyes were still calm. The assassin in other hand was shocked, he felt immense pain in his wrist, which almost made him drop his sword, but managed to hold it barely. But Ichiro's left hand, which he used to deflect the wrist was broken. Blocking an attack from a person who is over a rank higher than you is almost impossible to do. Ichiro pushed his ironic edge to the limit and managed to block the sword strike, but broke his left hand in process. The assassin gritted his teeth and used his other sword to stab Ichiro instead. Stab, ugh. Ichiro groaned in pain, while the sword was stabbing deeper and deeper into his stomach. HP 4190. HP 3290. HP 1990. RAA. Ichiro roared and grabbed the assassin from his throat, but there wasn't any strength behind. The assassin smirked and pushed the sword even deeper. Ugh. Ichiro spat out mouthful of blood, his vision started getting blurry. With his hazy vision he saw the assassin's smirk. Het Ichiro chuckled. Has he gone mad? The assassin thought after hearing Ichiro chuckling. Die, Ichiro muttered, his hands suddenly turned into red. The assassin widened his eyes and felt the hold on his throat tightening. Agh, he couldn't breathe anymore. He dropped his swords and put his hand on Ichiro's arm and tried to push him away, but nothing working. Killing blow. Killing blow, rare, dot, this allows you to kill anyone with one strike, but you need to be in contact with your target's body you can't kill Martial King or above with, rare. Killing blow only Martial General and below. The assassin's face went purple instantly his throat was getting crushed, he kicked Ichiro's body, but he didn't let it go. Dot RAA. Ichiro cried out and crushed his throat. The assassin went limp instantly, the light in his eyes disappeared, and noises coming from his mouth disappeared. Ichiro dropped him to the ground, blood gushing out from the assassin's throat, painting the floor in red. 490 HP. Ichiro's vision was darkening more and more. Ding ding the sound of systems echoed in his ears, but he didn't care. System. He thought in his mind, and the blue interface of the system appeared in front of him. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 80. Coins, 2500. 250, 3200 EXP. HP 995. Strength, 70. Agility, 65. Stamina, 87. Vitality, 60. Lottery spins, 1, quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Martial arts, taekwondo, iron style, karate, muay thai, boxing. Weakness detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of martial commander or below. Death ignore, mythical, dot, death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert blacksmithing mastery, gives you abilities of master blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. He reached out with his shaky hand and pressed the, inventory. Button. Inventory, healing potions, common. 5x, healing potion, common, dot, 1 healing potions gives 50 HP points. He gritted his teeth and took two bottles with green liquids from the inventory. Clumsily he removed the bottle caps and started devouring the healing potions. Gulp he emptied the healing potions and threw them to the side. His body, filled with wounds, cuts, and stab wounds, started healing with visible speed. Healing potion, common. Used. 50 HP. 5995 HP. Healing potion, common. Used. 50 HP. 9595 HP. Ha. Ichiro took a deep breath. That if I didn't level up. I would have lost consciousness and died. Ichiro shuddered from the thought. 
he turned his head and saw the dead assassin's terrified face. System. Are you there? Ichiro said with a tired tone. Yes host. Giving a quest at that time was. A horrible timing. Apologies, you needed to get some extra motivation. Ichiro groaned and stood up his outfit was in pieces. He ripped his outfit into pieces and hid them in the closet. He took another set of t-shirt and sweatpants. He also had a few extra sets of school uniforms, and he is glad that he bought more. He had to get rid of his school jacket earlier today, and now the rest of his outfit was in rags. Ichiro then turned his gaze towards the assassin. What should I do with him then? Use your inventory, host. Ichiro raised an eyebrow. That I can do that? Host, you can't store living beings, but dead ones, you can. Ichiro nodded and touched the assassin's slightly warm body, but it was getting colder and colder. The assassin's body sucked inside Ichiro's palm. Ichiro exclaimed, he was surprised, he looked at his palm and felt very weird. He shook his head and looked towards two swords not far from him, he grabbed them and stored them as well, weapons could always be useful. He looked around his room and saw that it was a mess his desk was sliced in half, a massive dent in the wall, and his posters were ripped apart. How can I explain this? Ichiro sighed. He fell down on his bed, his exhaustion started kicking in. System. Did you see this coming? Ichiro asked with a tired tone. Some of your actions has changed the destiny. This won't be the end, right? They will send stronger assassin next time. Ichiro put his hand on his face and said. Irio doesn't have many people in peak martial captain. This must have cost them a lot. Hmm. Ichiro raised an eyebrow, waiting for the system to continue. They lost a lot of money. You need to find a way to repay them. You are saying that I should go and meet the one who is trying to kill me. That is suicide. Ichiro shouted. Good thing that you have death ignore. Ichiro groaned. That I don't want to waste it so soon. You don't have many choices, meet with the underworld leaders before they send someone stronger to kill you. Ichiro sighed and nodded. Why can't I live in peace? Why can't you shut your mouth for one second? Questions, questions, but no answer. Ichiro scoffed. You are rude I don't speak all the time. Ichiro pursed his lips and nodded. Show me the quest, Ichiro said. Quest completed. Rewards received, 30 stat points, 500 coins, 1 lottery spin. Bonus rewards, 1000 EXP. Level up. You reached level 6. You killed Marshal Captain. Rewards received, 2000 coins, 5 random boxes. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 80. Coins, 2500. 250, 3200 EXP. HP 9595. Strength, 70. Agility, 65. Stamina, 87. Vitality, 60. Lottery spins, 1, quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 3x random boxes 5x the assassin's corpse 2 swords of killing. Martial arts, taekwondo, iron style, karate, muay thai, boxing. Weakness detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of martial commander or below. Death ignore, mythical, dot, death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert blacksmithing mastery, gives you abilities of master blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Ichiro stood up to sit in his bed he looked at the interface, or more specially at the stat points. He clicked the, strength. Ichiro rubbed his chin and decided to add 10 stat points on it. Strength, 70 80. 70 stat points left. He clicked, agility. Next. He added 15 stat points on it. Agility, 65 80. 55 stat points left. He looked at the stamina and decided to add as well. He put 13 on it first, and when he was about to put 14 as well, he suddenly couldn't. 
Hm. Ichiro was confused it was locked at 100 stat points. System, what is this, dot of course, you stay quiet now. Ichiro grimaced when he really needed some answers, he didn't get. Ichiro sighed and decided to only put 13 on it. Stamina, 87 100. 42 stat points left. He clicked the, vitality. He decided to put 20 on vitality. Vitality, 60 80. Only 22 stat points left. Dot Michiro looked at the strength and agility. Dot perfect balance, Ichiro said and decided to put 11 on both. Strength, 8091. Agility, 8091. Ah. Ichiro moaned out of satisfaction his body felt better than ever before. All his exhaustion was gone, and it felt like he was floating gently in the air. Dot wait. Ichiro suddenly said, Dot did I get drugged? Ichiro raised an eyebrow he accidentally used drugs in his previous life, which felt similar to this, dot system, what the fuck? Why I am here? Only to suffer. Ichiro scoffed, dot show the stats. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 0, coins, 2500. 250-3200 EXP. HP 115115. Strength, 91. Agility, 91. Stamina, 100. Vitality, 80. Lottery spins, 1, quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 3x random boxes 5x the assassin's corpse 2 swords of killing. Martial arts, taekwondo, iron style, karate, muay thai, boxing. Weapon master, knife throwing. Weakness detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of martial commander or below. Death ignore, mythical, dot, death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert blacksmithing mastery. Gives you abilities of Master Blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. There were the coins, lottery spin and the random boxes left, but he was too tired to use them. He lied down on his bed, looking at the white ceiling which was slightly painted in red. red. Ichiro thought aloud, but then his eyes widened. He stood up in hurry and looked around the floor of his room and saw there were a lot of blood stains. Oh crap. Ichiro cried out, he stood up in hurry and ran outside of his room. He went towards bathroom, grabbed a mop, he quickly made it wet using the sink. He ran back to his room and started mopping the floor like a true champion. Gerard. He gritted his teeth, he kept mopping the floor and it was already very wet, but the blood didn't leave the floor. He stopped mopping and threw the mop to the floor with frustration. He scratched his head out of frustration. Fuck, fuck. Host, how come you are less afraid of the assassin who was literally trying to kill you few moments ago than now, that my mom will fucking beat shit out of me if she sees this? Ichiro almost cried. You are saying that you are more afraid of your mother than an assassin, dot yes. Ichiro roared, dot help me system. Please, I stop being annoying if you help me. Ichiro begged. Dot why you promise, dot I promise. Ichiro cowed out on the floor. IIT will cost 500 coins, dot take it. Ichiro cried out. 500 coins taken from host. After those words, the room magicially started cleaning up. The blood stains were removed instantly, the broken lamp magicially was fixed, the broken desk became whole again and the massive dent in the wall disappeared, dot thank you system. Ichiro gratefully said. Remember your promise. Ichiro raised an eyebrow, dot what promise? You promised that you won't be annoying anymore. Ichiro rubbed his chin, that I don't remember. Don't lie, that I do have trash short-term memory. Ichiro said, while hiding a smirk. Since when, dot since now, good night system. Ichiro smirked and lied down on his bed, he closed his eyes and started sleeping shortly afterward. Moron. System's voice rang in the room and instantly the previous fixed room, became mess again. But the blood stains didn't appear. Instead only the big dent in the wall, broken desk and broken lamp appeared. Hmph. Ichiro is sleeping peacefully, 
without not being aware of terror he is about to face, because system's betrayal. Three hours later Ichiro was still sleeping peacefully on his bed, not knowing that his peaceful rest was about to be interrupted. Footsteps echoed outside of the room. They stopped in front of his room. Ban the door to Ichiro's room was opened with a slam. From there, a beautiful woman with long black hair walked in, Dot Ichiro, wake up, it's Din. She trailed off in the end after she got a good look at the room. Her eyes widened the room was a complete mess. A massive dent was on the wall, the wooden desk was sliced in half, and a shattered lamp was lying on the floor. She pointed at the room with a shaky finger she saw Ichiro sleeping peacefully with a carefree smile. Her face turned murderous, she stomped toward sleeping Ichiro. She grabbed Ichiro's ear, but he still didn't wake up, dot wake up. Azumi roared with a furious expression. The window of Ichiro started making slight cracking noises. Ichiro stood up in a hurry he turned around him, with a killing intent filling his eyes. He thought that another assassin appeared, but something far worse did. He saw a beautiful middle-aged woman glaring at him. Slight sweat drops appeared on his forehead he turned his head shakily and saw his room being a complete mess. Ichiro, with a deadpan expression, looked at his mother. Gulp he gulped heavily his throat was parched, his lips were dry. Absolute fear was filling his insides, dot Ichiro. Azumi spelled his name with a menacing look on her beautiful face, dot a mother. Ichiro slightly stuttered but managed to utter his words. Azumi crossed her arms her face didn't change instead, her face screamed the words, explain. Ichiro, with this superhuman speed, cowed out deeply, his forehead touching the floor. He inhaled air to his lungs and shouted, dot it was Ayako, dot me. Ayako's cute tiny head peeked from the door she looked around the room, that I did this, that how dare you accuse my cute daughter. Azumi roared and kicked at Ichiro's head, which sent him flying to a nearby wall. Oof. Air left Ichiro's lungs, and he fell down on the floor like a dead fish. 100 HP. How. Ichiro shouted with a shock, he quickly checked his interface, but it showed 115,115 HP. Ichiro gritted his teeth, system. The system decided to stay quiet. It was the first time the system made a slight joke, and Husha kind of enjoyed it. While the system was enjoying Ichiro's doom. Ichiro was about to do something far. Worse for system. But first, he needed to deal with this demon queen in front of him. Ichiro stood up with shaky legs he didn't get any physical damage it was all mental damage. Mostly because his pride got damaged. Lucas shall never find out. Ichiro swore in his mind. Azumi stomped towards Ichiro and grabbed his ear, that what did you do here? The whole room is a mess. Ichiro gulped, that boy's stuff. Azumi grabbed his cheeks, that fix. Ichiro nodded over a hundred times in a second. Azumi finally let him go she stomped out of his room while huffing and puffing angrily. Ichiro wiped his sweat out of his forehead he turned his head and saw Ayako peeking, only her cute tiny head showing. Ichiro scratched the back of his head today, he probably lost his little sister's admiration. He threw her under the bus without any hesitation. Dot Ayako, I can explain, Ichiro said with a sad expression. Dot Ayako hummed and started running downstairs. Ayako. Ichiro dramatically fell down on the floor, imaginary tears started dropping out the corner of his eyes. But that only lasted for a moment Ichiro stood up like the last five minutes didn't happen, that I will buy her ice cream, she will forgive me. Ichiro nodded while another brilliant plan started forming on his head. He took his phone from his pocket and sat down on the bed. He instantly went into worldly talk, he saw a few messages immediately popping. Lucas Leader, you went into Irio's secondary middle school and crippled their strongest student. Are you nuts? Lucas Leader, the principal isn't happy. He will find out what happened. Why did you do that? Ouch, Ichiro smirked slightly he isn't the one who gets in trouble everyone in the Irio secondary middle school will. There is no way that they can keep his bullying incident wrapped. SLYCH 3 Amelia 4 Forever, how is it going Ichiro grimaced, seeing SLYCH's new nickname, that it is worse, I didn't think it could get worse. King of Games, it was alright until I saw your nickname. Ichiro shrugged he didn't need to worry others and talk about the assassin incident. 
He has encountered hundreds of assassins in his previous life, the current situation is direr than ever before, but he is confident that he can handle it by himself. Still, to do that, he needs to reach Marshal Captain, and he is optimistic that he can do that in less than a month. He didn't think that he was actually in danger of dying today he was always planning to use the killing blow. Still, the unexpected quest made him distracted, which made his situation even direr, but almost dying hundreds, thousands of times is making him numb to dying. He still felt that it was ridiculous to die because a truck crashed into him. He survived when he was surrounded by hundred mercenaries, all of them armed with guns and their barrels pointing towards him. He survived that with a few scratches, but then he died because of saving a little girl. He still hopes that the little girl doesn't get traumatized seeing him die. That would suck. Even though he is numb to dying, he still feels fearful of something happening to his family. He needs to deal with this situation as soon as possible. In his previous life, the power difference was never as big as now. Some people can destroy countries with a single attack in his previous life, he needed to be careful of guns, but now he needs to do everything so thoroughly, one day he might encounter a martial saint who will make his body explode in trillion pieces. Times are changing. Ichiro muttered. That I am so weak. In his previous life, he was the one who brought despair to others. His opponents knew that they couldn't defeat him, they still wanted to try, but the experience caused many of them to quit martial arts. If you are asking. Does Ichiro feel bad about it? He actually doesn't. If you can't handle someone is stronger than you, then you shouldn't even be martial arts practitioner. But that was because Ichiro didn't know how they felt. Now he does. He watched a lot of videos of martial kings and martial emperors fighting before the tournament. It was like gods were dueling. Ichiro was certain that his techniques were better than them, but a single attack from power trait would make his techniques useless. He bit his lip and stood up. He cracked his knuckles and looked at the wall in front of him. He lowered his stance slightly, he put his two hands in front of him, but his hands were like two claws from ancient beast. Ichiro took a quick step forwards and did a cross slash with his two claw-like hands. Iron Predator. The wall instantly had a two long claw marks, if that attack hit a person. It would be hard to defend yourself, and it would be even harder to survive such attack. Dot arc. Ichiro cried out, his face grimaced he fell down on the floor on his knees, his two arms were stinging with pain. But a predatory smile was painted on Ichiro's face, he looked at his hands and noticed one thing. They weren't broken, that I see. Ichiro said, he ignored the stinging pain on his arms and clenched his fists tightly, that once I reach Marshal Captain. I can use my techniques once again. He stood up once again, his arms still aching, but his smile didn't disappear from his handsome youthful face. He walked towards his bed and opened the interface. Name, Karagami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 0, coins, 2000. 250-3200 EXP. HP 87115. Strength, 91. Agility, 91. Stamina, 100. Vitality, 80. Lottery spins, 1, quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 3x random boxes 5x the assassin's corpse 2 swords of killing. Martial arts, taekwondo, iron style, karate, muay thai, boxing. Weapon master, knife throwing. Weakness detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of martial commander or below. Death ignore, mythical, dot, death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert blacksmithing mastery, gives you abilities of master blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. He took the five random boxes from his inventory and threw them to the bed. His gaze lingered on the direction of, lottery spins, one, Ichiro nodded, a confident look returned to his face. Time to become martial captain. Ichiro grabbed the first random boxes he turned it around in his hand for a few moments, inspecting it. The random box looked similar as ever. Black box with a white colored question mark on it. Ichiro sat down on his bed, 
which caused other random boxes to bounce around. Something decent. Please. Ichiro prayed and opened the box. Random box opened. You received beauty shampoo. Beauty shampoo makes your hair even more beautiful. Useless. Ichiro shouted and threw the pink colored shampoo on the inventory. Not a good start. Ichiro sighed and took another black colored random box. Dot don't fail me, Ichiro said and opened the box. Random box opened. You received dynamite. Dynamite, press the red button the countdown will start, and at the end of the countdown, everything goes boom. Dot does system want me to become some crazy explosion lover? Ichiro shouted angrily and threw the dynamite dangerously towards inventory. Three random boxes left. Ichiro grabbed the third random box he was sweat dropping, if this one is again a failure, he might give up. Come on. Ichiro psyched himself up and opened the box. Random box opened. You received fix your room set. Fix your room set, do you have a messy room? Do you have a broken wall or a broken window? Then the fix your room set is perfect for you. Ichiro went silent his face didn't have any expression. But then. Ichiro nodded, that that's pretty good. He took the fix your room set and threw it to the room's floor. The room started glowing in the color of white, and like a magic trick, the walls, the broken desk, shattered lamp, and the ripped posters fixed themselves up. The room instantly became like it has always been. Noise. Ichiro was happy with that. He took the fourth random box. He twirled the box in his hand. He inhaled and opened it. Random box opened. You received calm nature trait. Calm nature, you will be calm in every situation. You can stay calm in the face of death, and under situations, which seems impossible to survive, but with your calm nature, you can think of a way to survive the ordeal. Ichiro raised an eyebrow. How does that work? He shrugged and decided to find out later he didn't know if it was useless or not. He can already stay calm in the face of death, and he never loses his cool, except if he can lose something else than his life, for example, his family. Ichiro grabbed the last random box, it hasn't been the greatest reward so far, but he has faith in the last one. Random box opened. You received Book of Etiquette. Book of Etiquette, read it to become the perfect gentleman. Ichiro stood up from his bed, walked towards the window, opened it, and threw the book out. FCK, Ichiro cursed, he shook his head out of disappointment and turned around, but then he saw a floating book in front of him. He grabbed the book and threw it towards the open window. But the book of etiquette stopped moving and started floating towards Ichiro. Dot go away. Ichiro roared and punched towards the floating book. Steel smash. The book this time flew outside of the window, but it soon started floating back towards Ichiro. But Ichiro quickly closed the window. Ichiro smugly smiled and showed his middle finger. The book of etiquette didn't like it and crashed towards the window, which caused a massive crack to appear on the window. That what the FCK. Ichiro cursed, he opened the window again, and the book of etiquette collided with his face. Ichiro fell down on the floor while a floating book was still in contact with his face. Gur, Ichiro gritted his teeth, grabbed the floating book, and threw it to inventory. This time it succeeded. The crack on the window magically disappeared as well. But Ichiro didn't notice it. He stood up with an exhausted face he walked towards the bed with lazy steps and lied down. Interface. Ichiro said with a tired tone. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, unranked. Trait, calm nature. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 0, coins. 2000. 250, 3200 EXP. HP 89115. Strength, 91. Agility, 91. Stamina, 100. Vitality, 80. Lottery spins, 1, quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 3x The Assassin's Corpse 2 Swords of Killing Beauty Shampoo Dynamite Book of Etiquette. Martial Arts, Taekwondo, Iron Style, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weapon Master, Knife Throwing. 
Weakness Detection ILV-1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, gives you abilities of Master Blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Lottery. Ichiro muttered and clicked the lottery, the familiar wheel appeared in front of him, floating in the air. Words, spin. Looked very majestic it was like it was calling him to press it. He pointed his hand towards the words, spin. And pressed. The wheel started spinning, and familiar colors started showing. Blue. Red. Black. Gray. Violet. Brown. The wheel started slowing down, and soon the color of white was shown. You received quest activation token 1x. Quest activation token, it will give a quest for host, which he needs the most. Wah! Ichiro exclaimed, soon a white colored token appeared in his hand. He twirled the token in his hand, that this could be my key to reach the martial captain. Ichiro smiled slightly, dot activate the token. You want to use quest activation token? Accept reject. Ichiro pressed accept without hesitation. Ding ding, new quest appeared. Battle with unknown. Objective, defeat a savage beast. Rewards, 38 stat points. Failure, none. Penalty, 38 stat points. Time limit, none. Defeat a savage beast. Ichiro screamed he put his hands on his face. And where can I find a savage beast? God damn it. But then suddenly. A light bulb appeared on top of his head. Ichiro widened his eyes, and a huge smile crept on his face. The ranking test. He stood up with joy. The next ranking test will be held in five days, and Ichiro is going to participate. He is going to do the talent test and the martial leader test. The martial leader test was. To survive, fight against savage beast for five minutes. But Ichiro isn't planning to do a pussy route. He will defeat the savage beast. His joy was short-lived though. Ichiro sat down on his bed with a thinking posture. I have never fought against any mutated beasts before it will be very different compared to fighting an ordinary human. I have also heard that the savage beast is at least as strong as half-step martial captain, but it also depends on what type is the savage beast, and if it's agility type, then it definitely is half-step. But if it is strength type, then perhaps only peak martial leader. Defense type would be the easiest one my attacks are strong enough to break martial leader's defense. Ichiro concluded his thoughts, he hates that he has to leave it all to fate, but he doesn't have any other choice. Maybe I can make a request. Ichiro thought aloud, his nickname had already spread, and he is publicly known as Irio's golden child. Ichiro thinks that it is pretty cringe, but his reputation can help. But do they have multiple savage beasts? Ichiro grimaced. Savage beasts aren't some common cabbage, and it is already incredible that they have one. He took another look at his interface and planned to close it, but then he noticed his coins amount. Coins, 2000. Dot Michiro hummed and pressed the shop. Button. Random box, 200 coins. Advanced weapon mastery, 300 coins. Advanced karate mastery, 250 coins. Advanced Taekwondo Mastery, 250 coins. Healing Potion, Common, Dot, 350 coins. Healing Potion, Uncommon, Dot, 400 coins. Healing Potion, Rare, Dot, 500 coins. Healing Potion, Epic, Dot, 1000 coins. Healing Potion, Legendary, Dot, 10, 000, 000, 000 coins. Healing Potion, Mythical, Dot, 190, 000, 000, 000 coins. Body Increasement Pill, Locked, Dot, 500 coins. Lottery Spin, 500 coins. Killing Blow, Rare, Dot, 10, 000, 000, 000 coins. Killing Blow, Epic, Dot, 250, 000, 000, 000 coins. Killing Blow, Legendary, Dot, 500, 000, 000, 000 coins. Killing Blow, Mythical, Dot, 1, 500, 000, 000, 000 coins. Death Ignore, Mythical, dot, 499, 999 coins. 
Ichiro was first excited after seeing the body improvement pill, but the words locked crushed his feelings. System, what is this? Ichiro shouted angrily. Your body connection will be worse if you push yourself to Marshal Captain with the help of pills. Are you sure that you want to use it? Ichiro went silent, but then he shook his head. What about the stat points, how is it any different? Pills are external help. The stat points comes with a system it is worlds apart. You would be stronger than you are now if you hadn't used the pills early on. Why didn't you say it before? I was only beginner system previously, host. Dot ah, Ichiro exclaimed and nodded, he felt regret, but he couldn't change the past. He looked around the shop, and only the lottery spin seemed interesting, but he decided to close the shop. Birrr his phone vibrated once again. He took it and saw a few messages popping from the Worldly Talk app. Mark Alley, wanna play now? Ichiro completely forgot that he suggested playing Night's End with his classmates he turned his gaze towards his console. He shrugged. Might as well. Ichiro put the phone to the side and grabbed a controller. Clank he started the console and a familiar logo was shown on the screen. The logo of Majestic Dragon. The console he is using is called DG5 it is translated as Dragon Gaming 5. The fifth and final version of Dragon Gaming's console. For some reason, that company was shut down, they still sell the consoles, but they don't make any more new ones. No one knows why. The familiar selection of games was shown on the screen. He ignored them all and went towards Night's End. But he stopped suddenly and grimaced after seeing the title of the game. Yandera Dating Simulator, Realistic. Ichiro shuddered he forgot that he had this game. It cost him 20, and he didn't even finish the game. It was too difficult even for him. You needed somehow to dodge all the death flags, but it was near impossible. If you talk with another woman, the Yandra would stab you when you are asleep. If you hug a cat, the Yandra will throw you out of the school rooftop, and she will jump after you, saying that they would always be together in death. If someone actually touches you, the Yandra will find out who was it and kill her or him, the Yandra doesn't care which gender was the one who touched them, and after she kills whoever touched him, she will kill him next. It was pretty much Yandra Simulator X don't fucking touch anyone or you will die. Shit game. Ichiro grimaced imagine having a Yandra having a crush on you he shuddered from the thought. He found the Knight's End logo and clicked it, and pressed, play. The game booted up quickly and the familiar screen appeared. Enter the journey. Shop. Training. Friend list. Credits. But before he could click anything, his door was opened, and a familiar cute little girl was shown. She looked at Ichiro and saw what he was doing. She gasped and started running back downstairs. Ichiro raised an eyebrow, he shrugged and was about to press the, enter the journey. But then loud footsteps approached his room. He turned his head and saw panicked Azumi and Eiji. What is it? Ichiro asked. Azumi saw what Ichiro was doing, dot dear son. Please don't fall into temptation, dot okay. Ichiro was confused. Eiji approached Ichiro and said gently, dot shouldn't you go practice martial arts? He said hopefully. Ichiro shook his head, dot not really. Eiji went pale, point two know that games are interesting all. But don't waste your talents, dot uh. What? Azumi walked next to Eiji, that we are here for you Ichiro. I think it is time for an intervention. Ayako walked next to them and looked at her big brother with teary eyes. Ichiro raised an eyebrow. What? Eiji sniffed, trying to keep the tears in control, that why you are planning to quit martial arts, aren't you? Ichiro frowned. What? Azumi walked closer to Ichiro and hugged him. Eiji also hugged him. Ayako, with teary eyes, hugged Ichiro's arm. What? Ichiro was very fucking confused right now. That I know that your passion lies in video games, but you can be so much more. Eiji cried out. Thanks. That we love you, son, and we will support you no matter what. But I can't support you wasting your talents like this, Azumi said gently. That be big brother. Ayako said with a teary tone. My family is so weird. Ichiro thought. What are you guys even saying? I am not quitting martial arts. Are you all on drugs? 
Azumi turned her teary eyes and asked. Dot are really, dot yes. I am playing with my friends. Ichiro explained. Azumi and Eiji sighed in relief they again smiled, dot good. But then Azumi finally noticed the room's condition. Dot how did you fix it so quick? Dot eh. Ichiro started sweat dropping. Eiji patted Azumi's shoulder, dot boy's stuff. Ichiro nodded. Boy's stuff. Azumi and Ayako raised an eyebrow they looked strangely towards them. All right, get out, Ichiro said and concentrated on the screen. Dot don't play late. Azumi said and left the room with others and closed the door. Play late. Sure. Ichiro totally misheard it and pressed, enter the journey. The screen went white and the majestic world of Night's End appeared. The screen zoomed in, and his character was shown standing in the Lord Vane village. The NPCs were working like always they didn't think it was weird a person suddenly appearing out of nowhere. Ichiro opened his friend list and started typing his classmates' names to add them. Mark Alley level 167 friend online. Lantern Jake level 165 friend online. Ichiro was surprised it seemed that they were already his friends. He scrolled his friend list, trying to see who were online, and then he saw a familiar name. Night Butterfly level 129 friend online. How did it go with his mother's surgery? Ichiro thought, but remembering System's words, her mother must have been cured. In real life, Ichiro took his phone and messages Mark. King of Games, where are you two? I am in game Mark and others have questioned himself about his nickname, and he always said that it was his nickname in game, but no one really believed, not even them. Believing that he was another King of Games fanboy. But they are in for a surprise. Mark Alley. We are in Lesson Cave. Michiro hummed and opened his map, he could see every place he had been in before, and he found that place on the map. It was a massive city not far from Lord Vane. Ichiro started controlling his account and started running, this time he didn't walk. It looked like a white blur appeared in the village, the blur exited the village and started making its way over to Lesson Cave. The players he met were astonished to see a white blur suddenly appearing but couldn't see properly who it was. Ichiro reached the city of Lesson Cave in half an hour. He saw a majestic city not far from him. A massive wall surrounded the city, making it look like a massive fortress. He saw a huge mountain in the distance and a palace proudly standing on top of it. It was Royal Palace of Lesson Cave. Ichiro started walking towards the gates, ignoring the other astonished players after seeing his expensive-looking armor. But then their faces turned into absolute worship. A name was floating on top of Ichiro's avatar. King of Games level 415 Mythical Hero. No one stood in his way players made way like he was their king. The guard NPCs bowed deeply and let Ichiro enter the gate without any hiccup. The streets were busy with NPCs and players, but Ichiro's avatar was like a shining beacon. Everyone's eyes turned his avatar, and the looks turned from indifferent to worship. Ichiro started walking through the streets each step made everyone step away from his way. It was like a god appeared. NPCs bowed deeply, with deep love and respect towards the majestic figure. The players started recording his every move, and shortly afterward, the entire player community of Night's End heard that King of Games appeared on Lesson Cave. Teleport gates kept flashing deep purple, more and more people appeared from the teleport gates and started running towards assumed King of Games location. The players who live-streamed everything suddenly found their viewing count rise without stopping. Players with 100 viewers turned into 10, 0, 0, 0. Even the game makers were shocked seeing King of Games suddenly appearing, even they were curious about that individual. They don't have any right to watch any players playing otherwise, a costly lawsuit could be waiting for them. With their admin accounts, they entered the game and started floating in the sky of Lesson Cave, watching King of Games. Ichiro opened his map, it showed where his friends were, and it was packed with blue dots it was a sign of a friend being near, but there were over a thousand blue dots around him. Gladly the game had option to search more accurately. He pressed the, search, button and wrote Mark Alley. He wasn't far, few dozen meters from his position. He turned his head and looked in the direction of Mark Alley. Mark was standing with his group of friends Jake was also there. They looked at him with absolute worship on their faces. But then they saw him looking towards them, which caused them to panic. Ichiro smirked and walked towards them. 
Players looked with fascination as the legendary king of games started approaching a group of players. Mark and the others started standing stiffly, they didn't dare to speak in their mics. Ichiro reached them and looked towards Mark, he then started walking on the mic. It was hard to find you guys. Mark gulped. Dot SS Sir King, WWWHYRAU you trying to find us? He stuttered heavily, his voice shaking. Ichiro rolled his eyes, that I am Ichiro, relax. Dot eh. Mark and Jake said same time, his group of friends were still standing stiffly. That why why you are Ichiro? Mark shouted with a shock. Yup. Ichiro smirked. Some distance away from them. In group of players, a certain female avatar was looking at King of Games with a shock. Dot HH he was King of Games. Night Butterfly's eyes almost popped out of her skull. Why you are really Ichiro? Mark and Jake couldn't believe it. Their group of friends was gobsmacked after seeing the king talking with them so casually. Yes, I told you thousand times already, Ichiro said. Ichiro and the rest are currently staying outside of Lesson Cave in the nearby forest. They couldn't properly talk since literally a thousand people tried to eavesdrop on their conversation. No one was standing on their way after Ichiro decided to leave Lesson Cave to somewhere more private. Jake scratched his head. This is so not fair. What do you mean? Ichiro asked curiously. Jake sighed. You are the dream of countless girls in real life, and now you are some kind of demigod of the gaming world. Ichiro shrugged. I am a man of many talents. Mark and Jake sighed they have to admit that Ichiro is definitely genius in equal standing with SLYCH. It still seemed unreal that Ichiro actually managed to be close to equal with SLYCH RAF 10. CC can I get your autograph, a timid sound was heard Ichiro turned his head and saw a female avatar shyly holding a piece of paper. Mark and Jake also thought that should they get autographs, it could sell for a lot of money. Sure, Ichiro said and took the piece of paper. It showed an option to write something. King of Games 3. Ichiro wrote simply and gave the piece of paper back to the girl. T thank you. The female avatar shouted with excitement. Ichiro nodded, since I am famous should I sell my autographs? It wouldn't hurt to get more money, he narrowed his eyes. But he was slightly afraid of doing it because of certain bit precious system might not allow it. I won't allow it. How did you get in game? Ichiro was shocked, he didn't turn his head, but he scanned the area with his eyes. I am not in game you moron. I am inside your head. Oh. Ichiro felt slightly stupid he looked around in real life and forgot that he wasn't actually in game either. What should we do now? Mark asked after his initial surprise and excitement had slightly faded off. We can do the hunt the giant spider quest, Jake suggested. Mark nodded and looked towards Ichiro, is it fine with you? Ichiro nodded, let's do it, but first I will invite one more person. Who? Mark asked curiously. You will see, Ichiro said mysteriously and opened his friend list. He clicked the, night butterfly. And started messaging. King of games, wanna join for quest? We will be waiting in the lesson cave monster forest. And sent. Ichiro started waiting for a response, while Mark, Jake, and the others waited curiously. Ding a message popped up on Ichiro's screen. Night butterfly, alright. I will be right there. Ichiro smiled and turned his head towards the curious individuals, she is coming. Mark looked thoughtful, so it is a she. Hmm, Jake hummed thoughtfully. Ichiro grabbed his phone in real life and started checking the news about Irio. As he expected, the news about his incident was uncovered. News, Irio's golden child, Kuragami Ichiro's past. Ichiro sighed and closed the phone he really hoped that he wouldn't get some pity looks tomorrow in school. He is a big boy. He doesn't need pity. Need a hug, big boy. Leave it to the system to ruin the moment. Ichiro scoffed, I wonder if you become living being if the system becomes like ultra advanced expert mega system. Maybe if you hit your head again, you might be able to hurt me. Really? No. Ichiro gritted his teeth and focused on the screen he sent the message five minutes ago, and Night Butterfly should be soon here. A few more minutes later, they finally saw a silhouette walking towards them. Ichiro looked closely and saw a female avatar approaching. 
She had black hair with a ponytail. She didn't wear heavy armor like Ichiro did instead, she wore very light armor, good for agility and mobility. Her avatar's face was quite ordinary because not everyone spent hours and hours making their avatar as beautiful as possible Ichiro didn't care much either and went with the default setup. Night Butterfly reached the group and looked at everyone with a shy look. Hey, Nighty. Ichiro waved his hand. And Nighty. Night Butterfly exclaimed. Ichiro nodded, it is your nickname from now on. He also has nicknames for Lucas and Slych. Lucas's nickname is Moron, but he doesn't call him that in front of him, only in his mind while talking with System, but the System ignores his talks most of the time. Ichiro is kind enough to keep company for Lonely System, but he gets ignored. Slych is called Cringe Lord. Ichiro is very jealous of him but also happy for Slych he always seemed very distant with his team members and only seemed close with him and Lucas. At least he won't be lonely in Armia, that's what he thought. A all right, Night Butterfly said with a shy tone. Then Ichiro remembers one very crucial thing, how is your mother? Night Butterfly's voice instantly became joyous, doctor said that my mother will make a full recovery in one week. Ichiro smiled and nodded, good to know. Cough Ichiro turned his head towards Mark, who coughed to get their attention. Ah, right, this is my two friends from real life, and those others are their friends. He pointed towards the group of friends. I am Mark. Mark nodded. I am Jake. Jake also nodded. Their friends also gave a simple introduction. Shall we do that, quest now? Ichiro said the rest of the group also nodded with excitement. I will share the quest with you too, Mark said and offered both of them a quest. Mark Ali sent you a quest request. Accept reject. Ichiro pressed accept, and an interface appeared. In front of him. Hunt the giant spider. Rewards, 10, 000 golden coins, shared by party members. Spider armor spider sword. Penalty, 5 level. Hmm. Ichiro nodded rewards weren't that amazing in his opinion, because 10 members were currently in the party, which means everyone gets 1000 golden coins. But only in his opinion, for others, this mission is great. 1000 golden coins are 100 in real life which is a lot of money for students. The party members were extremely excited because this is free money. They have King of Games on their side, and he alone can beat this quest. Let's go we have only a few hours before Jake, and I need to leave, Mark said others nodded and started following behind him. They started walking deeper in the forest since the lair of giant spider Arachne was located there. There was a giant red dot in their maps, which tells the location of the quest. The bigger the red dot, the more significant threat they will face. Like in the quest to defeat Darcelian, the red dot was over 5 km in diameter. But quest to hunt the giant spider Arachne is only around 10 meters in diameter. Darcelian is about 500 times more dangerous and harder to defeat than Arachne. The forest had countless monsters, and the giant spider Arachne wasn't the most dangerous one the deeper you go, the bigger chance of you dying. In the middle of the forest a being even stronger than Darcelian is located, but it is a world-class quest opponent no one can defeat it yet, not even Ichiro. Night Butterfly was curious about Ichiro's identity she took a few glances towards him and saw nothing special. She started walking slightly faster and appeared next to Mark. Hey, Night Butterfly whispered. Yeah. Mark said with a questioning face. You are friends in real life with King of Games, right? Mark nodded. Yes. What kind of person is he? Night Butterfly curiously inquired. Mark thought for a moment before answering, interesting person. What do you mean? What do you think King of Games does in real life? Mark asked with amusement no one would link him as one of the greatest geniuses in martial arts. Night Butterfly shrugged, an ordinary student. Mark shook his head, nah he is a martial artist. What? Night Butterfly exclaimed. Mark nodded, he represented our city not long time ago. I see is he strong? Mark smiled, very strong, strong enough to rival Jensa's greatest rival. Oh, Night Butterfly was more and more curious about Ichiro, but then she remembered a particular slip of the tongue from Mark, so you too are from Jensa? Ah, uh, Mark exclaimed he wryly smiled and nodded. 
Hmm, Night Butterfly was thoughtful she is confident that she could find the videos from Jensa's tournament it must be spread everywhere already. Wait, Jensa wasn't it there where the tournament where the big rigging incident happened? Night Butterfly muttered. She wasn't sure, but she will find out everything about her savior, King of Games. It's not creepy I am just curious, yes that's it. I am only curious. Night Butterfly made a convincing excuse. I just wanna see how he looks like yeah, I am only curious, nothing more, nothing less. Night Butterfly smiled and kept walking peacefully. But then Mark's voice interrupted everyone's thoughts, we are here, he pointed towards a cave not far from them. A interface appeared in front of everyone. Welcome to Lair of Giant Spider Arachne. Welcome to Lair of Giant Spider Arachne. Dot let's do this, Mark said with excitement and started walking towards the cave with careful steps. Jake followed closely behind, and their group of friends started walking towards the cave with excited faces. Only Night Butterfly and Ichiro remained. Ichiro equipped his, Excalibur Extreme. Sword and started chasing the others. Night Butterfly followed closely behind, watching Ichiro's every move. The deeper they went into the cave, the darker it got. The first 100 meters since entering the cave were very ordinary rock walls while a slight light illuminated their way. But after they got deeper, they noticed thin spider webs appearing on the walls, the scene becoming incredibly creepy all of a sudden. Mark was holding a fire torch since the light coming from the entrance wasn't available anymore. Only their footsteps and wind blowing echoed in the cave, no sign of the giant spider, but hundreds of smaller spiders were crawling on the rocky ground and the walls. The girls of the group were extremely disgusted but tried to keep their composure. The boy's other hand was also uncomfortable, except Ichiro. He didn't really mind, but if even one of those spiders touched his majestic armor, he would slice them up. No spider shall touch this young master. Well, that was a lie, Ichiro is actually afraid of spiders, but we don't mention it to preserve his self-dignity. In the eyes of others, Ichiro seemed calm like a sea nothing made him scared or panicked, the impression of the legendary king became even higher in their eyes. Mark and Jake thought that it was as expected he is Irio's golden child after all. He wouldn't care about some spiders. But Ichiro has tried to quit the game four times already, but you can't if you are in the quest location. When Jake first suggested this quest, Ichiro didn't think that the spiders would be this creepy. He gets goosebumps constantly while looking at the screen he shouldn't have accepted. Mark suddenly stopped, that we might have arrived. Everyone looked towards the distance and saw a vast open space. It wasn't dark anymore instead, a blue light illuminated the enormous open room, it literally screams the words, boss fight, they are confident that they will find the giant spider there, dot let's do this. Mark and Jake started approaching the vast open space with their group of friends. Ichiro had slight sweat drops forming on his forehead, but suddenly he heard a beeping noise on his head. Calm nature activated. Oh. Ichiro felt his nervousness disappearing instantly. King, should we go? Others are waiting. Night Butterfly said with her feminine voice. Ichiro again concentrated on the game he nodded and started walking towards Mark and others, who didn't enter the vast open space yet. They arrived in the vast open space the ceiling was filled with blue-colored crystals, illuminating the place nicely. The vast open space was at least 100 m in length and 50 m in height. There was only one entrance, and it was the one Ichiro and others used. The party looked around the wide open space warily. Ding, hunt the giant spider Arachne begins. Giant spider Arachne level 180100000 HP. .skkkkk a menacing sound was heard in the cave, and suddenly the ceiling started crumbling. The ceiling was shattered, and from there, Ichiro's biggest nightmare appeared. It was a massive spider with a length of 20 m at least. It had eight limbs that looked like steel spikes instead, but instead of having the spider's face, he had a human male's. It wasn't an ordinary face it was very lifeless and pale, eyes were like dead fish, and the skin looked like it was rotting. Arachne also had twenty-four eyes, creepily eyeing everyone, slight drool left his mouth, and with a hungry gaze, he made his move, dot watch out. Mark shouted and leaped away. Jake and their friends also listened and dodged the spider. Ichiro grabbed Night Butterfly and disappeared from his spot way faster than others. The giant spider Arachne appeared on their previous spot, and with his twenty-four eyes, 
he instantly found where everyone were. Arachne seeing Mark being all alone, decided that he would be the easiest prey. Arachne raised its steel limb and planned to impale Mark with it. Mark equipped his majestic-looking shield and blocked the strike. But the momentum of the attack still sent him flying to the nearby cave wall. Dot Mark. Jake and the others yelled. Arachne leaped straight towards Mark's fallen figure and opened his jaws hungrily. Mark's HP has fallen down to 10, 000 already, and the next attack will kill him. With a horror-filled gaze, he saw the approaching spider's mouth. But then. A blur of white appeared in front of the giant spider Arachne. Ichiro swung his Excalibur sword, which made a slash appear in front of him, a slash made of pure white. The slash started flying towards the giant spider Arachne. Arachne seeing the threat of the slash, decided to put his steel limbs as protection. But it was a mistake. The slash effortlessly cut his two steel limbs, but the slash wasn't done yet. The slash struck Arachne's face, which caused 13 of the 24 eyes to be destroyed. Skkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkkk
She had beautiful long black hair with delicate looking eyebrows and a cute pointed nose. She has blue eyes with gentle looking eyelashes. Her smooth looking skin made her look like a porcelain doll with smooth looking lips. She was wearing comfortable looking t shirt and shorts. Her figure wasn't perfect hourglass body, instead, it was petite with small breasts. She was a innocent and cute looking girl. She is Night Butterfly, age 15. Real name Azra Nightside. Azra closed the console and looked around in her room. It wasn't very fancy pink colored walls, a tiny bed next to the wall with a night's end poster in the wall. Pair of windows where you can see a busy city. Her room was quite cheap looking, and only her TV and console were expensive looking. She took her phone from the charger and went to her tiny looking bed. CRRKKK creaking and cracking noises were heard after Azra sat down, it was almost at breaking point, but she didn't care because she had gotten used to it. She opened her phone, which was over five years old, with a screen with cracks like spiderwebs and a dirty looking phone case. She usually only uses her phone to call her mother or check the news of night's end, but she is doing something different this time. Azra started tapping on the cracked screen, trying to find videos from the tournament of Jensa, and it didn't take long since that tournament was in highlight. Mark said that he rivaled the greatest genius, Azra thought aloud, ah it was him. Her beautiful face had a smile that could brighten any room she started typing on the website and found the article about SLYCH RAF 10. She started searching the video clips of him, and a particular video popped up. Armia vs. Irio Final Match SLYCH RAF 10 vs. Kuragami Ichiro. She saw the view count and was astonished. Views, 576, 467, 924. Likes, 295k. Dislikes, 46k. Hmm why so many dislikes? She started scrolling down and saw the reason. A lot of hate came towards SLYCH because he hurt Ichiro. Azura Riley smiled, so this Ichiro must be some kind of pretty boy. She has no interest in idols and pretty boy fighters, who are in the spotlight because of their looks no matter where they go. And she thought that Ichiro was one of them that's why 99% of dislikes were from girls. She clicked the video, and the battle started. Azura sat down not so comfortably, her back hitting the wall and the rough bed underneath her, but her focus was on the video. The video lasted 5 minutes until the video ended in SLYCH's victory. Azura was astonished seeing their strength, almost as strong as my brother, she then quickly shook her head, removing the thoughts about her brother. She then started looking at the other videos, but SLYCH easily defeated every single one of them. Mark definitely said that he was in equal standings with the greatest genius of Jensa and that is SLYCH then, could it be? Azura shook and went back to the first video. SSSSSSS her face was almost in contact with her phone she looked closely at Ichiro's every move. The video again ended, but Azura instantly replayed the video. She did the same thing for three hours in strength until she remembers every move Ichiro did in that fight. She was still unsure whether it was him, so she decided to find every news article about Ichiro. Then she saw a particular article. News, Irio's golden child, Kuragami Ichiro's past. She started reading the article and was shocked. He was bullied. How come he didn't do anything about it? He is so strong after all, Azura was getting more curious each passing second. She started twiddling her soft-looking toes and thought about the conversation she had with Mark. There must be more clues, she rested her head on her knees and thought deeply. It must be him, she said, but then she remembered one thing, I can check the students from his school. Azura exclaimed and started typing the website of Irio's middle school she will try to find anyone with the names of Mark and Jake in his class. The first thing she saw on the website was two pictures. One of them was a handsome black-haired young man, and another was a tall young man with a buzz cut and muscular body. They were Ichiro and Lucas. Below them, words, Irio's golden childs, were shown. She tried to find the student list, and a few minutes later, she gave up. It was wishful thinking of course, they wouldn't publish the student lists. She sighed, I am sure it's him, she opened the worldly talk and saw, King of Games. Name on her contacts she smiled sweetly and closed the phone. I will find out. She cheered herself up and stood up from her creaking bed. 
The floor was ice cold, there wasn't heating in her tiny apartment, and she is lucky that she even has a home. With tiny steps, she exited her room and saw a kitchen not far from her and a door to her apartment. It was a tiny apartment, only big enough to have Azra live here since her mother couldn't earn money, she had to do it by herself, and she managed to do barely get enough money for food for playing night's end. Her mother let her use her savings since she had no use for it, but those ended quickly because her mother wasn't the wealthiest, and once the money was running out, she decided to buy the console and TV. She heard great news about Night's End that you can earn money from there, and she is glad that she started playing. Without Night's End, she would probably sleep in the streets by now. And meeting with King of Games was pure coincidence and the greatest thing that happened in her life. She opened the refrigerator and saw one cup of noodles sitting lonely in the fridge. She sadly smiled and took it, put it on the microwave, and waited. She still has the extra money Ichiro gave her but she is hesitant. Should she really use it? She thought that King of Games only gave her the money for the treatment, and she felt like she was letting him down if she used that money for something different. Her mother will be cured in a week, and their life would be better than ever before with this money, but without this money she isn't sure how they can make enough money to feed both of them. Her mother will be too weak to work for quite some time. Beep beep the microwave beeped, Azura opened it, and the smoke assaulted her face instantly. Cough Azura coughed heavily she started swiping her hand, trying to get rid of the smoke. After the smoke was gone, she took the cup of noodles from the microwave and saw the result. The cup of noodles was barely heated up, the microwave was at least a decade old, and it wouldn't be surprising if it would explode the next day. Azura took her spoon, which was also the only spoon in this household, and started eating the raw noodles. She grimaced, but she kept eating, and shortly afterward, she ate it all and instantly threw the cup to the trash can. Her face was pale, but at least she won't starve for now. She went back to her room and lied down on her bed. She isn't going to school because she has no money. She is also too young to get any work, she doesn't have martial arts rank. But there were only one job she was apparently suited for, at least according to her uncle, but even thinking about him, makes her nauseous, and that job is something that she will never do. She wouldn't able to lower her status that much, but thinking about her mother she might have done it if her mother's condition got worse. Her father and mother divorced, Azura and her brother got separate. She isn't sure if they know their situation, but they might know her father's identity is very special, if he even little bit cared about her, then he would be aware. But it would be even worse if he knew and did nothing, she doesn't know that should she hate them, or love them because they are her family. The room was getting darker since the sun is about to disappear, soon she was covered in darkness, only light coming is from the moon. She covered herself with her blanket, which couldn't really help her to defend against the cold. Her body shivered, while she was trying to sleep. A small breath of cold air left her mouth, showing how cold it actually is. She is from a country called Winterlight, one of the top four countries of Arya according to country rankings. So-called high-evil country, with few martial monarchs in top of the food chain. But this place is not that good for living especially for the poor, like Azra. There is only one season in winter light and that is winter. Cold and snow for 365 days in year can make anyone go crazy. But here people are used to it, and some even like it. But Azra hates it. Every night before she goes to sleep, she has to suffer the coldness. She hugged her 165 centimeters body tightly and wrapped the blanket powerfully around her, but it didn't help much, the cold was still present. But finally after struggling half an hour, she finally managed to drift asleep. And just like that, another day on the life of Azra Nightside has come to an end. Beep 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 a young man was seen sleeping on the bed, until a beeping noise, which only he heard, made him wake up with a flinch. Ugh. Ichiro groaned he put his hands on his ears and said, dot make it stop. Host, it seems I am your personal clock now, which means that I also have to wake you up. Ichiro couldn't even open his eyes, dot w what time is it? He lazily asked. 3, 30 a.m. Ichiro groaned, dot why did you wake me up so early? I went to sleep at 1 a.m. Your fault, not mine. Beep beep the beeping sound grew even louder, dot fucking hell. Ichiro shouted and fell down from his bed, landing on the ground with a thud. Ichiro rubbed his painful butt, dot why you need to be so ruthless. It is too early for me to deal with this shit. You deserved it. 
Ichiro stood up and rolled his eyes, that you still mad about it? It happened last night. Dot so sensitive. Ichiro mockingly said and left his room. Flashback. Ichiro put down his headphones and stood up from his sitting position. His legs felt numb after playing few hours, he has been training non-stop for almost a month, and now when he can finally relax, his muscles are not used to it. The sky was already darkening, and the city became brighter and brighter. Ichiro lied down on his bed and looked at the ceiling. Hey, system, Ichiro said. The system stayed silent because it was time for Ichiro's talk time. Ichiro shrugged he has gotten used to system silence, dot night's end is a pretty nice game honestly, too bad that you can't try it. It would be nice. Especially with friends, I only met Night Butterfly recently, but she is a nice one. I can feel that we will become good friends. Now I have to focus on that quest I think I can reach Marshal Captain if I do it, which would make things easier for the future, especially easier to get in good high schools. SLYCH did suggest going to Enforcement Department School, but I am not too sure about that. Thought it would be nice and all to be with SLYCH, but he only comes a year later, we will be in different classes as well. Hard choices. I can't probably leave too far away from Irio either, my parents wouldn't allow it, and I don't want to separate with them this soon either. Martial arts is a lonely journey, and once I graduate from college, who knows when I meet them again, I will go traveling the world, visit other continents and join the tournaments. It will be fun, but I will miss my family. Ichiro talked while System listened. Dot thanks for listening System, even though you are a terrible bitch sometimes, you are alright, Ichiro said, but System still didn't answer. But then. Ichiro remembered System's betrayal. But. You did betray me today. And you have to suffer. Ichiro grinned. Ichiro put his hands towards his pants and took them off. Dot it is time for manly routine, enjoy System. What? No, don't. N-O-O. -O. System's despairing sounds were heard, but only Ichiro heard it, but he was busy doing his manly routine while making System suffer for its betrayal. Flashback E-N-D. That I will never be able to unsee it. You have seen me naked before what's the big deal? Ichiro scoffed and entered the bathroom. It is not the same. Drama queen. Ichiro said and started brushing his teeth, dot and besides. You are the one who rudely entered my mind I want some private time as well. Fine. Upgrade the system, and you can shut down the system, but you can also restart it when you want. Ichiro nodded and spat the remaining toothpaste to the sink. He wiped his mouth and said, that sounds nice. Can you also add a clock on the system? You are slow to respond sometimes. Ichiro said and left the bathroom. Fine. System's voice was getting angrier by second. Ichiro entered the downstairs he put on his sneakers and the jacket. He opened the door and left the house. Summer was approaching, and warm weather came with it. Even though the sky is still slightly dark, the weather is still warm and comfortable. Ichiro left the yard and started running towards the city, where the people who woke up early were about to open their shops. He saw most people waking up early were older people, with time to spare after their age of deterioration had passed. People who have suffered and managed to survive to the end of the age of deterioration get a massive monthly payment. Enough to live their life freely to the end, but there aren't many years left. Some don't even make it past 70, let alone 80. It is a sad and terrifying experience, but the older they get, the less they care. Some older people open shops, which is mainly customer service. They can talk with younger people more accessible that way, making their lives more bearable than only spending their time in loneliness or with some other older folks who can die anytime. Ichiro saw an old lady trying to open the door to her shop, but her hands shook too much and kept missing the keyhole. Her hair was gray, with wrinkles all around her face. She was pretty short, with a height of 150 centimeters, she was holding herself up with a wooden cane while trying to put the key into the keyhole, but her trembling hands made it very difficult. Need help? Ichiro walked towards her and asked. The old lady turned her head and saw Ichiro's face she pointed at him and said, dot hey. I know you. Ichiro smiled and nodded, dot need some help. He pointed towards the key. The old lady smiled gently and nodded, dot my hands aren't what they used to be. I can barely pour a cup of tea anymore. 
Ichiro felt sympathy towards her, even he was terrified in his previous life when he entered his forties. He felt so old and felt his body becoming weaker it was the worst fate he had imagined. He believed that he would die on a battlefield, surrounded by hundreds of enemies. Instead, he died when a truck ran over him what an irony. Ichiro took the key from the shaky hands of the old lady he put it into the keyhole and twisted, opening the door. There you go. Ichiro gave the key back to the old lady. Thanks. The old lady smiled gently, but then her face turned into pity, that how horrible that those students bullied you. You are such a sweet kid. She touched Ichiro's cheek and said. Oh, man. Ichiro thought. Ha ha ha. System roared in mocking laughter in his mind. Ichiro was planning to start cursing towards the system, but the old lady was still standing in front of him, and it would make him look very weird if he suddenly started cursing. Ichiro scratched the back of his head, that it's all in the past. The old lady smiled gently and entered her shop, that do you want something? I am selling delicious cookies people love them. Ichiro nodded and entered the shop it was a pretty ordinary shop, with few tables and a long desk with dozens of different cookies on display. The old lady took a plastic bag and put a few bigger cookies inside she gave the plastic bag for Ichiro. Those are called honey cookies, they are the most selled item in this tiny shop. The old lady said and walked back to the desk. Ichiro looked inside the bag and saw the massive looking cookies, he turned his head towards the old lady and nodded, dot thank you. The old lady waved her hand, dot no need. You can visit any time, you might not be able to stop eating them, once you have tasted them. She innocently chuckled. Ichiro's mouth curved into smile, dot next time I will pay, see you later. He waved his hand and left the shop. The old lady smiled and sat down on the small wooden chair. Youth. She smiled Ichiro started running his usual route, but this time he had a battle of words in his mind. Fucking system, it was funny eh? It was, I can already imagine the amount of pity looks you will get in school. You fucking bitch. Ha ha ha, suck it you dwarf. I think I will enjoy this day very much. Dwarf. I am not short. I am talking about the thing between your legs. Ichiro gritted his teeth, his blood pressure started increasing, fuck you. It is not small. People in the street saw a very angry looking young man running, while his face turned sometimes into absolute rage, and they could even swear that they heard curses leaving through the young man's mouth, but they might have misheard it. Battle between Ichiro and System lasted, even after he reached his home, they still didn't stop it. Score, Ichiro, 67. Versus. System, 82. System is currently winning. Ichiro entered his house after the morning jog. Host, you smell like a disappointment and failure. And you smell like a bunch of bad life choices. Ichiro growled inside his mind and walked towards the kitchen. It was around 7 a.m., and only his mother was awake. Good morning, son, Azumi said with a gentle smile while cooking the breakfast. Good morning, Ichiro said and kissed her cheek. He walked towards the refrigerator and put the cookies inside. What are those? Azumi curiously asked. That I got cookies from a kind old lady after I helped her a little bit, Ichiro replied. Azumi nodded gently and kept cooking the breakfast, dot can you wake up Ayako? She has to go to school early today. Ichiro nodded and ran upstairs. Ichiro's room is the first one after you enter the upstairs, and Ayako's is on the left side. He opened the door to Ayako's room and saw a tidy room. The ceilings were pink, with a bed next to the wall, obviously too big for Ayako. There was also a small wooden desk next to the window, with a lot of books stacked. Ichiro walked next to the bed and saw Ayako's sleeping figure her cute young face had a small smile. While her bunny pajamas made her look adorable. She looked very peaceful and happy while sleeping. It would bring a smile to everyone's faces, and only a monster could have the heart to wake her up. Ayako, wake up. Ichiro roared. Kia. Ayako let out a cute scream and woke up in a hurry she saw her brother standing next to her bed, dot big brother. She rubbed her eyes. Why did you wake me up, dot mom said that you need to go to school early today. Ayako nodded and lazily stood up from her bed with sloppy steps, she started walking towards the bathroom, barely staying standing. 
Ichiro rolled his eyes and started carrying Ayako he exited her room and entered the bathroom. There, Ichiro said and put Ayako down on the bathroom floor gently. Thanks. Ayako replied lazily she could barely keep her eyes open, she tried to find her toothbrush, but with her hazy vision, she couldn't. Ichiro chuckled he took a pink-colored toothbrush from the cabinet and put toothpaste on it. Open your mouth, Ichiro said, and Ayako complied. She opened her tiny mouth, and her white teeth were on display. He started gently brushing her teeth, and after a few minutes, he was finally done. Ayako spat the rest of the toothpaste into the sink. Ichiro left the bathroom, leaving Ayako alone to change her clothes. He went to his room and grabbed his phone. He was still wearing his jogging outfit, which consisted of a black-colored t-shirt and white sweatpants. His muscular arms were on display, and his jet-black hair gave a charming feeling. Ichiro went to his closet and took a new pair of school uniform, and it looked same as the previous one. He went downstairs and quickly ate breakfast, and left for school with Ayako. He wouldn't have to go this early, but he plans to get a few training routines done in the martial arts club. I really hope that I don't get those goddamn pity looks today. Ichiro prayed on his mind, wait. Didn't my parents see that news? He thought they would definitely make a thousand complaints if they heard about his bullying incident. Not yet, but today they will. So be prepared once you reach home. You are really enjoying this, aren't you? Affirmative. But Ichiro doesn't know that the news has reached everywhere in Jensa, his popularity has risen, and the popularity of Irio's secondary middle school is lower than ever before. Ichiro and Ayako reached the school shortly afterward. Ayako left for her club activities, and Ichiro started strolling towards the martial arts club. It was still early, and not many students were around most were in their clubs. Ichiro reached the club building and entered he saw a few students sparring with their club advisor watching them. He started walking towards the changing room, but his footsteps attracted everyone's attention. They turned their heads and were surprised to see Ichiro. The club advisor nodded to others and started following behind Ichiro. Ichiro entered the changing rooms and went to his locker, he opened it, and his training outfit was gathering dust inside. He took his training outfit and was about to start wearing it, but then a door to changing room was opened, and the club advisor appeared. He had an ordinary face with brown hair and brown eyes. He didn't look exceptional, but his body was athletic, fitting the martial arts club coach. Ichiro. The club advisor said with worry in his tone. Ichiro turned his head towards him and said, dot yes. The club advisor walked towards Ichiro and patted his shoulder, dot are you, all right young man, dot yes. Ichiro said with confusion. The club advisor sighed and said, that I saw the news. You have suffered. Ichiro grimaced. That if you need to talk, you can talk to us. He said with worry. Ichiro's mouth twitched, but he nodded, dot thanks. But I am fine. The club advisor nodded and started walking away from the changing room, but it took last pity look towards Ichiro. The door to changing room was closed after he left. Ichiro banged his head with the locker. Pfft. Ahahaha. Ah, ah. Ichiro's eyebrows twitched he gritted his teeth, took his school uniform off, and put it in the locker he also put his phone on it. The phone has vibrated a few times but didn't answer the messages just yet. He took the training outfit and started wearing it. The outfit consisted of a white long-sleeved shirt with the words Irio in front of it. The pants were also white it wasn't tight, instead flexible, which made the movement easier. He closed the locker with a slam and exited the changing room. He saw that there were more people in the club than when he first arrived. The reason is, because people spread the news of Ichiro coming to Marshall Club, which attracted spectators. His athletic figure instantly attracted everyone's attention. Murmuring sounds increased in volume, but Ichiro ignored it and walked towards the club advisor. The people who were sparring with each other stopped instantly, they turned towards Ichiro and bowed deeply. Ichiro was slightly surprised, but nodded in acknowledgement. What training did you come to do? The club advisor asked with curiosity. Ichiro shrugged, not only light training, maybe few spars. The club advisor nodded and looked towards others, that who wants to be Ichiro's sparring partner. Surprisingly everyone who are part of martial arts club put their hands up, it is very rare to spar against one of the strongest middle schooler Jensa has to offer, so of course they want to have this opportunity. 
the club advisor scratched back of his head. That I can fight all of them. Ichiro said nonchalantly. The club advisor wryly smiled and nodded. There was about ten martial arts club members available, and all of them were martial novices. Some of them were second year, some third year. Ichiro entered the center arena, and faced against ten martial arts club members. The club advisor was the referee, he pointed his arm towards the ceiling, dot ready? All of them nodded. Ichiro was calm. The martial arts club members were shaking in anxiousness, their faces were excited, but also very nervous. The spectators took their phones and started recording. Fight! The club advisor waved his hand and shouted. The martial arts club members started approaching Ichiro, who was still calmly standing. Ichiro had his hands behind his back, but once the first martial arts club got close enough, he leaped to the air and did a flying roundhouse kick. The martial arts club member widened his eyes, he felt a kick contacting with his shoulder, which sent him flying out of the bounds. Other martial arts club members flinched, with a simple kick, Ichiro already took down one of them. Ichiro disappeared from his current position from his position and approached the martial arts club member NR2. The NR2 tried to do sneaky punch, but Ichiro dodged it with ease, he put his hand on the foot of NR2 and made him trip. Ichiro grabbed his shirt and threw him out of the bounds. The rest of the fight went as expected. The martial arts club members tried all sort of tricks, but Ichiro with his speed overcame everything. Soon all the martial arts club members were lying down on the ground, outside of the center arena. Their faces were exhausted, but also relieved. They sparred against Ichiro, and they could brag about it rest of their lives, they all know that he is destined to be something great, at least Martial King, which is already a legendary achievement for City of Irio. There has never been a Martial King from Irio before. Ichiro exited the arena, he didn't even sweat. It wasn't even workout for him. The club advisor chuckled and scratched back of his head, that I guess there is only one who can give you a proper fight. Ichiro wryly smiled, but then he felt a hand touching his shoulder, he turned his head and saw Lucas' face. Wanna spar? Lucas asked, slight light flickered on his eyes. Ichiro widened his eyes, the club advisor as well. The spectators who heard it went instantly to tell their friends. The two golden childs were about to fight. Lucas, Ichiro murmured. Lucas grinned, scared. Ichiro snorted, fine, get on the ring. After those words, both of them leaped towards the center arena. The club advisor gulped, I am afraid that the arena will be destroyed the principal won't be happy. The clock was 7. 45 a.m. More and more students are arriving at the school, and the first thing they heard was Lucas and Ichiro were planning to spar. Students instantly started running towards the martial arts club building it didn't matter did they have club activities or not. This is a fight between two golden childs. Even the teachers hurried to the building, and the busy principal somehow found time to watch the sparring match as well. Ichiro cracked his knuckles and did a few stretches with his arms. Lucas took a deep breath and flexed his enormous muscles. The area around the central arena was heating up. The martial arts club was already packed with people. Mark, Jake, and Nayako also found their way towards the crowd. The club advisor walked to the center arena and pointed his arm towards the ceiling, ready? Lucas nodded. Ichiro smiled and nodded. Fight! Ichiro instantly changed his stance and went into cat stance. Lucas was never the person who liked defense. He went into offensive instantly. He approached Ichiro, and once he was close enough, he unleashed his lightning quick jabs. Only blurs were seen. Ichiro lowered his stance. Ironic edge storm hindering. He started using his wrists and palms to hit specific spots of Lucas' fists, stopping the momentum of his fists exponentially. Lucas' fists didn't look as fast as before. Lucas smirked, nice Ichiro smiled and unleashed his punch. Lucas put his muscular arm as a block, but Ichiro's punch caused him to slide backward a few meters. Cheer the spectators were fascinated. Their battle was on a level they couldn't reach in their lifetime. As a result, they cheered loudly. Go, Ichiro! Mark roared, which caused the cheer of Ichiro's name to be resounded in the hall. Mainly from the girls though. Go, Lucas! Lucas' friends started cheering loudly, which also got support. 
Lucas dodged Ichiro's quick punch he twisted his waist and flexed his right arm's muscles. Lightning fury. Lucas' strikes became even faster. Ichiro put his palms forward. Ironic edge wind hindering. Smack smack smacking noises of flesh were heard in the hall. Ichiro used his palms to redirect the lightning strikes, and it worked. Lucas smiled, seeing his strikes being so easily hindered. But Ichiro didn't survive unharmed his palms had signs of bruises appearing. His body wasn't still strong enough to use ironic edge to its fullest capabilities. He has gotten stronger, Lucas acknowledged, his face turned more serious. He flexed his leg muscles, which caused the arena to start cracking. He raised his leg and kicked towards Ichiro. Lightning punishment. Ichiro only saw a blur of kick approaching him, and soon the kick contacted with his shoulder. His eyes narrowed. Ironic edge. He didn't have time to use his ironic edge the kick sent him flying towards the edge of the arena. Ichiro landed on the ground painfully but managed to stay in the arena, only barely. He stood up quickly but didn't see Lucas attacking he only stood with a calm smile. Ichiro shook his head, you cunt. You reached half-step martial captain, and you didn't tell me. Lucas smirked, so have you, it seems. Ichiro nodded and cracked his neck, end of the warm-up it is time to get some training done. Agreed, Lucas said and went into his fighting stance. Ichiro spurted into movement and put his hand on a spear-like stance. Iron Lance Lucas widened his eyes and moved his head sideways, barely dodging the spear-like arm, but Ichiro's attack still made a slash wound on his cheek. Ichiro used his left arm and grabbed Lucas' shoulder. Lucas had a bad feeling, but then he felt like he was fighting against gravity. Ironic edge gravity press. Ichiro gritted his teeth and pushed Lucas harder and harder. Lucas was almost kneeling he gritted his teeth and tried not to fall if he falls. He will lose. Ichiro then used his left knee and did a knee kick towards Lucas' face. Lucas' face was pushed backward, his nose was bleeding heavily. Ichiro stopped holding his shoulder and instead started attacking with his fists. The spectators could barely breathe the one who is winning keeps changing constantly. Lucas rolled on the ground, dodging Ichiro's kick. Lucas quickly stood up and waited for Ichiro's attack. Steel smash. Ichiro's punch was approaching Lucas' face. But then Lucas went into horse stance. Once Ichiro's punch was almost in contact with his face, he put his shoulder forwards. Indestructible. Ichiro's punch contacted Lucas' face, but his attack also contacted with his torso. Ugh. The air left Ichiro's lungs he held his stomach painfully. Lucas, on the other hand, was holding his face in pain. His nose broke, and a blood trail left his mouth. S should we end this? The club advisor asked shakily. No. Both Ichiro and Lucas roared. The club advisor gulped and nodded he left the arena. He feels like this battle is going to be more disastrous. Lucas wiped the blood out of his face and went into his fighting stance. Ichiro coughed and took deep breaths, the pain was lessening, and he could again concentrate. Crack both of them moved at the same time, and the ground below them cracked. Lucas unleashed his jabs, and Ichiro again was in the defensive end. Lightning storm. Ironic edge lightning hindering. Both of their arms turned into blurs, and the spectators couldn't even see if the attacks hit or got blocked. Few of Lucas' attacks hit Ichiro, but he didn't even flinch. With the help of lightning hindering, he manages to redirect the strength of the punches. Ichiro's eyes started having blue rims. Weakness Detection Eye In Ichiro's vision, he can clearly see blue spots appearing on Lucas's attacks those are the weakness spots. Ironic Edge World Hindering Ichiro started using his fingers, wrists, palms, and his shoulders to redirect the attacks. Lucas gritted his teeth and tried to change the direction of his attacks, but that made his weak spots even more visible, which is what Ichiro wanted. Ichiro moved his right arm towards one of the blue spots and struck it. Lucas' posture instantly worsened, he started stumbling, but that gave Ichiro the time he needed. Steel smash the end is near. Ichiro unleashed his nostalgic punch and struck Lucas on his stomach. Arg. Lucas was sent flying, but Ichiro instantly leaped after him. After Lucas's back crashed to the ground, Ichiro was already above him. Steel smash the end is here. 
Ichiro's punch started approaching Luka's face. Luka sighed and closed his eyes. Swoosh but Ichiro's punch was almost in contact with Luka's face, but it stopped an inch before the contact. Lucas opened his eyes and saw Ichiro's powerful-looking fist almost touching his face. The club advisor was brought of his stupor he put his arm towards the ceiling, spar over. Winner Kuragami Ichiro. Cheer the loud shout woke the spectators, they instantly started cheering loudly. Ichiro breathed deeply and reeled his fist back. He put his left hand forwards. Lucas looked at the hand and grabbed it. Ichiro pulled him up, and now they were standing facing each other. Lucas stayed silent, but then he opened his mouth, good match. Ichiro nodded, and with a slight smile, nice one. Lucas chuckled and scratched the back of his head, to think you surpassed me so quickly. Ichiro wryly smiled he would never be able to surpass Lucas this quick without the help of the system. You both alright? The club advisor said anxiously. Lucas nodded, broken nose probably, and I might have broken rib. Ichiro sighed, yeah my ribs hurt as well, and I might have internal bleeding. Lucas nodded, yeah, I feel like my brains are swelling as well. Yeah, we are fine, though. I think I might pass out soon and get permanent damage, but otherwise, I am fine. Ichiro said. Lucas nodded, my ears are ringing as well that is probably not good. Now that you said about it I felt like my heart stopped beating a few times in a fight it probably doesn't mean anything. Ichiro scratched his neck and said. Lucas agreed, yeah I feel like my organs are failing, and I think my lungs exploded. Lucas and Ichiro turned their heads towards pale face the club advisor, and both said at the same time, we are fine, though. That's not fine you both are dying. The club advisor shouted anxiously every time he heard their injuries, he felt like his heart had stopped beating. But then Lucas and Ichiro couldn't keep a straight face anymore and started laughing. PPFFTT. Most of the students heard the conversation and couldn't keep a straight face either. Why are you laughing? The club advisor was confused, they are dying, and yet they are laughing. Ichiro wiped the tears from his eyes, it was only a joke we both are fine. Lucas nodded and patted the club advisor's shoulder, you are so innocent, club advisor Chan. The club advisor's eyebrows twitched. Ichiro and Lucas started walking towards the changing room with laughter. Are you going to talk about it? Lucas asked. Ichiro and Lucas were currently putting on their school uniforms after their sparring match. Talk about what? Ichiro asked, even though he knew what he meant. Bam Lucas closed the locker door with a slam. He turned his head towards Ichiro, that your bullying incident, why did you never tell me about it? Ichiro sighed and closed the locker door, that it wasn't any importance. Lucas's face turned angry, that what do you mean not any importance? The principal told me something that the news didn't. It wasn't just an ordinary bullying incident it was much worse. Ichiro put on his blue-colored necktie, that it is in the past. That if it was in the past, why did you go there to get your revenge? Ichiro turned his head and looked Lucas straight in the eye, that it is in the past because I got my revenge. I don't want to talk about them anymore. Lucas gritted his teeth, that you should have told me I could have helped you get your revenge. Ichiro shook his head and started walking towards the exit of the changing room, that it was my revenge, not yours. Besides, I didn't really need help. Lucas scratched his head and started following behind Ichiro. The martial arts club building was still full of students and teachers. Once Ichiro and Lucas left the changing room, they received applause. Ichiro waved his hand and left the martial arts club building. Lucas managed to get through the crowd as well and started following him. They entered the school building shortly afterward. That I will go get my nose fixed, Lucas said, and took his shoes from the shoe locker. Ichiro nodded, dot see you. Lucas waved his hand and started running towards the infirmary. Ichiro went towards his classroom to wait for the next to start. The school day went by fast. Ring the last school bell rang, signaling the end of the school day. Ichiro sighed and stood up to leave. But then he was stopped by Mark and Jake. Ichiro. Mark said. Ichiro raised an eyebrow, dot yeah, dot are you going to play Night's End today? Mark asked with hope Jake was also curious. But Ichiro shook his head, that I don't have time today. Dot ah, uh, shame, Mark said sadly. 
Ichiro started walking towards the exit of the classroom and said, that we can play sometime next week. All right. Ichiro heard a loud shout behind him, but he had already exited the classroom. He walked through the corridors under intense gazes of nearby students, but he managed to reach the shoe lockers unhindered. Shortly afterward, he exited the school premises through the gate and started strolling in the streets. What are you planning, host? I have no idea what you are talking about. Ichiro said, you aren't walking towards your home. Detour. The system stayed silent it doesn't matter where Ichiro is going it can't mean anything good. They both stayed silent during his walk, but then system had a slight hunch about where he was going after they reached a particular street. Underworld Street. Yep. Ichiro started walking deeper the people he saw in the streets were all filled with tattoos and piercings. This is the dark area of Irio and the street where Underworld rules. Ichiro's figure attracted a lot of attention, especially his school outfit. Kakik. He heard a peal of creepy sounding laughter behind him he turned his head and saw a man holding a knife. Are you lost, kiddo? The man grinned viciously. Iron Lance Fingerless Steel. Ichiro's hand turned into a blur and stabbed the man's neck with his joints of fingers. Dot ugh. The man grabbed his neck and started rolling on the ground painfully. Ichiro ignored him and kept walking now, no one dared to have any ill intention towards him. The strength he showed is high, even in the underworld scene, and he is still a kid. Why are you here, Ichiro? To buy some time. Ichiro said in his mind and stopped walking he turned his head and saw an expensive looking restaurant filled with people of business suits, and some looked like a common thug, but richer version. We are here. Ichiro took a deep breath, system, do me a favor and tell me who is the strongest one inside. All right. Ichiro opened the door to the restaurant and walked inside. His figure instantly caught everyone's attention they stopped eating and looked at him with questioning gazes. There were about 30 people inside. He saw a big table in the middle of the restaurant with thug-looking individuals. System. That man with a mohawk. He is peak martial captain. Ichiro looked at the man with a mohawk, he had red hair styled as a mohawk, and half of his face was tattooed. He was wearing an expensive-looking tuxedo with a gold watch on his left wrist. Ichiro began his walk to the table. Hey, brat. Where do you think you are going? But then a man who looked like a thug appeared in front of him. Ichiro grabbed his shoulder and twisted. Ironic edge gravity control. The thug fell down on his knees. Stay down like a good doggy, Ichiro said coldly. The thug had sweat drops trickling down his cheek. The man with a mohawk was impressed he waved his hand to stop anyone from approaching Ichiro. Most people inside the building already held their guns, but seeing the man with mohawk wave his hand, they decided to back off. Ichiro reached the table and sat down, facing the man with the mohawk. Quite bold of you. The man with mohawk said with a slight grin. Ichiro didn't change his expression. Why are you here, that you guys ordered an assassination? The man with mohawk nodded, dot and. Was he your friend, and you are here to take your revenge for his death? Ichiro shook his head, dot no, I was the target. The man with a mohawk was stunned for a moment, until he burst into laughter, dot ha ha ha. Now that I think about it, you do look familiar. How did you survive, and why did you come here, that I killed him, Ichiro said with a cold expression. The man with mohawk's face turned serious, dot that is not a good joke. Ichiro shrugged and waved his hand. Suddenly a corpse appeared on the table, that does he look familiar, dot how? The man with mohawk shouted in surprise, he didn't know how the corpse appeared suddenly, and he didn't know how that kid in front of him managed to kill a man who was even stronger than him. Ichiro sat calmly. Calm nature activated. Since he entered the building, his calm nature has been calming him down. Ichiro showed the dead body because the underworld lost precious asset, and now they will want Ichiro to repay it. It gives him enough time to reach Martial Captain, and once he reaches that level, it will be much easier for him to fight the underworld. He can't completely defeat Underworld, they still have Martial Commander, but Ichiro is confident enough to defeat that thug in front of him. The biggest weakness of the man with a mohawk was his lack of stamina. He has experienced riches beyond his wildest dreams. He stopped training and focused on the worldly pleasures instead. Even though he is peak martial king, 
Ichiro is confident enough to defeat him once he reaches Martial Captain, especially when he unlocks his iron style completely. He doesn't know how strong the Martial Commander is, or is he like the thug in front of him. The man with mohawk had sweat drops appearing on his forehead, his throat became parched. The people in the restaurant got serious, the tightened their hold on their guns. The man with mohawk turned his gaze towards Ichiro, that boss won't be happy for killing a member of League of Assassins. Ichiro nodded, that that's why I am here. I have a proposition for you. The man with mohawk raised an eyebrow, that I am listening. Tell your boss, that I don't know why you are trying to assassinate me, but I am willing to repay for the loss of one of your men. That it isn't that cheap, I doubt you have the money. Ichiro nodded, that I don't, but I can repay another way, like doing emissions, etc. The man with mohawk rubbed his chin. It doesn't sound too bad to have a golden child of Irio on their side as their personal slave. That I will talk with boss. Ichiro nodded and stood up, that I will be waiting for the answer. He turned around and started walking towards exit of the restaurant. The man with mohawk grinned viciously, brat, you have no idea the trouble you are getting in. Ichiro exited the restaurant and saw the grin with the corner of his eyes. Morons. He shook his head. He isn't the one who is getting in trouble, they are. Longer he spends time on the so-called missions, more time he has to get stronger. It won't be long until Underworld is wiped out. Soon they will wish that they didn't accept my offer. Ichiro is certain that the boss of Irio's Underworld will accept the offer. They lost a valuable assassin, and that will cost them a lot of money. They need to repay the League of Assassins somehow, and Ichiro's proposition was perfect for that. I am home, Ichiro said after closing the door to his house. He didn't hear any noises coming from the house, weird, he thought and took his shoes off. He started walking towards living room, and there he saw his parents sitting on the couch, looking at him. Great, Ichiro scratched his neck and walked towards refrigerator. He took the plastic bag filled with honey cookies and put it on the kitchen desk. He took one of the cookies and started crunching. Crunch Azumi and Eiji were sitting on the couch, a few meters away from him. Azumi finally opened her mouth, did you plan ever telling us? Gulpi Chiro swallowed the cookie and said, no. Why? Azumi shouted, her face was saddened that their son didn't seem to trust them. It wouldn't have changed anything. You guys were already having hard time my problems were irrelevant. Ichiro said. He wanted to say about his bullying many times last year, but his father got fired from his job and was very anxious about finding new employment. Also, his mother's shop didn't earn much last year, but it has become better this year. Telling them about his bullying incident would have stressed them more. Before Azumi and Eiji decided to talk more, Ichiro opened his mouth, besides, it's all in the past. My bullies got what they deserved and worse. You guys would probably need to prepare for the court since I literally crippled Damien, and I doubt his parents are happy. He didn't let them speak anymore and took the bag of cookies and sprinted to his room. Azumi and Eiji stayed alone in the living room, alone with their thoughts. Phew. Ichiro took a deep breath after reaching his room. They care about you. I know. Ichiro was more than aware, his and Ayako's parents have always done everything in their power to give them a happy childhood. He will repay them and much more. He will give them the life they deserve. Ichiro sat down on his bed and started eating the cookies. Crunch, these are indeed delicious. Ichiro couldn't stop eating the cookies, and soon the bag was empty. He put the plastic bag on the desk and took his phone from the pocket. Ding ding familiar dinging noises from the phone were heard. He opened the Worldy Talk app, Night Butterfly, hey, busy. King of Games, yo, not anymore, sup. Night Butterfly, doing fine I guess, a little bit cold here, but otherwise fine, what about you? King of Games, fine, did a slight sparring match today, the only interesting thing that happened today. Night Butterfly, with who? King of Games, with a guy called Lucas, big muscular guy, slightly dumb. Ichiro typed in a chat, not knowing the shock that it caused for Azura after he told the name of Lucas. King of Games, with a guy called Lucas, big muscular guy, slightly dumb. Azura saw the message and widened her pretty eyes in shock. She quickly exited the Worldy Talk app and went straight to Irio's website. The website showed the picture of two golden childs and one of their name was Lucas. 
Is he really? Azra murmured, but then she saw a new article appearing. Sparring match of two golden childs. She clicked the article and saw a long line of texts, but instead of reading that, she clicked the video. The video was slightly amateurish, recorded from the crowd, but it still showed the incredible battle. After the video ended, Azra was sure that Ichiro was king of games. She went back to the website and clicked Ichiro's handsome figure. The picture of Ichiro was shown perfectly his jet black hair with his black eyes gave him a charming feeling. His skin didn't have the same skin problems as some young men at his age could have instead, it was untouched, smooth like perfect skin. The picture was him in school uniform, but even the school uniform could hardly hide his athletic figure. She pressed the download button, with a slight blush, she put his picture as wallpaper. It doesn't mean anything only curious yes, curious, Ichiro waited for message, but it didn't appear. He shrugged and went to check other messages. SLYCH3 Amelia Forever, I heard about the bullying incident, you alright? King of Games, I am fine, it's in the past. Ichiro wrote and went back to the chat with Night Butterfly after a new message appeared. Night Butterfly, I see, you. Must be busy, I will stop bothering you. Before Ichiro could reply, Night Butterfly was already offline. He scratched the back of his head, she wasn't bothering, though. King of Games, you aren't bother, it was a nice talk, see you. After that, he closed the phone. He lied down on the bed, staring at the ceiling in silence. I wasn't this lazy in my previous life I should be training. Ichiro stood up and quickly took the school uniform off. He took the familiar black t-shirt and white sweatpants. He exited his room and sprinted towards the door. He took the shoes and shouted, I am going to train, I won't be back before night. After those words, he opened the door and started jogging. A wind instantly blew his hair. His hair flows gently in the air. My hair seems to get longer, Ichiro murmured while his bangs were annoyingly covering his vision. He didn't start running on his regular route instead, he left the streets and ran towards the nearby forest. Few Ichiro ran for another half an hour until his stamina was finally spent he was catching his breath while sitting on a tree trunk in the middle of the forest. The area around him was quite spacious, a perfect place for training. Ichiro nodded, this will do. He opened his inventory and took a pair of swords. He swung the swords gently, not too fast, but not too slow either. His speed gradually started getting faster and faster until the blades moved like they were blurs. He slashed the swords towards the nearby trees and cut them in half effortlessly. Nice. Ichiro smiled. The swords are his secret weapon. Since he can summon the swords from his inventory, it could be a perfect hidden weapon. He is planning to learn the swords properly before going against Underworld. Ironic Edge Sword Mayhem Ichiro started moving the swords like they were possessed, but the swords moved in perfect rhythm. He wasn't aimlessly swinging instead, every swing had meaning. He rarely has used iron-style techniques with weapons, but it doesn't mean he doesn't know how. Ironic Edge Sword Fatality Next, the sword strikes became gentle, like they were flowing in water. Swords moved slowly, but if you were fighting against him, you would see that he had no weak spots. Ichiro stopped swinging the swords and nodded, Rusty, but we will get there. Wait, Ichiro had a sudden thought, since I am using a weapon and not my body I should be able to use a few of my iron style techniques in theory. Ichiro decided to try, he cracked his neck. This could either work or end up painfully. He put his left sword forward and his right sword above his head. Iron Dragon Sword Breath Ichiro moved his two swords in perfect synchrony. A burst of wind left the swords, which traveled straight towards the trees, blasting them to pieces. The attack didn't stop after a few trees. Instead, it kept traveling and increasing in speed. Until finally, the attack hit a mountain, but even the mountain started cracking apart. Arg! Ichiro cried out painfully and dropped his swords. He fell on his knees and held his hands painfully. Bad fucking idea! Ichiro gritted his teeth. 49,115 HP. He put his other hand forward and pressed the inventory, and took a healing potion. He swallowed the healing potion without hesitation. 99,115 HP. He fell down on his back he had sweat drops trickling down his cheek with slight pain left in the arms. 
Ichiro rubbed his painful arms, but at least most of the pain was gone. It doesn't make sense swords aren't part of my body it should have worked. Ichiro feels like he missed something. But it didn't come to his mind at the moment, I need to research better. There is something wrong with my iron style. Ichiro came to a conclusion he stood up and grabbed the swords. He was about to put them back to the inventory, but then he heard a sound not far from him. Crack he turned his head in panic and pointed his swords towards the forest. Come out. He shouted. Nice senses. He heard a woman's voice. From the forest, a mature-looking beautiful woman with long jet black hair and violet eyes walked. She had a charming face, with perfect smooth-looking skin. Her delicate eyes and curved nose gave her a feeling of elegancy and beauty. Ichiro was still pointing his swords at her, who are you? System, did he see me using the healing potion? No one can see the items of System, except you. Ichiro was relieved. The woman looked hurt, you don't remember me? Ichiro raised an eyebrow and shook his head, I am still a virgin, so don't even expect me to believe that you are pregnant with my child. The woman chuckled, her laughter was the perfect melody. She shook her hand, no, I was commentator Ramu. My name is Quella. Ichiro now remember her. He saw her once, and she looked very familiar. The memories came back to him. He stopped pointing the swords at her and asked, what do you want Miss Quella? Quella smiled beautifully, I want to train you. Eh, that train me? Why? Ichiro was slightly untrustful. Quella crossed her arms, that it seems fun. How does training someone seem fun to you? Ichiro doesn't understand what is going on in Quella's mind. Give me one of the swords. Quella suddenly said. Ichiro narrowed his eyes, that and if I don't. Quella smirked, that I will beat you up. Ichiro snorted and pointed the two swords at her, dot well, come on th. Before he could finish his sentence, he was already sent flying. Dot ug. Air left Ichiro's lungs he flew to a nearby tree, splitting it in half. Quella was still standing with her hands crossed with an innocent smile on her face she crouched and grabbed the dropped sword. Ichiro wiped the blood from his lips and stood up he was surrounded by broken trees. His body was aching, but not as much as expected. It obviously meant that Quella went easy on him. Damn. He looked at his hands and noticed one of the swords missing he turned his gaze towards Quella and saw her standing innocently while holding a sword. Sweat drops started appearing on his forehead, strong, that thanks for giving me the sword. Quella smiled and said, that do you want to see how much you have yet to learn? Ichiro wiped the sweat off his forehead. He put his sword forwards. Quella put her sword in front of her with a calm smile, she waited. Weakness detection eye. Blue rims appeared in Ichiro's eyes he used the weakness detection eye. But. Ichiro grimaced. Zero weak spots. How is that possible? Ichiro stopped using the weakness detection eye. Are you attacking or not? Quella asked with a smile, but then she looked with a mocking look at him, dot or are you afraid of hurting a weak and frail woman like me? Ichiro didn't change his expression. Calm nature activated. Ichiro was very close to start swearing, but calm nature activated at the right time. Impressive. Quella thought with a smile. Ichiro took a deep breath and started moving with calm steps, his eyes locked in Quella's feet. Not because he has a foot fetish, instead it is the best way to know when she is going to make her move. Ichiro will know if she is going to attack if her leg muscles twitch. But Quella has no intention to attack. Ichiro noticed that as well she was only standing and waiting. Fine. Let's attack then. Ichiro took a more firm hold on the sword. Swish he slashed with the sword towards Quella's shoulder. Whoosh but the sword missed by an inch Ichiro narrowed his eyes, the blade was almost in contact with the shoulder, but it missed only by an inch. Did I make a mistake? Ichiro tried again and slashed with his sword, this time aiming at Quella's delicate looking arm. But the sword again brushed past her skin. Quella hasn't moved at all, but Ichiro's sword strikes keep missing. Ichiro put his sword into a thrusting stance. Iron Lance Swordless Steel. He thrusted his sword forwards, towards Quella's torso, this time, it can't miss. But. Ichiro's arm is stretched as much as he can, but the sword tip is only touching her clothes, not her skin. 
sweat drops trickled down on his cheeks he knew that the attack should have hit. That is that all? You didn't even hit me. Quella smirked. Ichiro scoffed he took his sword back and asked, that what did you do? Quella tilted her head cutely, that I have no idea what you mean. That my attacks didn't hit you why? Quella smiled and took a step forwards, that it is time for me to attack. Ichiro took a step backward with instinct. He can feel a threat coming from Quella, which he has never felt before. Quella's innocent look changed to furious empress. She slashed her sword and aimed at Ichiro's shoulder. He widened his eyes and tried to put his sword in the way, but Quella's sword tip was already touching his shoulder. Ichiro felt the cold blade on his shoulder, but it didn't go deeper into the skin. Quella then swung again, this time towards Ichiro's arm. Ichiro slashed his sword, but Quella managed to hit Ichiro's arm before his sword was close enough. He gulped heavily, sweat drops appearing on his forehead he knew what Quella was doing. Quella jumped backward a few meters and put her sword into a thrusting stance. Iron Lance Swordless Steel Quella version. Ichiro only saw a wind appearing, and then a cold blade touching his torso. How? Ichiro asked with a pale face she learned his techniques only by watching. Quella took her sword back and said, Dot genius. Genius? Ichiro quirked his eyebrow. Quella nodded, that I have never touched a sword before this was my first time actually. Ichiro went even paler, what kind of monster is she? Quella swung the sword around her like a master, that I wonder where the geniuses come from. Is it in genes? Or are we blessed by heavens, that why are you saying me this? Ichiro asked with slight anger. Quella pointed the sword at him, that you aren't genius. Ichiro gritted his teeth, that I am well aware, that let me finish. Quella smiled, that you aren't genius you are a person who can surpass geniuses with hard work. Ichiro looked at her. Dot a person who can surpass geniuses by only hard work is even rarer than geniuses. What about the geniuses who are also hardworking? Ichiro asked an important question. Quella smiled, dot geniuses have limits too it only comes faster if they work harder. And once they reach the limit, you will be the one who surpasses them. Dot that's why I want to train you, at least for a few months. Quella was standing innocently, waiting for Ichiro to give his answer. She will be staying in Irio for a few months until Mars finally finds her. She still has to reach Marshall King somehow. She is training Ichiro because otherwise, she would stay in her hotel, doing nothing. Training him is an excellent distraction and can be quite fun as well. Ichiro was silent he didn't have anything to lose. He doesn't know the exact strength of the woman in front of him, but it must be above Marshall Commander, not quite in the level of Marshall King, but close. Ichiro decided and bowed, dot please teach me, teacher. Quella shook her finger, dot call me mistress. Ichiro rolled his eyes, dot please teach me, mistress. Quella nodded proudly, dot stand up, my disciple. Ichiro stood straight. You have problems with underworld, right? Quella said with a knowing smile. How did you know about that, that I know a lot of things? Ichiro sighed, dot so what? I can handle them. Quella smiled and nodded, that I wasn't planning to help you I am planning to make you strong enough in two months to surpass them. Ichiro rolled his eyes, that mistress, you said you haven't touched sword before, how can you even teach me, that I have seen my father and grandfather teaching the younger generation, I learned their every teaching method. That that's cheating. Quella smirked, that maybe. Ichiro looked at the sky, which was becoming darker, that should we start training tomorrow. But Quella shook her head, dot nope. Ichiro quirked an eyebrow, that I have school tomorrow. Dot don't care. Quella grinned. Dot my parents will be worried. Dot don't care. Dot my sister will miss me. Dot I doubt that, but I don't care. Dot I need to feed my cat. Your parents can do that, and don't care. Dot I need to do my homework. You look stupid, I bet you don't do homework, so I don't care. That I am a B-level student though. Probably gave the level out of pity. Quella then stomped the ground, which caused a huge crack to appear. Enough, start running, dot running. Ichiro thought he misheard. Quella sadistically grinned, dot yes. Run, and if I catch you, I will slice you. She showed the shiny sword. Ichiro gulped. Start running. 
Quella shouted and slashed with the sword. Ichiro crouched and managed to dodge the blade. Mistress, this is bullying. Ichiro shouted and started running towards the forest, filled with trees. This is for your own good dear disciple. With a sadistic grin, Quella started running after Ichiro. The forest for the next few hours was full of screams of despair and laughter of maniac-sounding witch. People who heard the screams came up with the theory that witch lived there. A witch who haunts young boys. It will be a story which will be told for every kid even thirty years later. The forest nickname will be changed a year later to Screaming Boy Forest, and it will be a place of countless rumors. Every kid who sees the forest will be scared to go near them, while teenagers find that place interesting and visit that forest for the test of courage. But Ichiro wasn't aware of people hearing his womanly screams. KYAA. Ichiro ran with despair on his face. Swash he felt something cold brushing past him he shakily turned his head and saw a part of his hair being cut off. Aya. He ran even faster. Ha ha ha. Quella ran after him with a sadistic grin. Ichiro entered his house with a dirty-looking outfit. It was filled with dirt and leaves. That gorilla woman. Ichiro paled when he thought about her he took his shoes off and entered the living room. It was already 11. 45 p.m., her parents and Ayako were sleeping already. He opened the refrigerator and saw a plate filled with food from dinner he took it and put it on the microwave. While his food was heating up, he thought about the training. Ichiro had another term that was more fitting, torture. He touched the back of his head and felt his hair shortening by a great deal. Ding ding the microwave ending sound came, which sounded like machine gun fire at night. Ichiro quickly opened the microwave before waking up the entire house, why can't they make silent microwaves? He took the plate and sat down on the table. He emptied the plate quickly and put it on the washing machine. He was about to go to his room to get sleep, but then with the corner of his eyes, he saw a suspicious individual standing outside of his house. Ichiro narrowed his eyes he took his shoes and opened the door. Ichiro locked his eyes with the suspicious individual. Kuragami Ichiro, correct? The man said. Ichiro nodded, yes, are you the Santa Claus? The man didn't change his expression he took an envelope from his pocket and threw it towards Ichiro. Ichiro grabbed it effortlessly, what is tea, he was about to ask, but when he looked towards the suspicious individual, he didn't see him anymore. Ichiro narrowed his eyes and looked towards left and right, but the figure completely disappeared. Fucking weirdos. He shook his head and entered the house he took his shoes off and walked towards the couch. He sat down and opened the envelope. Dear Kuragami Ichiro. I am more than impressed seeing you survive the assassin sent by us, but that cost a lot of money. The League of Assassins is already aware of one of their men dying, and they need a repayment. I had discussed your proposition with my colleagues and the Emperor, and they agreed, but since we have only a month before we need to repay, you need to do your first mission instantly. The League of Assassins sent a mission, and you need to complete it within a week. Elimination Order Target, the boss of Yakuza Martial Rank, Low Martial Captain City, Irio Mission Importance, Brank Mission Difficulty, Crank Time Limit, One Week Boss of Yakuza Why Ichiro touched his chin, usually, Yakuza is part of Underworld, but it seems that Irio is different than Ramu in terms of alliances. But low Marshal Captain, he scratched his head out of frustration. The mission time limit one week, he has time to do his quest first, but then he has to find a Yakuza hideout somehow in a few days. Ichiro sighed, I guess I need to ask for mistress help she can find their hideout. He doesn't like to ask her for help, but he has no other choice. He ripped the paper into thousand pieces and put it on the trash can. Ichiro grabbed his phone and sent a text message to Quella she gave her phone number in the forest. King of Games, I got elimination order from the underworld, they told me to kill the boss of Yakuza in one week, but finding their hideout will take me at least a month, can you find them? After he sent the message, he closed the phone and left for his room. He lied down on his bed and instantly fell asleep. Boss. The man with mohawk bowed deeply. He looked respectfully at the man in front of him he had short black hair and sharp brown eyes. He had an above-average face with sharp eyebrows and a sharp jawline, with a small beard growing. 
He was sitting in an office with a man with a mohawk standing a few meters away from his desk. Raoul. The man said towards the man with a mohawk. The man with a mohawk, also known as Raoul, bowed, yes, boss. The man in front of Raoul was Irio's underworld boss Lurin. Is it delivered? Lurin asked. Raoul nodded, Ichiro received it. Lurin nodded and smiled, young and foolish. Raoul smirked, writing wrong martial rank on the letter was a good touch, boss. Lurin laughed, yeah, not sure how he killed the previous assassin we sent, probably with dumb luck. But every information I gathered said that Ichiro is only half-step martial captain the spar proved it. Boss of Yakuza is peak martial captain, he won't survive with luck again. Raoul smirked, now you don't need to pay for another assassin you can let the foolish boss of Yakuza do the work for free. Lurin nodded but then turned serious, now we need to deal with League of Assassins. Raoul's face turned solemn, is the situation bad? Arkentham isn't happy. He is being grilled by the 30th death of League of Assassin. Raoul grimaced. League of Assassins has 50 extremely strong assassins who work everywhere in the world. Their rank is not determined by their strength instead, it is determined by how many successful assassinations they have. But of course, the assassins in the death rankings are powerful individuals. What does he want? Raoul asked. Lurin sighed, death of Kuragami Ichiro isn't enough they want Arkentham to do one mission for them. That's outrageous. It was only peak martial captain they have dozens of them. Raoul shouted angrily. They can be unreasonable because they are stronger than us, simple as that. All this because of that brat. Raoul gritted his teeth hatefully. Lurin shook his head, it is because that assassin was incapable of doing his job. But Arkentham is now angrier than ever, even if Ichiro somehow manages to escape the Yakuza hideout, he can't escape from him. Raoul nodded. Lurin sighed and looked out of the window, shame, I was rooting for him in the tournament, but foolishness has its consequences. Ding ding, wake up, host. Ichiro stood up in a hurry he looked around the room with killing intent. The killing intent left his eyes, and his black eyes turned normal, fucking system. He scratched his head and took his phone, he saw that he had received a message last night. Quella Dragon Queen, hmm fine, I will help my dear disciple this time, but we will double our training free. Ichiro went pale he closed the phone with shaky hands. With shaky legs, he started doing his morning routine. Went for a few hour run and returned at 7 a.m. He saw his parents watching TV, which broadcasted morning news. What are you watching? Ichiro asked and walked towards the coach. Watch. Eiji pointed towards the TV. Ichiro saw a news anchor speaking with a solemn face. Hello, citizens. Last night, approximately at 3 a.m., Jensa's only martial emperor Arkentham attacked the city of Hiena. After Arkentham left the place, around 5 a.m., there weren't any survivors found. I repeat, Hiena has been completely wiped out by martial emperor Arkentham. Azumi and Eiji looked shocked. Ichiro grimaced. A video's clips were shown. A man was floating midair with each wave of his hand, a portion of city was destroyed. The video clips were muted otherwise, there would be a lot of screaming. Ichiro stopped looking at the TV he ran towards his room. He sat down on his bed with sweat drops appearing on his forehead. His body trembled he remembered the destruction that one man had caused. Why I have a bad feeling about this Ichiro can't help but think that his destiny is linked with Arkentham. The system decided to stay silent. But then suddenly Ichiro's eyes turned white. He started seeing a vision. A black-haired man in his twenties was facing a tall red-haired man who grinned viciously. Ichiro I admit you grew faster than I anticipated. Arkentham grinned. Ichiro stayed silent, his black eyes glaring at Arkentham. Don't be like this you became stronger because of my help you should be grateful. Grateful for what? Almost dying every single day. Arkentham grinned, fight for death made you stronger, besides it wasn't all bad, right? You are now so-called heavenly child, or some bullshit the media spouts. Ichiro gritted his teeth the aura around him instantly changed. Arkentham grinned, even though my age of deterioration has begun, I am still emperor. Ichiro's black eyes suddenly turned gray, doesn't matter. Now that I am martial king, you are no match for me. 
Let's see. Arkentham shouted and started floating from the ground. He put his hands forwards. Wind tempest. A wind started gathering on his hands. Arkentham grinned and released the wind pressure, which became countless invisible wind slashes. Ichiro's body started transforming, his 190 centimeters long human body started turning bigger and bigger. His flesh started disappearing, a silver-colored metal replacing it, his face also started transforming, his nose became pointy and sharper. His gray eyes shined brightly. His body has already become 50 meters in height with huge wings, metal scales covering his body, and a long sharp tail. He has four sharp metal legs with a long neck. His face became monstrous with a serrated jaw with rows of sharp teeth. Ichiro opened his monstrous mouth and showed his sharp teeth, but then suddenly, his mouth started glowing. Ichiro glared at Arkentham. Metal Dragon Death Breath. Roar. A beam of silver-colored energy left Ichiro's reptile-like mouth. Arkentham looked at the incoming point with a calm smile. He waved both of his hands which caused a wind to appear in front of him. Wind severing. Crack crash the battlefield next few hours was filled with painful roars of dragon and painful grunts of a man, dot ha. Ichiro's face started changing colors until it was completely white. Thud he fell down to the ground out of exhaustion. His pure white eyes started turning colors until his familiar black eyes returned. Ichiro's hands were still trembling like he was freezing, dot ss system. Ichiro's voice shook. Host, calm down. Calm nature activated. Ichiro's body slowly stopped trembling, some colors returned to his pale face. His body became calm once again, dot system. What was that? The future. He sat down on the ground, dot that was Arkentham. Wasn't it? Affirmative, dot dying almost every day. I wonder what I meant by that. Ichiro murmured he suddenly had an awful feeling from those words. Like I told you a while back. Your destiny is linked with Underworld, in more ways than you can imagine, dot can the future be changed? I wouldn't suggest it. I only know the pieces of the future, changing it. Can have dire consequences, and you might not be able to change it even. Ichiro sighed, dot why did Underworld decide to assassinate me? What did I do, dot Ichiro, time to go to school. He heard Azumi's voice from downstairs, dot ha. Ichiro took a deep breath, took his school uniform from the closet, and put it on. He went downstairs and left the house with Ayako. Days went by fast. In the morning, Ichiro does his usual training routine. After training routine, he goes to school and spends time in martial arts club or with Lucas. But after school, the most terrifying part of the day begins. Ichiro even wants to stay in school, so he doesn't need to go there, but teachers got afraid that he might be sick and decided to call Irio's best doctors to check. Their usual training spot is the Screaming Boy Forest at this time, it is still an unnamed forest. The familiar sound of girly screams from boy and maniac sounding laughter from which was heard in the forest. Even though Ichiro hates this training with passion, it still had surprising results. Only in four days, he gained two agility points, making it 93, only seven away from the max limit. Ichiro was never pushed this much past his limits he knows that if he stops running or dodging, the sword will hit him, it won't kill him, but it will be a very painful experience. Quella sometimes even speeds up, which made it impossible for Ichiro to keep running away that's why he had to use the trees for his advantage, which was another reason his agility rose by two points. They didn't train techniques, only running. Every day they ran. From the start of the training, till midnight. Luckily Ichiro's stamina was at max otherwise, he wouldn't have the stamina to keep running. Ichiro and Quella were currently standing at the entrance of the forest. The sky was dark, the moon shining at the sky, and stars shone brilliantly. Tomorrow is the day of the martial rank test that are you confident, my dear disciple? Quella asked with a slight smirk, they finished their training not long ago, but she isn't even exhausted, even though they ran for 89 hours, that I am. Ichiro simply replied, tomorrow is a very important day. Tomorrow might be the day when. He unlocks his treasured iron style. Quella nodded, that I can feel that you are very close to Marshal Captain. But. Ichiro turned his gaze towards her. She looked severe, dot in Jensa, it might be amazing to reach Marshal Captain at the age of 15. 
but some geniuses have reached Marshal Captain at the age of thirteen. Ichiro widened his eyes, that how is that possible? Does that mean they reached Marshal Commander before the age of growth begins? Quella nodded, that it is hard to reach Marshal Commander before the age of growth but not impossible, that those geniuses are mostly in Mark, but there are some in Arya, so-called hidden geniuses. A kid called Ether Nightside reached half-step Marshal Captain at the age of thirteen, he is now fourteen, and I think he has reached Marshal Captain by now. Ichiro nodded thoughtfully, that not all geniuses compete in the tournaments. They are hidden aces of different families, but Underworld is different. A lot of big families compete there, including their children, that why would they risk their lives? Ichiro asked he didn't understand the logic, what is the difference between underworld tournaments and ordinary tournaments, what do they gain there that is worth risking their lives for, dot underworld tournaments are only place where you can win a thing called power limit remover, Quella said. Ichiro widened his eyes, dot power limit remover. Quella nodded, dot it doesn't remove the power limit, but it makes it easier to remove it. If you spend like three years to break the limiter by yourself, you can do that in three months with power limit remover. That there must be some side effects, right? Quella smiled, that that is the thing. There is none. But then Ichiro remembered one thing, that I can feel that you are close to Marshal King, why don't you go and win it? Dot ha ha ha. Quella burst into laughter. Ichiro looked strangely at her. Quella wiped tears off her eyes, that I wish I could, but I would definitely die there. That underworld tournaments aren't a joke. Dying is an everyday occurrence there, that you would die. But you are. Before Ichiro could finish his sentence, Quella said, that strong, right? Ichiro nodded the woman in front of him is dozens times stronger than him, and she is as strong as he was in his previous life. Quella sighed, that I have seen a man who can split the sky in half. My strength is nothing compared to that. Ichiro went silent he remembers the scene of Arkentham destroying the hyena with the wave of his hand. That is the power of gods. In his previous life, he used to be called as a martial god. That rumor started after Ichiro was doing his first mission for the government. Mission was simple enough he needed to get rid of a terrorist organization. Ichiro thought that it was one day job, but when he entered their hidden base. It wasn't a dot small. Terrorist organization like the government claimed. It was huge, with over 5,000,000 members. It was the biggest terrorist organization in Asia, and he had to take care of them all by himself. But what did Ichiro do? Well. He decided to take care of them all by himself. It was the darkest night for the terrorist organization. Once night came, Ichiro snuck in the base and sneakily took care of all the guards. Now the thousands of members were happily sleeping, without knowing that the Grim Reaper was on their doorsteps. No one knew what happened that night, not even government. But. There was total of three survivors that night. Only three people survived from the five thousand. They all said one thing, dot God. Ichiro's plan didn't go very smoothly one of the terrorists noticed something was wrong and decided to press the alarm. But Ichiro didn't abandon his plan instead, he attacked straight on. In front of him, a heavily armed terrorist group was standing. Hundreds of guns were pointing at Ichiro's lonely figure, dot surrender. But Ichiro only smirked and disappeared from his spot. The hundreds of terrorists looked around them but didn't see even a shadow of him. They didn't notice that a lonely figure was on top of them in the air. Ichiro smirked and landed in the middle of the terrorist group. The group went into turmoil. Ichiro simply slashed with his hand. Ironical end. The dozens of terrorists around him suddenly started coughing mouthfuls of blood, but then their heads were separated from their bodies. Bloody rain appeared in the sky, soaking every terrorist in the group. Everyone. Except Ichiro. Ichiro's outfit was clean without any dirt or blood in them the terrorists instantly panicked their group was not cooperating, they started shooting everywhere, even killing their own men. Ichiro moved in the shadows, killing everyone on sight, his face was pure calm, without any sign of remorse. Three men who managed to saw the scene and managed to somehow escape, never forgot the sight. The terrorist organization who terrorized Asia for decades, disappeared in single night. Everyone heard about the sudden massacre, but no one knew who was responsible. But then Japan's government made announcement that they were the ones who was responsible. The world was shocked, the citizens of Japan were proud. 
It was huge achievement to take down the biggest terrorist organization, and that achievement was now part of history, which will be told to every generation. Every generation after this will feel proud and admiration, because it was their country who took down the famous terrorist organization. But no one knew. That all this was done by single man. Not even the Japan's government, they thought that Ichiro had help, because not even their wildest dreams they would thought that single man took down a group of 5,000 men. But. This was done by a single man. Kuragami Ichiro Martial God. The day of the martial rank test. Ichiro was currently eating his breakfast with his family. Today is a big day, and his family decided to take the day off from work and come to watch. But apparently, it isn't only his family who is going there to watch. School decided to have a sudden school trip, and the location is the martial rank test hall. Of course, the news about Ichiro's martial rank test has spread everywhere in Irio, and news stations plan to broadcast it as well. Usually, the martial rank test isn't a public event, but since Ichiro's fame, they made an exception. Did you eat enough, Azumi inquired. Ichiro sighed and nodded, yes, mom. His parents have been anxious whole morning they are even more nervous than he is. Even after hearing Ichiro's answer, Azumi was still anxious. She bit her nails while looking around the house. Her heart was beating rapidly, nervousness crippling her. Eiji looked at the watch on his wrist, time to go. Azumi with a trembling body stood up she took the plates and put them on the washing machine. Mom, you alright? Ichiro raised an eyebrow and asked. Why wise? Azumi's voice shook. Why are you so nervous? Ichiro asked strangely, even he isn't this nervous, and he is the one fighting. Be because you are fighting a mutated beast. It is dangerous. Ichiro rolled his eyes, it is very safe. He stood up and hugged his mother, I will be fine. Azumi sighed and nodded. Let's go we need to be there in half an hour, Eiji with anxiousness said, even he was nervous. He is nervous about being late, he is nervous about the fight, he is even worried about not finding a parking spot. Azumi grabbed Ayako's hand and left the house. Eiji left after them. Ichiro left the house last he locked the door and closed it. They entered Eiji's black colored car it wasn't anything fancy, even slightly poor looking. But it was enough for them. While his parents and Ayako anxiously sat with rapidly beating hearts. Ichiro was calm, but he was also excited. Iron style I am not complete without you Ichiro thought in his mind he felt incomplete every time he fought. Every time he used iron lance or ironic edge. There was always something missing. Every time he fought, he knew that he could have done better if he had his iron style. Like against SLYCH. Ichiro would have won with iron style. His iron lance and ironic edge were the most important moves he needed they were simpler to use and more versatile. But they still lacked a lot. Ichiro could have chosen movement technique it could have given him more options, but what is the point if he doesn't have a good attack or defensive abilities? Ironic Edge is definitely his most used defensive ability, even in his past life, and Iron Lance was his most used attack to kill his opponents. He knew those moves already perfectly that's why they were the first ones Ichiro decided to choose. But those are only two moves, there is still Steel Smash, but it wasn't that great technique, even if Ichiro likes it. There are hundreds of techniques in Iron Style and today it might be the day when he unlocks them all. The car entered the area close to Martial Rank Test Hall, but the streets were filled with cars parked on the side of the road, and the parking lot was full. There were also dozens of buses where students were seen swarming around. Eiji decided to park the car at the side of the road, there is a few hundred walk, but it is manageable. They exited the car and started walking in the busy streets. Kaya. They heard loud screams coming from around them. Azumi and Eiji looked around them and saw people pointing at their son, Ichiro. Ayako timidly hid behind Ichiro while he was in the spotlight. The crowd stepped aside and let them walk unhindered. But there was still a lot of camera flashing around them. Once they entered the front of the martial rank test hall, the administrator noticed them. Make way! They started shouting. The crowd in the front of the hall was confused, but when they looked behind them, they saw Ichiro appearing with his family. They quickly stepped aside and let Ichiro walk towards the entrance with his family. Kuragami Ichiro correct? The administrator said with a nod. Ichiro nodded, that's me. 
The administrator nodded with a smile, come inside your family can come as well. The test will begin in 10 minutes. Ichiro nodded and followed behind him. The test was held in a spacious hall with stands around the hall, making it look like a miniature stadium. There was a massive gate at the end of the hall, and there weren't any seats near that gate. That must be where they keep the savage beast. Ichiro thought while gazing at the metal gate. Prepare yourself meanwhile, we will let others inside. The administrator bowed and left towards the entrance of the hall. Good luck, son, Azumi said with a nervous face. Eiji showed thumbs up, but his hand was trembling. Ayako has been silent since morning she is too nervous to talk. Ichiro nodded with a smile and walked towards the middle of the hall. He sat down on the floor and calmed himself. Calm nature activated. He kept his eyes closed, waiting for the test to begin. The hall started slowly filling with people, soon the stands were packed. Lucas and the rest of the martial arts club members were sitting on the front row. Azumi, Eiji, and Ayako sat down a little further away from them but still in very good seats. But suddenly, a group of three sat down next to them. Azumi turned her head and saw a woman with beautiful black hair and bright blue eyes she looked mature and gentle with a slim body. Next to her, a man with brown hair and blue eyes was sitting with a stoic face. Next to them, a cute-looking little girl was sitting nervously she had similar beautiful black hair as the woman next to her and similar blue eyes. Have I seen you before? Azumi opened her mouth and asked the woman. The beautiful woman turned her head and widened her eyes slightly, you are Ichiro's mother, aren't you? Azumi had a proud face, yes, who might you be? The woman smiled and pointed towards a muscular young man, I am the mother of the martial arts club captain, my name is Iris. The group of three were Lucas' parents and his little sister. Iris, Luke, and Leia. Oh! Azumi exclaimed. Iris opened her mouth, you must be nervous, seeing your son fight. Azumi wryly smiled, I am nervous, Eiji is as well, but it seems Ichiro isn't even slightly nervous. Iris put her hand on her mouth and chuckled, Lucas was very nervous as well, especially Leia, she turned her head towards her daughter and slyly smiled. Humph. Leia pouted with a slight blush. Luke clenched his fists, I hope the mutated beast will show you that you shouldn't touch my daughter. He glared at Ichiro's figure. Ayako turned her head and saw a girl the same age as her. Leia also turned her head towards the cute girl she smiled slightly. Ayako blushed out of embarrassment and nodded she quickly turned her head and looked at Ichiro instead. The hall was now full of people. The administrator took a radiophone and said, open the gate. The people in the hall went quiet. Slowly the metal gates opened, a terrible stench instantly appeared on the hall, making many grimace. Grr, a quiet growling sound came from the metal gates. The metal gates was already 50% open, but people could already see the paws of the mutated beast. And once the metal gate was opened 80%, the mutated beast managed to squeeze himself through. The mutated beast was a 5 meter long tiger. His fur was not ordinary orange, but instead, it was dark red. The dark red eyes of the tiger hungrily looked around the hall and smelled many different dishes. The tiger also had a metal collar around his neck, which kept beeping in the color of red, every time the tiger turned his gaze towards the stands, the collar started beeping. But once the tiger was about to go to the stands, the collar in his neck made it impossible, every time he tried to move towards the stands, the collar beeped and shocked him. Roar! The tiger painfully roared, his dark red eyes went mad, he was getting angrier and angrier, and he needs to unleash that anger. Then he saw a lonely-looking black-haired young man sitting in the floor hundred meters away from him. The tiger started drooling, he crouched and was about to pounce towards his prey. But then Ichiro's eyes opened. Ichiro calmly stood up from his sitting position. The hall was quieter than ever before. People from news station filmed the scene with the greatest focus they could utter. Tiger started slowly moving forwards, still in the same pouncing stance. Ichiro calmly moved one step forwards, his gaze not leaving Tiger. Grr. Tiger growled, drool flew out of his mouth. The distance was still massive 90 meters. But. Tiger had enough. Roar with a roar, Tiger started leaping towards Ichiro with the help of his massive paws. Ichiro put his right arm forwards and left arm next to his waist. Roar. 
With the final roar, the tiger slashed towards Ichiro with his massive claws. Swish Ichiro jumped backwards, dodging the claws, but the tiger wasn't done. The tiger pounced towards Ichiro he opened his massive jaw and attacked with his teeth. This time, Ichiro jumped to the left side the tiger's menacing growl was heard next to him he barely dodged the incoming bite. The tiger turned his mad-looking red eyes towards Ichiro, who was only meter away from him. Steel smash. A punch approached the tiger. The tiger didn't move instead, the punch squarely hit him in the head. CRKKKK the tiger went sliding a few meters until he stopped. The tiger grew even angrier. Roar.tsk Ichiro clicked his tongue his punch did lesser damage than he anticipated. The tiger lowered his stance, his head almost touching the floor. Crack the floor below him started cracking. Boom with a boom, the tiger leaped towards Ichiro, his massive mouth wide open. Ichiro this time, jumped to the right side, successfully dodging the attack. But then, the tiger growled and used his tail to attack Ichiro. Ichiro widened his eyes and put his hands as a block. BAM Ichiro was sent flying he crashed to the floor and bounced a few times before he managed to stop his body's momentum. A clock in the wall showed that 4. 30 and it is slowly ticking down. 4, 29. 4, 28. It is the clock that tells how much time is left. If he survives till the end, he will succeed in the test. But Ichiro has his quest, and it means that he has barely four minutes left to defeat that tiger in front of him. Ichiro's arms ached a little bit after that block, but nothing serious. The people in the hall were very nervous usually, everyone who does the test will try to avoid the mutated beast, not fight it. The tiger didn't let Ichiro rest he pounced towards Ichiro and started slashing with his claws. Ironic edge double side sweep. Ichiro put his two palms forwards, waited for the claws to be close enough, and once the claws were on attack range, he used his palms to hit the tiger's paw, which deflected the claws with ease. The tiger was now in an extremely awkward spot both of his front limbs were far away from each other, which almost made him faceplant on the ground. Steel smash end is near. Ichiro twisted his waist and unleashed his punch. Smack the tiger was sent flying he crashed to the ground a dozen meters away from Ichiro. Cheer the hall instantly erupted in cheers even the ground was shaking. The tiger shook his head he snarled and turned around to look at Ichiro with a hate-filled gaze. Time left, 3, 42. Time is quickly ticking down. Ichiro cracked his neck and started running towards the tiger. Roar the tiger roared and also used his four limbs to start moving towards Ichiro. The young man and the tiger met in the center of the hall. The tiger pounced towards Ichiro, it was like he was giving a big hug, but instead of that, he planned to bite Ichiro's head off. Instead of dodging this time, Ichiro crouched, which made the tiger leap over his body. The tiger looked confused, but then he felt something contacting with his belly. Iron Lance Stainless Steel Ichiro put his arm on a spear-like stance and hit the tiger's belly. Roar the tiger roared in agony and landed on the ground he quickly retreated a few dozen meters, blood staining the floor. There was a wound on his belly. Ichiro grimaced. Only two of his fingers penetrated the tiger's body. The tiger's anger finally lessened because he knew the threat that young man in front of him possesses. The mutated beasts aren't mindless beasts. Some of the mutated beasts have their own villages on the island of death. Even the savage beast can think at the same level as a young human. Ichiro saw the tiger being more reserved. But time was ticking down. 2, 58. Ichiro went after the tiger, who was being very careful right now. The tiger seeing the young man approaching decided to retreat. But then. Ichiro suddenly disappeared. He appeared above the tiger and stomped at the tiger's head, making him faceplant on the ground. The tiger was confused, he tried to move anxiously, but Ichiro kept stepping on his head with even more force. Ichiro reeled in his fist and unleashed his punch. Steel smash end is here. The punch was closing on the tiger's head, but then. The tiger used his tail and wrapped Ichiro on it, and threw him away. Ichiro was shocked and crashed on the metal gates. Dot Ichiro. He heard an anxious sounding voice from the stands. Dot pft. Ichiro spat a mouthful of blood, he wiped his mouth and in a hurry stood up, but the tiger was already only 10 meters away from him. 
the tiger opened his massive mouth and bit towards Ichiro. Ichiro put his hands calmly forwards. Ironic edge world hindering. Ichiro grabbed the head of the tiger and completely stopped the terrifying momentum of the tiger. The tiger looked shocked he tried to get his head away, he even tried to use his claws to slice Ichiro to pieces, but his claws didn't reach him. Ichiro smiled, dot sorry about this. The tiger was confused, but then his eyes bulged. Iron Hunter Beast Exterminator. Crack with crack, the tiger's neck was broken. The tiger fell down on the ground lifelessly. Ichiro was breathing heavily. His body was still in pain, and it was about to become far worse. Ichiro was ready for the pain to kick in it was a move he shouldn't be capable of using yet. Dotker. Ichiro gritted his teeth the pain kicked in, but then. A lot of dinging noise echoed in his head. Ding 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 ding, congratulations. First kill of savage beast achieved. Rewards, 1000 coins 1000 EXP. Congratulations. You received martial leader rank. Reward, 10 stat points 1000 coins 1000 EXP. Quest completed. Rewards, 38 stat points. You killed savage beast. Secret rewards, 5 lottery spins. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, martial leader. Trait, calm nature. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 48. Coins, 4000. 22503200 EXP. HP 36115. Strength, 91. Agility, 93. Stamina, 100. Vitality, 80. Lottery spins, 5, quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 3x the assassin's corpse 2 swords of killing beauty shampoo dynamite book of etiquette. Martial arts, taekwondo, iron style, karate, muay thai, boxing. Weapon mastery, knife throwing dual swordsmanship. Weakness detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of martial commander or below. Death ignore, mythical, dot, death. Overrated once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert blacksmithing mastery, gives you abilities of master blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. With shaky hands, Ichiro took two healing potions and emptied them. 115,115 HP. His body was completely healed, but he had only one healing potion left. Ha! He could finally relax he saw anxious looking martial rank test hall workers. Ichiro looked at his position and saw that he was entirely blocked by the view of others. He was in the cage where the tiger was held and now the lifeless body of the tiger was lying on front of him. Ichiro left the cage, climbed the tiger's body. His body was now visible to everyone which caused huge cheers. Even the ceiling was shaking. Host, it is time. Time for what? Ichiro raised an eyebrow. Time for you to become martial captain once you reach the martial captain, you will be far stronger than ordinary one. Ichiro was confused, what do you mean by that? You already reached beyond mythical in mind connection. The body connection won't be any worse. Ichiro looked thoughtful, he nodded. The administration were shocked seeing the tiger dead, how should I explain this? The tiger was Irio's only mutated beast, and now it was dead. Ichiro not knowing the problem he caused to them was walking towards his family, who looked extremely relieved. But he was also surprised seeing Lucas' family chatting with them. He raised an eyebrow but then he felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned his head and saw Lucas' smiling figure. Good job. Ichiro smirked, dot thanks. Then Lucas put his arm over Ichiro's shoulder and leaned closer to ear, dot don't flirt with my sister. Ichiro was stunned for a moment, but then he noticed Leia sitting next to Ayako, while looking at him. Ichiro and Lucas reached the stands where their families were located. Ichiro, are you hurt? Azumi asked anxiously. Ichiro looked at his outfit, which was in rags with tiny bloodstains. He shrugged, that I am fine, not my blood. That I doubt you survived unharmed after you crashed to the metal gates. Lucas said, that maybe you should visit the infirmary. 
Nah, I am fine, Ichiro said. Azumi glared at him, dot infirmary. Now. Ichiro sighed, dot fine. Ichiro left the hall, and under intense gazes of others, he walked straight towards the infirmary with sloppy steps. The infirmary was currently empty, and only a female doctor and nurse were sitting while talking with each other. Knock. Excuse me, Ichiro said and knocked at the door, which was wide open. The female doctor turned her head, dot yes, may I help? But the nurse pointed at Ichiro with her shaky finger, dot why you are Kuragami Ichiro. The doctor widened her eyes. Ichiro nodded and entered the infirmary, that I was told to come here to check for any injuries. Point 2C. The doctor quickly put a chair a few meters from her, dot sit there. Ichiro sat down on the chair and looked at the doctor. The doctor blushed and said, dot t take off your shirt I need to see if there are any visible wounds. Ichiro nodded and took off the shirt, which was completely filled with holes. Ichiro's athletic body was on display, it was slightly dirty, but his muscles, made for combat was perfect. The doctor and nurse heavily blushed and started checking him out. Cough checking for the wounds. They examined him very closely for ten minutes until it was painfully evident that they were stalling time. That is it done. Ichiro asked he was starting to feel slightly cold. The doctor blushed and nodded, that you are perfectly fine, but your muscles are very tense, probably because of the exhaustion. I suggest resting this day. Ichiro nodded and put his shirt back on, dot thank you. He turned around and left the infirmary. Leaving the doctor and nurse alone. They had now a new conversation topic, which would be soon spread by every middle-aged woman in their neighborhood. Ichiro left the Marshall Test Hall building and walked towards his family, still chatting with Lucas and his family. They noticed him instantly, that how was it, that I am perfectly healthy. How? Lucas exclaimed. Ichiro smirked, that because of these. He flexed his muscles. Lucas snorted, and Leia blushed. Did they say anything else? Azumi inquired. That I need to go rest. Ichiro said. Azumi and Eiji nodded, they were about to say goodbye to Lucas' family, but then a female sound was heard behind Ichiro. Dear disciple, did I hear something about rest? Ichiro went pale, he turned his shaky head towards a beautiful woman with a beautiful smile, but that smile brought nightmares for Ichiro. The group looked strangely at the beautiful woman. Quella stopped in front of Ichiro and grabbed his cheek, that we will have a lot of training to do today you should have won in 30 seconds at least. Excuse me, who are you? Azumi put her hands on her waist, who is this vixen, dot oh, how rude of me. Quella put her soft looking hand on her mouth and exclaimed. She puffed her chest, making her big breasts even bigger she proudly declared, that I am Ichiro's master. Everyone turned their heads towards Ichiro with shock. That is that true? Azumi asked with shock. Ichiro sighed and nodded, that everyone, meet my master, Quella. Quella waved her hand. Mistress. I am not able to train today, doctor's orders. Ichiro smirked. Quella's eyebrow twitched she leaned closer to Ichiro's ear and whispered, dot in tomorrow's training, you will wish that you were never born. After those words, Quella started walking away. Leaving pale Ichiro with a trembling body. What did she say? Azumi asked curiously. Leia looked at the scene with a pouting face. Lucas looked thoughtful, is she the reason for Ichiro's sudden improvement? Ichiro shook his head, dot only something about tomorrow's training. The others nodded with slight distrust. The Kuragami family and Quinthold family soon afterward parted ways and left in different directions. After half an hour, they arrived at their house. Ichiro instantly went towards his room and closed the door behind him. He sat down on his bed and cracked his knuckles. Dot it is time. He murmured and opened the interface. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, martial leader. Trait, calm nature. Age, 15. Level, 6, SP, 48. Coins, 4000. 22503200 EXP. HP 115115. Strength, 91. Agility, 93. Stamina, 100. Vitality, 80. Lottery spins, 5, quests. 
Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 1x2 Swords of Killing Beauty Shampoo Dynamite Book of Etiquette. Martial Arts, Taekwondo, Iron Style, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weapon Mastery, Knife Throwing Dual Swordsmanship. Weakness Detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated Once You Die, You Can Ignore Death and Come Back to the Realm of Living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, Gives You Abilities of Master Blacksmith You Will Be Able to Create Weapons Which This World Has Never Seen Before. He clicked the, Strength. And started adding stat points. Strength, 91 100. Stat points, 48 39. Next was Agility. Agility, 93 100. Stat points, 39 32. And finally, it was Vitality's turn. Vitality, 8100. Stat points, 32 12. Dot ha. Ichiro moaned out of satisfaction his body felt more powerful than ever before. His muscles became more firmer and his skin became tougher. His bones also started transforming, becoming as strong as iron. Congratulations host. Quest to reach Marshal Captain. Second part completed. Mind connection rank, beyond mythical. Body connection rank, beyond mythical. Rewards, 10,000 coins, 1,000 EXP, 100 stat points. Quest completed. Mind body achieved. First limit removed. Perfect mind body achieved. Secret rewards, iron style. Iron style unlocked. Iron style, a technique created by Earth's greatest genius, Kuragami Ichiro the martial god incarnation. Kuragami Ichiro's legacy unlocked. Kuragami Ichiro's legacy, the legacy of Earth's strongest warrior you can use one attack per week with same strength as Kuragami Ichiro was in his prime. Estimated attack strength, half-step martial king. Level up. Level 7 reached. Martial captain rank reached. Secret rewards, 2000 EXP 2000 coins 10 lottery spins. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, martial captain. Trait, calm nature. Age, 15. Level, 7, SP, 162. Coins, 16,000. 20506400 EXP. HP 140140. Strength, 100. Agility, 100. Stamina, 100. Vitality, 100. Lottery spins, 15. Quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 1x2 Swords of Killing Beauty Shampoo Dynamite Book of Etiquette. Martial Arts, Iron Style, Mythical, Taekwondo, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weapon Mastery, Knife Throwing Dual Swordsmanship. Weakness Detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated Once You Die, You Can Ignore Death and Come Back to the Realm of Living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, gives you abilities of Master Blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Kuragami Ichiro's Legacy, the legacy of Earth's strongest warrior you can use one attack per week with same strength as Kuragami Ichiro was in his prime. Ichiro looked at his hands which were trembling with anticipation. His body wants him to unleash the Iron Style. His body wants everyone to see the might of Iron Style, dot no worries. In the future, Iron Style will be known to whole world. Ichiro smiled and clenched his fists. Ichiro smiled after seeing, Kuragami Ichiro's legacy, that I guess I am not forgotten after all, dot damn. Ichiro exclaimed, he saw the amount of coins and stat points he had. He decided to spend his stat points, tomorrow he will focus on getting familiar with his newly found strength. Strength, 100-150. Stat points, 162-112. Agility, 100-150. Stat points, 112-62. Stamina, 100-131. Stat points, 62-31.
Vitality, 100-131. Stat Points, 31-0. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System Level, Advanced. Martial Rank, Martial Captain. Trait, Calm Nature. Age, 15. Level, 7, SP, 0, Coins, 16,000. 20506400 EXP. HP 171171. Strength, 150. Agility, 150. Stamina, 131. Vitality, 131. Lottery spins, 15. Quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, healing potion, common. 1x2 Swords of Killing Beauty Shampoo Dynamite Book of Etiquette. Martial Arts, Iron Style, Mythical, Taekwondo, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weapon Mastery, Knife Throwing Dual Swordsmanship. Weakness Detection ILV1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated Once You Die, You Can Ignore Death and Come Back to the Realm of Living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, gives you abilities of Master Blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Kuragami Ichiro's Legacy, the legacy of Earth's strongest warrior you can use one attack per week with same strength as Kuragami Ichiro was in his prime. And, slight update, had few mistakes in the system and in the inventory. Next day. Ichiro and Quella were as usual, standing in the screaming boy forest. But today, they weren't here for today. The Yakuza base is located there. Quella pointed at the map. Ichiro looked at the map. Hmm. Are you sure you can do this? This is quite suspicious. Quella said. Ichiro nodded and folded the map. That this is obviously a trap. The letter said that the boss of Yakuza is only low martial captain, but that is a big lie. The Yakuza would have been destroyed by now if their boss was that weak. Quella nodded. Dot but you are only half-step martial leader. Ichiro didn't tell anyone that he had reached martial captain yet. It would be very suspicious and unbelievable. Ichiro shrugged and put the folded map in his pocket, that I will be fine. Quella decided to believe in her disciple, dot see you tomorrow, mistress, Ichiro said and started running away from the forest. Quella was left alone in the forest, dot he seemed stronger. But how much stronger? Quella murmured she felt that Ichiro's strength had a massive leap. She just doesn't know how big. One hour later. Ichiro reached an abandoned mansion. The mansion looked abandoned, but you could see slight shadows moving inside the mansion if you looked closely. Ichiro was confident that this was the place. He took off his backpack and put it on the ground he opened it and took a black ski mask from it. He put it on the mask covered his face completely, dot let's do this. Ichiro murmured and jumped over the fence. He crouched instantly after he reached the mansion premises. There was only a big grass field separating the small forest Ichiro was in and the mansion. But he would get instantly caught if he blindly ran in the grass field. But that would be before him reaching Marshal Captain. Iron Burst Iron Burst, concentrate all your strength on your leg, it allows you to do small bursts of speeds. Ichiro disappeared from the forest and appeared in the middle of the grass field. Iron burst. Again Ichiro disappeared and appeared next to the mansion. Crack Ichiro destroyed the lower half of the window and put his hand inside. Clanky opened the window and sneaked in. The mansion was very quiet and dark, but Ichiro could feel slight tremors coming underneath the estate. With sneaky steps, he started approaching the stairway which leads to the basement area. But then, the sound of footsteps appeared from the stairways. Ichiro quickly hid inside one of the rooms. A skinny-looking middle-aged man was ascending the stairs. He didn't notice anything being wrong, he started walking towards the door, but then his vision turned black, and he fell down on the ground. Iron Swift Iron Swift, knock out or kill your opponents with a swift attack to the pressure point. Ichiro dragged the knocked-out man towards the room he was hiding in. He put him in the nearby closet. Ichiro left the room and slowly started descending the stairs. Shortly afterward, he reached the bottom floor. The bottom floor was completely unprotected only a single wooden door was on sight. Ichiro narrowed his eyes, 
I can't sneak in. Ichiro quickly reached the wooden door he put his ear on it and started eavesdropping. He heard laughter, loud voices, and screaming voices. Ichiro stopped eavesdropping he cracked his neck and took a deep breath. He raised his leg and kicked towards the door. Smash crash the door was instantly smashed to pieces. Ichiro finally saw what the reason for the voices was. A group of Yakuza members was laughing while three women were tied up with very little clothes on. The group of Yakuza was shocked to see the door being smashed to pieces. Dot who the fuck? Loud screams echoed in the room. Iron burst. Ichiro suddenly disappeared from his spot and appeared in front of three Yakuza members. Ichiro crossed his arms, and his hands instantly looked like the ancient claws of a mighty beast. Iron Predator. Splat the three Yakuza members fell down on the grounds while holding their necks which were bleeding furiously. Ichiro's hands were soaked in blood, but he didn't care about it currently. The rest of the Yakuza members finally woke up from their stupor they aimed their pistols at him. Dot hands up, or we will shoot. Ichiro ignored their shouts and went into cat stance. Dot kill him. Bang bang dozens of bullets flew through the sky towards Ichiro. Ironic edge storm hindering. Ichiro started moving his hands in calm manners, and once the bullets came into his range, he moved his hand in perfect motion. He touched the bullets only slightly, but enough for the bullets to miss his body. Bang the Yakuza members didn't stop shooting, but soon their magazines were empty. They looked with shock-filled gazes as Ichiro was completely unharmed. Ironic shift. Ironic shift it allows the person to predict attack directions, and it helps to easily dodge any attacks it allows the person to do huge speed bursts, which helps the person to move quickly short distances. Ichiro disappeared from his spot and appeared behind the first Yakuza member. Iron Swift. With one quick motion, the Yakuza member fell down on the ground, his condition unknown. Iron Burst. Ichiro appeared next to the two Yakuza members who were panicking. He grabbed their heads and twisted. Crack, Iron Hunter double prey. The two Yakuza members fell down on the ground lifelessly. The other Yakuza members went into a panic and tried to escape, making it easier for Ichiro to finish them off. Soon all the Yakuza members were dead on the ground only Ichiro and the three women were left. The three women looked at the scene with pale faces. Ichiro was looking around the room and noticed that the members he killed were some low-class thugs. He grabbed a knife from one of the thugs' pockets and threw it towards the three young women. The three young women paled they closed their eyes, waiting for their deaths. But the knife effortlessly cut down the ropes, which was tying them up. Ichiro left the room with one thought in his mind, this was a trap. He knows it. I wonder how many people are waiting for me upstairs. Ichiro thought he started ascending the stairs with calm steps, but the floor was completely empty. But then, a bright light appeared outside of the mansion. Ichiro saw dozens of cars, with hundreds of Yakuza members standing outside of the mansion. Come out. A loud shout came from the outside of the mansion. Ichiro left the mansion and saw hundreds of Yakuza members pointing their guns at him. Ichiro's gaze instantly locked with one of the Yakuza members. He was smoking a cigarette while he looked at the scene with boredom. He had small black hair and black eyes. Average face, but there was some ruthlessness inside his eyes. That I am honored that the League of Assassins wants my head. The boss of Yakuza, also known as Minamoto, chuckled innocently. Since Ichiro was wearing an entirely black outfit with a black ski mask, he looked way older than he actually was. But, this was a slight disappointment. Minamoto shook his head. He waved his hand and said, Dot shoot him. Gratitata bang bang hundreds of bullets flew through the air, coming straight towards Ichiro. Iron burst. The bullets made the mansion's walls filled with holes they didn't stop shooting and instead kept destroying the mansion more and more. After ten seconds of firing without stopping, they stopped. There was a small dust cloud, but the Yakuza members had already stopped aiming their guns no one could survive that they thought. Minamoto puffed a cloud of smoke in front of him and turned around. He was about to enter his car, but then he felt a hand touching his nape. Minamoto was shocked, but then he saw his head facing the wrong direction. His head was twisted like an owl's, and the last thing he saw in his life was Ichiro's black eyes. Ironic twist. Minamoto fell down on the ground lifelessly the rest of the Yakuza members hadn't even noticed it. 
Iron burst. With a burst of speed, Ichiro disappeared. The Yakuza members finally noticed Minamoto's corpse. Dot boss. They yelled anxiously they saw Ichiro jumping over the fence. Dot chase after him. The Yakuza members entered their cars and started chasing Ichiro. While one of the Yakuza members put Minamoto's corpse gently on his car and started chasing after other cars as well. While this chaos was going. A three women who were staying on the basement, left the mansion which was filled with holes. With nervousness and excitement they left the premises of the mansion and started running towards nearest civilization. Ichiro entered the forest, while the rest of the Yakuza members followed. The Yakuza members could barely see Ichiro's figure anymore and shortly afterward they completely lost him. Damn it! One of the Yakuza's shouted. While the Yakuza members were anxiously searching for him. Ichiro was sitting on top of a tree. A few hours later. Ichiro successfully managed to escape the Yakuza. He could have killed them, but he doesn't want to do more dirty deeds for the underworld. The Yakuza will be soon wiped out by the hands of the underworld, but both sides will lose men, which is a better solution for Ichiro. The sky has already become dark. Ichiro was calmly walking in the streets towards his home. System. Ichiro said in his mind he was curious about one thing. Yes, host. What is the Kuragami legacy actually? I doubt you added because of goodwill. The system was silent. Ichiro wryly smiled he didn't expect to get an answer. But then system actually answered. In Earth, there is a thing called Kuragami Ichiro's legacy. Ichiro raised an eyebrow, what is that? Kuragami Ichiro's legacy is the dojo you were training in. It is national treasure after you died. Why? I don't think my life was that meaningful. Ichiro said and turned towards left he was only a few hundred meters from his house. I am not supposed to talk about what happened on earth, but the girl you saved became the earth's greatest martial artist. She did. Ichiro didn't expect that. She wasn't only a martial artist she is also the only one who learned your iron style. Learning the iron style became her obsession many tried to learn it, but only she was successful. Ichiro smiled, she must be quite of a genius I only wrote a few explanations of the iron style, I planned to start teaching, but I died before I managed to do that. But you still didn't answer why the dojo I trained in became national treasure. Ichiro rolled his eyes. He already saw his house in the distance, but then a wind around him started blowing even harder. Wushi Chiro's hair was messily flying. What is this? Ichiro looked around him, but the wind only affected him. Host. Scream of the system made Ichiro flinch, he was about to turn around and run, but then the wind became even stronger. Aitch. Ichiro cried out, but the wind had already sent him flying a few kilometers into the sky. Aia. Ichiro shouted he was falling down towards the ground like a meteor. Ichiro looked with horror-filled eyes as his head was about to clash with the ground. Swish, but then, his body instantly stopped. Ha, Ichiro took a deep breath, his face was only an inch away from hitting the ground, but this wasn't over yet. The wind became stronger again and sent Ichiro flying towards screaming boy forest. Arg! Ichiro shouted with panic and crashed with dozens of trees. The trees were split in half, and Ichiro's bloodied figure was shown lying on the ground. Pfft! Ichiro spat a mouthful of blood he raised his bloodied face and saw a man in the distance. The man had dark red hair with scary looking red eyes. He was the tallest man Ichiro had ever seen, reaching up to 250 centimeters in height. The man had a muscular body which makes even Lucas look like a child. A. Arkentham, Ichiro muttered. Arkentham raised his eyebrow in surprise, you are aware who I am. I am surprised. Ichiro stood up with his broken body. 31,171 HP. Arkentham rubbed his chin, 15 years old, middle martial captain Na, I think with your techniques, you can reach peak martial captain. Arkentham nodded, you will do. Ichiro didn't know what Arkentham was talking about, but then the memories of his vision surfaced. Arkentham walked closer, you will do exactly what I say. Don't even think about refusing otherwise, your family won't have a happy ending. Ichiro gritted his teeth, what do you want? I am only martial captain. Arkentham smirked, you are indeed mere martial captain, but your age is what matters. 
My age. Ichiro raised an eyebrow in confusion. Six months from now on. There will be a tournament in winter light, and it is an underworld tournament. I need you to join the tournament and win. There is an age limit only people from the age of 16 to 18 can join. Ichiro grimaced, how should I get into winter light? Simple. You are yet to choose a high school. You will go to Winterlight's high school. Arkentham said with a slight smile. Why me Ichiro was feeling helpless he had to abandon his family this quickly. He thought that he had a few more years to spend with them, but it seems that he only had a few months. Arkentham snorted, I was going to choose SLYCH at first. But your progress was more than acceptable. If you die in the tournament, your family won't be harmed. But I suggest winning the tournament. Ichiro hatefully glared at him, but Arkentham didn't care. The young man in front of him was like an insect he could destroy at any moment. He almost already killed the young man only with 1% of his strength if he used even a little bit more, Ichiro would have died. Arkentham turned around and started walking away, you have no right to reject. I own you now. With those words, he disappeared. Ichiro gritted his teeth hatefully, RAA. Host, this was always going to happen. Even if you kept a low profile, this was going to happen. Ichiro sat down with his broken body he took his last healing potion and drank it. 81,171 HP. Winter light that is so far away my parents will never accept, they will. What do you mean? They never expected you to stay in Jensa. You are far too big for a small country like this. Did you know that this was going to happen? Ichiro punched at the tree behind him and stood up. His body was still filled with wounds and bloodstains. He opened the interface and the shop. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, martial captain. Trait, calm nature. Age, 15. Level, 7, SP, 0, coins, 16,000. 20506400 EXP. HP 81171. Strength, 150. Agility, 150. Stamina, 131. Vitality, 131. Lottery spins, 15. Quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, Two Swords of Killing Beauty Shampoo Dynamite Book of Etiquette. Martial Arts, Iron Style, Mythical, Taekwondo, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weapon Mastery, Knife Throwing Dual Swordsmanship. Weakness Detection ILV-1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated Once you die, you can ignore death and come back to the realm of living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, gives you abilities of Master Blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Kuragami Ichiro's Legacy, the legacy of Earth's strongest warrior you can use one attack per week with the same strength as Kuragami Ichiro was in his prime. Random Box, 200 coins. Advanced Weapon Mastery, 300 coins. Advanced Karate Mastery, 250 coins. Advanced Taekwondo Mastery, 250 coins. Healing Potion, Common, Dot, 350 coins. Healing Potion, Uncommon, Dot, 400 coins. Healing Potion, Rare, Dot, 500 coins. Healing Potion, Epic, Dot, 1000 coins. Healing Potion, Legendary, Dot, 10, 000 coins. Healing Potion, Mythical, Dot, 190, 000 coins. Body Increasement Pill, 500 coins. Lottery Spin, 500 coins. Killing Blow, Rare, Dot, 10, 000 coins. Killing Blow, Epic, Dot, 250, 000 coins. Killing Blow, Legendary, Dot, 500, 000 coins. Killing Blow, Mythical, Dot, 1, 500, 000 coins. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, 499, 999 coins. Ichiro bought the Healing Potion, Rare. Healing Potion, Rare, Dot, the Rare Healing Potion gives the user 100 HP points. 
he drank it instantly. 171,171 HP. Ichiro left the forest and entered the streets. The memories of his vision were replaying in his mind like a film reel. He was silent during the walk he entered his house without a word and entered his room. System, Ichiro murmured, his back was leaning on the wall. Yes, host. You said that killing is normal in this world. Affirmative. Where is the limit? Excuse me. Ichiro lied down on his bed and looked at the ceiling. Where does the killing stop? Ichiro sighed and closed his eyes, why is killing everyday thing? I have killed more people than I can count, and I don't understand why it is alright. I can still see some of the faces I had killed in my dreams especially from my previous life. With his hazy vision, Ichiro opened his eyes and asked, I thought this world was a dream come true for me at first. I am not thinking that way anymore. This is a world which can become my dream, but currently it is far from it. Ichiro again closed his eyes, slowly he drifted asleep, my dream dream, Ichiro fell asleep, and again he can't hear the dinging noises coming from the system. Ding ding, second step towards high human completed. High human secret quest 210. Second destiny revealed. Second destiny, achieve the dream. Reward. And just like previously. The quest interface disappeared mysteriously. Ichiro was deeply asleep, and he didn't have any idea, that the second part of his journey to the peak of humanity has been achieved. Ichiro lazily woke up. He had dreams about his meeting with Arkentham, which woke up him few days during the night. He stood up and sat down in front of his desk he opened the cabinet and took a stack of papers. The papers are what school he was going to. He had thought about it past week, but it seems that his decision was made forcefully. Ichiro started writing with annoyance on his face. Country, winter light. City, cold land. School, winter lights high school of fighting. After he wrote it, he left his room and went to the kitchen where his mother was currently. The system was kind enough to not wake Ichiro up at 3.30 a.m., instead let him sleep peacefully. Hey, son. You wake up late. Azumi smiled gently and put plates on the table. Ichiro didn't answer instead, he offered the paper. Hmm, what is this? Azumi asked and grabbed the paper. The school where I want to go, Ichiro replied. Azumi nodded and took a look at the paper. She gasped and put her hand on her mouth, dot w interlight. Ichiro nodded, that I heard. That it was one of the best countries to learn martial arts. Ichiro wasn't lying. Winterlight was one of the top four countries in Arya and one of the high evil countries. Winterlight is also widely known to be a tough place to live but the perfect place to become stronger. Azumi shakily nodded, point two need to talk with Eiji. Ichiro nodded and looked at his mother, who anxiously ran towards their bedroom. He knows that they will talk about this for the next few days. Ichiro went to his room to put on his school uniform, and after that, he left the house. Weird. Ichiro murmured and stopped walking, he walked a few hundred meters away from his house, but each step felt weird. This. Is the same thing that happened back then. Ichiro murmured. He decided to open the interface to see if his hunch was correct. Name, Kuragami Ichiro. System level, advanced. Martial rank, martial captain. Trait, calm nature. Age, 15. Level, 7, SP, 0, coins, 15,500. 20506400 EXP. HP 221221. Strength, 200. Agility, 200. Stamina, 181. Vitality, 181. Lottery spins, 15. Quests. Shop. Lottery. Inventory. Inventory, Two Swords of Killing Beauty Shampoo Dynamite Book of Etiquette. Martial Arts, Iron Style, Mythical, Taekwondo, Karate, Muay Thai, Boxing. Weapon Mastery, Knife Throwing Dual Swordsmanship. Weakness Detection ILV-1, it allows you to see any weakness of the person with the rank of Martial Commander or below. Death Ignore, Mythical, Dot, Death. Overrated Once You Die, You Can Ignore Death and Come Back to the Realm of Living. Expert Blacksmithing Mastery, 
gives you abilities of master blacksmith you will be able to create weapons which this world has never seen before. Kuragami Ichiro's Legacy, the legacy of Earth's strongest warrior you can use one attack per week with the same strength as Kuragami Ichiro was in his prime. What? Ichiro shouted his eyes almost bulged out of his eye sockets after seeing his stats. This doesn't make any sense. Ichiro scratched the back of his head. This was the second time something similar happened. System, what is this? Seeing the system being quiet made Ichiro even more curious. Fine, stay quiet, you pervert system who likes to see me naked, Ichiro said mockingly and started walking again. I don't like to see you naked. Lies. I can feel your gaze every time I shower. Stop lying. Ichiro snorted, dot out of all systems. I get the perverted one. He shook his head out of disappointment. Shut up. Ignoring the system's angry voice, Ichiro had already arrived at the school. For some reason, there is a festive feeling around the school. There were decorations everywhere he looked and a big sign saying, Welcome. And for some reason, the students have all big smiles on their faces. Hey, what is all this? Ichiro said from a nearby student. The student turned his head, and his eyes almost bulged out of his eye sockets, dot Ichiro Senpai. He bowed deeply, his face almost touching the ground. Senpai. What the f, Ichiro quickly shook his head, dot what is happening here? He pointed towards the school. The student politely and with extreme respect said, dot Irio secondary middle school will come to visit. Our principal decided to fix the relationships between two schools because there have been few fights between our school and their school. Ichiro nodded, dot fights, why? The student straightened his back, dot because of you, Ichiro senpai. Those rats dared to bully you. They are happy that we didn't go burn their school. He he he. He started chuckling like a madman. Dot okay. Ichiro quickly started walking away, but the student's intense gaze still lingered on his back. Everyone is fucking crazy. Ichiro shouted in his mind. He entered the school building and shortly afterward reached his classroom. The class was only half full because the school won't start in another half an hour. And apparently, it won't be an ordinary school day, since the other school is coming. Hey, Ichiro. Good job in the martial test. Mark waved his hand and shouted. Ichiro sat down on his chair, dot thanks. When is the Irio secondary middle school coming, dot at 9 a.m., we don't have school today. We need to patch our relationships with them. They will put us as two people team, one from each school, and we will have to do some missions. Mark said, but then remembered one thing, dot Irio secondary middle school's principal got fired. That's why this is possible after the new principal was more open-minded. Ichiro was slightly surprised, but he saw it coming, that I see, thanks. Mark nodded, but then he smirked, that I didn't have time to ask. But what is with you and Night Butterfly? Ichiro raised an eyebrow, that what do you mean, that you and Night Butterfly seem close? Mark winked. Pfft, Ichiro snorted and turned his head towards the window a slight hue of pink was seen on his cheeks. An hour went by fast, Ichiro and the rest of his classmates waited in their classrooms, waiting for the day to start. But then a loud shout woke everyone from their stupor, that they are here. Ichiro turned his head towards the window and saw dozens of buses entering the school through the gates. At the same time, the door to the classroom was opened, and their teacher came. Listen up. The teacher said and walked to the center of the classroom he gave a small nod towards Ichiro before continuing. Ichiro raised an eyebrow but shrugged it off. That we will all gather at the main hall, and there, we will do a lottery to determine everyone's partner for today. The teacher said, Dot follow me, stay quiet and respectful in the hall. After those words, the teacher went to the corridor, waiting for the students to fall in line. Ichiro waited for the other to go first before he goes last, but it seems that everyone waited for Ichiro to go first. Ichiro rolled his eyes and left the classroom first, followed by everyone else. They left towards the meeting hall, with dozens of other classes. For some reason, Ichiro's class was first to enter the hall and got the seats in the front row. Ichiro sat next to the teacher, but no one sat next to him for some reason. But then he got his answer why. The principal appeared in the hall and sat down next to Ichiro. 
Ichiro sat with a straight back in the middle of his teacher and the principal. Even in his previous life, he didn't enjoy sitting next to his teacher it always made him uncomfortable. Not because he doesn't like it he needs to act properly next to them. After Irio's middle school students had gathered in the hall, it was time for Irio's secondary middle school. They entered with a similar line, but their mood was very different. They were somewhat fearful. Some of the students had band-aids all over their bodies. Students from Ichiro's school glared at them, which made them even more fearful. Some even showed slitting their throat symbol towards them. With pale and unsteady steps, the student from secondary middle school sat down on their chairs. Got my turn. The principal next to Ichiro said and stood up. He walked towards the stage, which had one microphone. Test. Test. The principal said. Thank you for coming students from secondary middle school. There have been few disputes between our students, and we are here to make peace with each other. But we will decide the partners for today with a lottery, and the winner of today's missions receive a reward. Clap students started clapping, but people from Ichiro's school were still glaring at the people from secondary middle school. Dot let's start voting. The principal shouted and took two huge bowls and put them next to him in two other desks. First, from our school. The principal took a paper and smiled. Kuragami Ichiro. Come to the stage. Cheers claps the people from Ichiro's school instantly erupted in cheers and applause. Some even stood up and started applauding so hard that their hands went red. Ichiro rolled his eyes and went towards the stage. He stood next to the principal with boredom. Now, from secondary middle school. The hall went quiet. Students from secondary middle school was quiet, very quiet. Being a partner with so-called demon king from hell was a nightmare. The students from Ichiro's schools who attacked them kept yelling the words, Dot Ichiro is our lord and savior. You mere insects dare to stain his glory. The principal took a piece of paper and looked at it. The students in the hall concentrated with bloodshot eyes. Amanda Pantheran. Ichiro went instantly pale, fuck. From the secondary middle school seats, a certain young woman stood up in hurry with huge blush. With quick steps she reached the stage, and instead of standing next to the principal, she stood next to Ichiro with a huge smile. And, this chapter isn't that important for the story. So if you aren't comfortable with some R18 stuff, I suggest skipping this chapter. Dot go outside of the hall to wait for further instructions. The principal said. Ichiro nodded and instantly left. Amanda with a huge smile, followed behind him. They exited the hall. Ichiro crossed his arms and looked towards the distance. Amanda pouted and stood up in front of him Ichiro's gaze was locked with her. Amanda put her soft-looking hands on her waist and said, that this is fate. We are destined to be together, that this is luck, nothing else, Ichiro said and stopped looking at her. Humph, Amanda pouted, that this is basically a date, that friends can go for the date as well, Ichiro said. And lovers. Amanda shouted, that we can go for somewhere private and do things the lovers do. Calm nature activated. Ichiro's dirty thoughts vanished instantly. Dot or. We will do the missions and win this. Ichiro shrugged and said. Amanda walked closer to Ichiro her medium-sized breasts were almost in contact with his body. Dot or. We will go have sex. Amanda said. Calm nature activated. Ichiro shook his head, that we aren't dating. That is not happening. Amanda crossed her arms, a beautiful smile painted her face, that you are so innocent the first admit that I love you, and I can tell that you don't love me. But this could be our last memory of being together you will go somewhere else to become a superstar, and I will stay in Irio. That I will find a boyfriend, who maybe becomes my husband in the future. I will have a few kids and then die of old age. We are still young, and we both might regret this in the future. Ichiro sighed and patted her head, that I wonder what would have happened if you didn't crush my heart back then. I probably would be more than willing. Amanda went silent, a few teardrops appearing in the corner of her eyes. Ichiro wiped her tears and kissed her forehead. Amanda looked at Ichiro with hazy vision. Today might be our last memory of together. It doesn't need to be lewd stuff we can still have some fun. Ichiro said and offered a handshake, that I had forgiven you a long time ago, now it is time for you to forgive me. 
Amanda looked at him with countless emotions she put her hand forward and shook his hand, dot w what fun were you talking about? Ichiro smirked and turned his head towards the meeting hall, dot wait and see. They waited for over an hour outside the hall, and finally, all the partners were decided. The principal exited the meeting hall and shouted, dot first mission is simple. You and your partners will have to hide on the school premises. Half of the teams are seekers, half are hiders. We will decide the teams who are seekers. The principal and the rest of the teachers started dividing the teams Ichiro and Amanda were hiders. Ichiro smirked and started walking towards Lucas, who also had a girl as his partner. Amanda closely followed behind him. Lucas! Ichiro shouted. Lucas turned his head, dot yeah, that I bet 100 that you can't find us. Lucas snorted, dot fuck off, I am not falling for that again. Ichiro shook his head out of disappointment, that I see. You are a coward, I understand. My excellent hiding skills bring you to shame I understand that you don't want to risk it. Lucas had thick black marks appearing on his forehead, dot fine, you shithead. I will find you. Ichiro smirked and turned around to leave. Amanda smiled, dot this is your concept of having fun, dot annoying Lucas is. If he doesn't find us, that's even more fun. Ichiro said with a smug smile. Amanda was falling more and more in love. The principal took the microphone and yelled, dot hiders. Go hide. With those words, half of the students ran off. Ichiro grabbed Amanda and started carrying her. Kaya. Amanda let out a cute squeal she hugged Ichiro's neck, dot my prince. Ichiro rolled his eyes and disappeared from his spot. He quickly overtook every student and reached a certain school building. What is this? Amanda asked after Ichiro put him on the ground. Equipment facility, there is a lot of stuff, a perfect spot for hiding, Ichiro said he opened the window and sneaked in. Amanda followed closely behind. Ichiro closed the window and sat down on the mattress which was on the ground. Amanda sat down next to him and asked, that why didn't we use the door, that it's locked. Ichiro replied and pointed at the window, that this is the only way here. Amanda nodded, that I see. She then saw a position they were in. In a place where no one else was. A dimly lit room with a mattress underneath them. She smiled and looked at Ichiro, that you know what? Ichiro turned his head, dot what? Amanda didn't answer instead, she locked her lips with Ichiro. Dot mmm. Ichiro widened his eyes he grabbed. Amanda from her soft arms and pushed her away. What are you doing? He shout whispered he didn't want anyone to hear them and find out their spot. Amanda smirked and moved closer and closer towards Ichiro. Dot don't be loud otherwise, Lucas might find us. Ichiro gulped and started retreating but his back touched the wall his escape route was gone. Amanda smiled and put her head in front of him. Point two thought we talked about this, Ichiro said with a slightly parched throat. Amanda grabbed his cheeks and again locked her lips with his. This time, Ichiro didn't push her away his body became limp and savored the taste of Amanda's lips. Amanda stopped kissing and sat down on Ichiro's lap. Calm nature. Where the fuck is it? Ichiro shouted in his mind. The calm nature hasn't been working at all. Amanda put her hands over Ichiro's shoulders and leaned closer. Her soft breath brushed past Ichiro's face. That I know that we will never be boyfriend and girlfriend. But I want this. I want to remember this day. Once I am old and undesirable. This day will be my happiest one, which I will never forget. Amanda said with a slightly sobbing noise. Ichiro went quiet he never knew how deep Amanda's feelings went. Ichiro turned his gaze towards Amanda's teary eyes. He bit his lip and nodded, dot fine. But this will stay between us. Amanda wiped her tears and nodded with a huge smile, she started taking off her school uniform, and her moderate-sized breasts with pink-colored bra were shown. Next, she took off her skirt, and her cute but also sexy pink panties were now visible. Ichiro grabbed his necktie and took it off, next he took off his jacket and shirt his muscular body was visible, which made Amanda drool in anticipation. Ichiro grabbed Amanda and made her lie down. Mmm. Take me. Amanda moaned out of satisfaction. Ichiro nodded and kissed her soft lips. He took off his pants, 
and his manhood was now visible it wasn't as short as System claimed it was. Amanda gulped her lower half started also dripping some liquid. Ichiro took off her panties and her bra. Her naked body was on display. Perfect breasts, with pink-colored nipples and lower half, perfectly shaved. Ichiro lined his dick at her honeypot and slowly started pushing it deeper. Ah! Amanda moaned and grabbed Ichiro's arms tightly. Blood started flowing from her lower half, which took Ichiro by surprise. That why your first time? Amanda nodded with a smile, that I didn't want to give it to Damien. Ichiro kissed her lips one more time and thrusted his dick deeper now, it was entirely inside. Dot aw. Amanda moaned loudly, but Ichiro's kiss silenced her. They could hear slight running sounds outside of the building. Ichiro stopped kissing her. Dot do it. Fuck me. Amanda, with a lustful gaze said. Ichiro nodded and did as he was told. Pack 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 Ichiro's hips collided with Amanda's body, which resulted in the lewd sound of flesh getting beaten. Ah. 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 Amanda's voice was getting louder and louder she bit her lips, trying to keep the voices silent, but it didn't work. Ichiro grabbed her moderate-sized breasts and put them on his mouth, savoring every part of her. Amanda hugged Ichiro's head and bit his shoulder. Emimum Ichiro moaned slightly, his groans of pleasure echoed in the small building. The pleasure he was feeling made him fasten his thrusts. Smack smack pack pack dot ah. Amanda moaned loudly she knew that the moment of climax was about to happen. Ichiro started thrusting faster and faster. Ah. Ah. Amanda loudly moaned and pushed her head backward. That I am coming. She shouted, and the moment of her climax came. Arh. Ichiro groaned and took his dick out of her honeypot, and a white liquid came out of his dick. Covering Amanda's body in his white and sticky liquid. Ha. Ha. Amanda's chest went up and down. Ichiro fell down next to her, their naked bodies in very close contact. That why your first time? Amanda asked with rough breathing. Ichiro took a deep breath and nodded, dot yeah. You were very good. Amanda smiled and kissed his cheek. Ichiro had slight blush on his cheeks, dot thanks. But we should probably clean up. Amanda looked around her and saw her body being covered in some slimy liquid and the mattress below them was wet like someone spilled water on it. Dot why you are right. Ichiro wryly smiled and quickly started wearing his school uniform. Ending the experience, which Amanda will never forget. Ichiro and Amanda hid in the equipment facility for near one hour until a loud voice was heard. Hiders, come out. I guess we won, Amanda said with a slight smile. Ichiro smirked, Lucas is going to be so pissed. He can already imagine the face Lucas is going to make. Amanda smiled and kissed his cheek, thanks for the unforgettable experience. Ichiro rolled his eyes, thank you as well, I guess, no more virgin Ichiro. He smiled and stood up. Amanda snorted but also stood up with a smile. Both left the facility through the window. The meeting hall was crowded already. Ichiro's and Amanda's figures caught everyone's attention only five teams survived the hide and seek. Ichiro looked around and finally saw Lucas' annoyed face. He waved his hand towards Lucas with an annoying smirk on his face. Lucas gritted his teeth hatefully. Those who survived the first mission, you get ten points, those who didn't zero. The principal shouted. The principal started talking about other mundane things. Soon, the second mission started the second mission was about to know your partner better Ichiro and Amanda got max points in it as well, but Amanda's attempt to make Ichiro horny made it slightly tricky, but he survived it. The third and last mission was another one where Ichiro and Amanda got max points, and they ended up winning today's event. The third mission was a simple treasure hunt it wasn't that difficult for them with their outstanding teamwork, they got easily more points than anyone else. After those missions, the school day ended. Ichiro bid farewells with Amanda. And after that, he returned to his home, where his parents were waiting. Ichiro. Azumi said. Eiji also sat straighter. Ichiro nodded and sat down in the chair. Azumi bit his lips and asked, Are you sure you want to go to Winterlight? Ichiro sighed and nodded, I am. Azumi nodded sadly Eiji sighed and nodded. We have signed it already we won't stop you. 
You were always going to leave Jensa it was only a matter of time. Azumi said with slight teary eyes and offered the paper. Ichiro grabbed the paper and took it his parents' signature was on it. Thanks Ichiro felt emotional he never planned to leave Jensa for high school. They talked a few moments longer after that, Ichiro returned to his room, put the paper on his cabinet, and sat down on his bed. Winterlight, Ichiro murmured. He spent the day in his room, thinking about his future they also told Ayako about his school choice, which resulted in a lot of crying. But they managed to survive that ordeal. There was only one month left of middle school, which went quickly. Ichiro spent most of his time with classmates, then after school returned to training with Quella, which started showing results very quickly. He didn't have anything to do with Underworld after Arkentham met him, they didn't even contact him. So his missions are over, but his next assignment is far more dangerous. He also told SLYCH his decision he didn't get mad, instead excited. His goal once he reaches high school is to enter the battle of countries and fight against Ichiro once again. A few days before the final day of middle school, Ichiro turned 16. Only two years left till the age of growth begins. And now, finally, the last day of middle school came. Ichiro was standing in front of mirror. This time he wasn't using school uniform, instead tuxedo, which made his looks amplified by ten times. He looked at his face, and it looked familiar yet different. His slight childish look has disappeared, with only the mature face of a teenager left. Ichiro, it is time to go. He heard Azumi's shout from downstairs. Ichiro looked at the mirror and nodded he left his room and left with his family towards the school. The school was already packed by people, students with their families walking side by side. Ichiro and his family left the car. Ayako was also wearing a cute-looking dress, she is going to enter her second year in middle school. Ichiro's figure, as always, attracted a lot of attention. Some students even kneeled like they were worshipping a god. Everywhere they walked, people parted ways and let him walk unhindered. They entered the hall, which was packed with people already. Ichiro sat down with his family in the last row, and started waiting for the ceremony to start. Soon the ceremony started. The principal was the first one to make his speech and, after that, other teachers. Some students got emotional. Ichiro as well most of the students here will stay either in Irio or Jensa. He will leave to another side of the continent. The ceremony lasted for two hours. After the ceremony, it was time for grades to be given. The third years will have to get the grades from the stage. Ichiro waited, until his name was finally called. Kuragami Ichiro. The principal said and started clapping. Cheer, clap the hall erupted in cheers and claps. The students and their parents alike. Ichiro stood up his muscular figure couldn't be hidden under his tuxedo. He walked towards the stage under the intense gazes of others. Ichiro's teacher offered him a paper and handshake. Ichiro took the paper and shook his hand. Cameras flashed in the hall and another round of applause echoed in the hall. Ichiro left the stage shortly afterward and sat next to his parents. Soon the rest of his classmates received their grades and the ceremony ended. Ichiro's parents went to talk with other parents, Ayako went to her friends, and Ichiro met with Lucas. They sat down on the bench outside of the hall. Ichiro opened his mouth first, where are you going to? Lucas turned his gaze towards him, Irio's public high school. Ichiro was surprised, you are staying here. Why? Lucas scratched the back of his head, I think it is better choice for me in long run, I told you once that I had crush right. She will enter third year in high school, and I will do my best in one year to catch her heart. After high school, I will enter college somewhere else. Ichiro chuckled silently, so romantic, shut up, Lucas growled angrily. Where are you going? Lucas asked curiously. Ikrio's face was painted with a sad smile, winter light. Lucas was shocked, that is very far away. Ichiro nodded and leaned on the bench, it is. I thought that usually the schools in the top four countries are packed, and thousands of students who graduated from middle school is trying to get into those schools every year. Ichiro nodded, those schools are the ones with the highest chance of improving your strength and the easiest way to be part of championship school, which will make your future smooth sailing. How did you manage to enter then? Lucas asked. Ichiro turned his head towards him, I reached Marshal Captain, they were more than happy to accept me. Marshal Captain. 
Lucas was again shocked. Ichiro nodded, and took a card from his pocket. Kuragami Ichiro. Martial rank, martial captain. Talent level, monarch. Age, 16. Country, Jensa. City, Irio. Monarch talent level. Ichiro shrugged, yeah I did the talent test few days ago. Lucas smiled and shook his head, I will be waiting to see your results in high school tournament. Hat Ichiro chuckled and stood up. Where are you going? I have one more person to say goodbye to. Ichiro said and shook hands with Lucas, take care. Take care, Lucas said sadly and watched as Ichiro's back was getting further away. Ichiro exited the school through the gates he took one last look towards the Irios public middle school. Goodbye, Ichiro murmured and left the school. He walked through the streets and reached Screaming Boy Forest. He reached his usual training spot and sat down on the ground. Crack Ichiro heard a sound of a twig getting snapped in half he turned his head and saw Quella walking towards him. Dear disciple, coming to say goodbye. Quella said with a smile. Ichiro nodded and stood up, yes. Quella nodded, take care you will be in contact with Underworld a lot once you get there. Ichiro nodded and put his hand forward for a handshake, thanks for teaching me. Quella smiled and grabbed the hand, don't die. Ichiro nodded and left the training area, his face clouded by his emotions. He returned to his home and saw that his parents hadn't returned yet. He went towards his room, and took a black-colored bag from the closet and put it on the bed. Ichiro started throwing his clothes on the bag and everything he needed in winterlight he even took his console. Once he packed everything, he sat down on the bed and looked at the posters on the wall. Ichiro's journey in Jensa ended. Tomorrow his destination is winterlight. First volume middle school END. Second volume high school Ichiro grabbed his bag and left the terminal. The cold air of winterlight assaulted his body, he was wearing warm clothes, but it was still extremely cold. He saw a few taxis parked on the side he approached one and ordered a ride. Ichiro was currently in the city of Coldland, the capital of Winterlight. There is a total of four high schools in Winterlight. High School of Fighting. Public High School of Winter. Private High School of Cold. Secondary High School of Fighting. Ichiro got accepted into the High School of Fighting. It is the strongest school in Winterlight. Past 30 years, they have won six country championships. But recently, Summer Light, Daylight and Night Light have been doing better than Winter Light. But the power level of countries is still extremely close. Public High School of Winter is for those born in Winter Light but aren't that interested in fighting. Private High School of Cold is for the rich. They have their own martial arts club, but they aren't very competitive. And lastly, Secondary High School of Fighting is for the people who didn't get accepted into the High School of Fighting. They still have chances of joining the High School of Fighting if they prove themselves. People changing schools isn't an unusual occurrence. Ichiro managed to join the High School of Fighting with flying colors. When the coach of the martial arts club there saw his application, it didn't take long for him to be accepted. They even prioritized that the letter won't be lost in the mail it would be a tragedy to lose someone of Ichiro's caliber. The taxi arrived at Ichiro's new high school. Ichiro paid the driver and exited the car. He could finally see the building. It was massive. There were at least four huge buildings with massive yards he couldn't even see the end of it. It was currently summer vacation, but still, the cold was freezing. Ichiro saw a few students walking there from the dormitories, who didn't go back to their families for the summer. The ground was filled with white snow, each step making crunching noises. Ichiro started walking towards the teacher's building he had to register and get his key for his dormitory. His figure didn't catch as much attention as in Irio. He isn't well known here, after all, and he had a black-colored scarf covering half of his face. Ichiro entered the building and went straight towards the registration desk, where a young woman in her twenties was sitting. Excuse me, I am here to register. Ichiro said and took a stack of papers from his bag. The woman stopped typing on the keyboard and took the stack of papers. The first word in the paper shook her greatly. Kuragami Ichiro S rank recruit. She glanced at the young man in front of her with fascination. S rank recruits are very rare. They only have three or four each year. The young woman quickly signed the papers and grabbed a key that was reserved for S rankers. 
S rankers will have their own rooms, but they will be in the same dormitory as the rest. Here, and this is your class list. The young woman said politely. Ichiro grabbed the keys and the paper, thank you. Ichiro said and left the building. His thank you surprised the young woman. Usually, S rank recruits are very arrogant because that rank means that they are top of the top. Every other student was below them. Either that young man doesn't know how vital S rank actually is, or he simply isn't arrogant. Maybe both. Ichiro walked through the school's yard for a few kilometers until he finally reached the dorm building. After entering the building, the cold air magically disappeared it was like he had entered another dimension. Ichiro quickly took off his jacket and scarf and ascended towards the first floor, reserved for first-year students. He took another look at his key, and it showed number three. He looked at the corridor in front of him and saw most of the doors being opened while most of the students talked with each other. Only doors one, two, three, and four were closed. You knew. Ichiro looked in the direction of the voice and saw a young man with short brown hair looking at him. Yes I arrived today. Ichiro said. The young man with brown hair nodded, my name is Jordan. He put his hand forwards. Ichiro dropped his back and shook his hand, Ichiro. Jordan nodded, well, Ichiro, where are you from? Jensa, Ichiro replied. Some of the students left their room to look at the newcomer. Jordan pondered for a moment, Jensa wait, isn't it the place where the rigging incident happened? Ichiro chuckled, that's the place. Jordan nodded, you are far from home. Ichiro wryly smiled. Jordan pointed towards the corridor, this is our majestic lair. We will spend our next year here. Ichiro nodded and waved his hand towards the others. He received waves back. Jordan pointed at himself, I am peak martial leader, and most of the students here are peak as well, while the three kings are at martial captain. Three kings. Ichiro raised an eyebrow. Jordan chuckled and pointed towards one, two, and the fourth door, the so-called S-rankers, they don't hang out with us much, they spend most of their time training. Ichiro nodded. There is supposed to be fourth king, but he hasn't arrived yet. Jordan pointed towards third door and said. Ichiro looked at his key again and saw number three on it. You should find your room and unpack things we were planning to visit the city soon you should come with us. Ichiro nodded, sounds good. He said and went towards the third door. Eh. Jordan looked confused, but then his eyes almost bulged out of his eye sockets after seeing Ichiro opening the door. Ichiro looked at the room and saw it being quite fancy. A big bed with expensive looking TV. Bathroom, kitchen and a big closet. It was like a small apartment. He threw his bag to his bed and exited his room. He saw Jordan's shocked face. I guess I am the so-called fourth king. Ichiro awkwardly scratched the back of his head. Jordan gulped and bowed, I am sorry for disrespect. Ichiro looked strangely at him, why are you being so polite all of a sudden? Well you are king, Jordan started stuttering while his forehead was drenched with sweat. Ichiro pondered for a moment, I guess the kings are quite an unreasonable bunch. Ichiro patted his shoulder, I am not like other kings you can speak normally with me. Are really? Jordan asked with widened eyes. Ichiro nodded. Jordan sighed in relief, eh all right then, we were planning to visit the city, wanna come with us? Sure. Ichiro nodded. Jordan and a dozen other students in the dormitory started wearing their winter clothes Ichiro followed them and left the dorm building. The cold air instantly assaulted them after they left the building. Since Jordan's and others' nervousness left after Ichiro was proven to be more of a chill type, they became more talkative. This is our majestic winter light, 365 days of nothing but snow and frozen balls, Jordan said. Ichiro chuckled and, with a slight smile, looked around him. In Irio, it never snowed this was a relatively new experience to see this much snow. He, of course, saw snow in his previous life, but never this much. In Ichiro's opinion, the winter looked much more beautiful than summer. Ichiro followed behind the others as they reached a huge mall. They ignored all of it and entered a place called, Martial Arts Games. Ichiro looked curious and looked around the massive room, which had dozens of games. Ichiro, beat this record. Jordan said and pointed at the punching game. Hmm. Ichiro looked at the record, which showed, 
first 8867 I am the best. This arrogant bastard named himself I am the best I have waited for so long for someone to beat him, Jordan said with slight anger. Ichiro chuckled, is that score high? Jordan nodded, look at the second record. Second 6969 honesty is virtue. Nice. Ichiro nodded, it seems to be quite a good record. Maybe someone in martial general rank did this. Jordan shook his head, the special thing about this game is that it doesn't matter what your rank is. The points are determined how much stronger attack you can make than others in the same rank as you. Ichiro nodded, let me try. Nice. Jordan shouted, guys, come. He called towards his other friends. Their group of friends surrounded Ichiro and looked at him do his magic. Ichiro first put his name as, Kurigami Ichiro. And stepped backward. Ichiro cracked his neck and his knuckles. He put his left fist forwards and put his right fist next to his waist. He lowered his waist and took a deep breath. Ironical destruction. BAM Ichiro's punch contacted with the punching bag, which made the whole room shake. Holy! Jordan almost fell down they all looked at the score, which was rapidly rising. 4,457, 6,245. 7,688, 8,668. 9,921, 10,034. New record. First 12,321 Kurigami Chiro. Second 8867 I am the best. Third 6969 Honesty is Virtue. Jordan and his friends watched with mouths agape at the result. The people playing other games felt the room shaking, and out of curiosity, they decided to look what was the cause. I Ichiro, that was insane. Jordan exclaimed. Ichiro smiled and stepped out of the game area the name of, Kurigami Ichiro was shown on the leaderboards with golden colors. What should we do next? Ichiro inquired. Jordan shrugged, there are still few games we could try out. Ichiro nodded and looked around the room, but then they heard an annoying sounding voice, oh, look what we are here. Brutes from high school of fighting. Jordan and his friends turned their heads angrily and clicked their tongues once they saw the upcoming group. A young man with medium-length blonde hair and blue eyes were leading them he had an above-average face with an expensive-looking outfit. Michelle, what the fuck are you doing here? Jordan asked angrily. Michelle snorted, this is a public building, but I am not surprised that you brutes are here. You guys don't care about anything else than martial arts. He said mockingly. While Jordan and Michelle were arguing. Ichiro asked one of Jordan's friends, who are they? They are from private high school of cold, rich snobs basically. Jordan's friend, also known as Wells, replied. Ichiro nodded and crossed his arms. Michelle's group had three boys, him included, and two rich and beautiful looking girls. Michelle was trying to show dominance towards two girls, but their attention wasn't on him. Instead, with blushing faces, they looked at Ichiro and took sneaky glances every now and then. Michelle smirked, the number one stop made by our king will always be the sign that we are superior school. Michelle thought that comment would make him angry, but Jordan smirked, look at the leaderboards, moron. Michelle raised an eyebrow and looked at the leaderboard. He gasped, and his face went pale, Kurigami Ichiro. Who is he? Jordan smirked and grabbed Ichiro's shoulder, he is. Michelle turned his gaze towards Ichiro and narrowed his eyes, he doesn't look that strong you are lying, aren't you? Jordan snorted, Ichiro, can you do it again? Ichiro sighed and nodded. He walked towards the game area, put his left fist forwards and right fist next to his waist. Ironical destruction. BAM again the room started shaking. Michel and his group looked with widened eyes as the score started climbing up. Soon the score stopped. New record. First 14395 Kurigami Ichiro. W.A., Michel was gobsmacked. Jordan smirked, your king isn't that great after all let me introduce our this year S ranker Kuragami Ichiro. Clap Jordan's friends clapped with playful smiles while Ichiro bowed towards everyone with a sign of appreciation. Michel gritted his teeth and pointed his shaky finger towards Ichiro, A attack strength doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter how strong your attack is if you can't hit your opponent it's useless. Let's go. Michel waved his hand, the boys of his group left, and shortly afterward, 
girls as well with reluctance. Jordan snorted, rich snobs. Ichiro chuckled, what should we do now? Jordan shrugged, there are still a few hours until we have to be at the dormitory. Wells rubbed his chin and said, if I remember correctly there was supposed to be new cafe opening today. Jordan snapped his fingers, that's it, let's go there. Jordan and the group of five started walking towards the cafe, while Ichiro followed behind. They arrived at the cafe, which was currently very populated. There was a line of thirty people at least, and all the tables were occupied. More popular than anticipated, Wells said with frustration. Jordan thought for a moment and turned towards Ichiro, with your status, we could get our coffees in an instant. But Ichiro shook his head, I don't want to abuse my status. Jordan chuckled and patted his shoulder, other S-rankers wouldn't even hesitate you are indeed different. Are the other S-rankers really that bad? Ichiro asked with curiosity. Wells grimaced and answered, they are the worst. They were already arrogant before coming here, but getting S-rank status in one of the strongest schools in Arya blinded them. They pretty much think that they are real kings and that we are their subordinates. Ichiro grimaced as well, sounds horrible. Jordan nodded, they don't care about rules. If they fancy someone, but she is already taken. They will take her with force then if have to. And teachers are letting this happen. Of course, they only care how they do in the tournaments. If they do bad, they will get their status removed, but until then. They can do basically anything and no one can do anything to stop it. Wells smirked and said, but most of the S-rankers don't understand that this is basically a test. Test. Ichiro asked. Wells nodded, it is a perfect way to remove the seeds who get lazy after becoming successful. If the S-rankers stop training, and focus on their newly found status the school will stop wasting their resources on them. Ichiro nodded, that is a smart move. Our turn. Jordan pointed, and they could see the person in front of them leaving with a cup of coffee. Your orders. The woman on the other side of the desk said politely. Jordan, Ichiro, and others ordered, and shortly afterward, they got their cups. Ichiro took the cup and gave the money to the woman with a bashful and blushing face, she took the money and gave the change. There. Jordan pointed at the table, which was getting empty. Jordan and his friends basically ran there while Ichiro strolled and sat down next to Wells. What are you guys' plans during the vacation? No one going to meet their families? Ichiro asked. Jordan shrugged, I am not from Winterlight, and traveling is too expensive. Wells nodded, same. And we are basically doing to spend our time in the dormitory, playing games or training before the school starts, Jordan said. Ichiro, once the school year starts, you will be part of the core of the martial arts club, Wells said with slight envy. Core. What is that? It is martial arts club team for the upcoming tournament. There will be three main fighters, and those three are almost always from third year because their age of growth has begun. Next is five reserve fighters, and lastly three or four recruit fighters. Wells explained. Jordan nodded and started explaining more, the recruit fighters are the new S-rankers, like you and the others. The school will spend most of their resources on the new recruits. Ichiro nodded. Main fighters are the ones who will be fighting in the main tournament, but reserve fighters and recruit fighters will fight against weaker schools. What are you guys then? Ichiro asked. Jordan sighed, we are the ordinary fighters if we improve enough, then we can become reserve fighter, but that is basically impossible without being S-ranker. What ranks are you guys then? Jordan pointed at himself, Crank. Crank, Wells said. Most of Jordan's group was Cranks, while two were Drank. How strong are the main fighters then? Ichiro decided to ask. Marshal Commander, Jordan said simply. Ichiro nodded, it was as expected. Their group spent another ten minutes in the cafe, and they finally drank their coffee and decided to leave. Ichiro followed behind them, but when they were about to leave. Ichiro saw a group of two walking towards their table they were on previously. Another one was beautiful middle-aged woman with long black hair and strikingly beautiful blue eyes. Her face was slightly pale, but the demeanor around her was someone who would never give up. She tenderly held the hand of younger girl. The younger girl was someone who took Ichiro's breath away, she had an exquisite looking face, like a peerless treasure with flowing black hair and blue eyes similar to the middle-aged woman. Her body was petite, 
but it didn't diminish her beauty at all, only amplified. Mother, be careful, Azra said with a caring smile. Her mother chuckled and carefully kept walking, her body was still in pretty bad shape, but it was getting better every day. The group of two passed Ichiro, and sat down on the chair with table in front of them. Ichiro took a glance at the black-haired girl but shook his head shortly afterward and followed behind his new group of friends. Azura, with a beautiful smile, looked at her mother, but with the corner of her eyes, she saw a very familiar-looking black-haired young man, she turned her head and only saw the back of the young man, but it felt incredibly familiar. Hmm, she tilted her head curiously, she doesn't know why, but it feels like she has seen him thousands of times, definitely not because every time she opens her phone, she looks at least five minutes at the picture in her phone, definitely not. Everything all right, honey? Her mother asked with gentle smile. Azura turned her head towards her mother and smiled sweetly, yes, mother. Ichiro and the rest reached the dormitory one hour before the doors got locked. Ichiro went to his room to take off his winter clothes and put more comfortable clothes. He left his room and looked at the corridor most of the people in the dorm were hanging out with their newly found group of friends, while the doors of S-Rankers were closed as always. Ichiro went towards Jordan's room and joined them at the small table. Ichiro sat down next to Wells while Jordan and his roommate Nolan were sitting in front of them. All right. Wells tapped the table a few times, story time. Story time. Ichiro asked curiously. Wells nodded, Jordan tells us usually stories about his hometown, and those are always wacky. Ichiro chuckled and concentrated on the story. Cough Jordan coughed a few times and opened his mouth, last year, during the summer. I was helping my neighbor to fix his fence, ordinary stuff. But at that moment, I didn't know that my day would become very weird, very quick. Wells, Ichiro, and Nolan concentrated. Jordan continued, in the morning, I went there to fix the fence it only took me a few hours I had to paint it as well, nothing too difficult. But then when my work was done, my neighbor asked for another favor. Ichiro's palms were getting sweaty he has bad feeling about this. Wells gulped. Nolan wiped his sweat. I said, sure, I didn't have reason to refuse since he was friends with my dad. He said, follow me. With a very suspicious voice, but I was a very innocent little boy who beats up kids for living in the tournaments, I thought that it wasn't anything too bad. Ichiro, Wells, and Nolan concentrated. Jordan then continued, I followed him to the basement, and there I saw it, tell us already. Wells was getting impatient. Jordan grimaced, there I saw recording studio, he was freaking 60 years old, and he was recording a rap song. Freaking rap song, it was like listening group of deaf orphans singing, and I had to listen for it five hours. Five hours. Ha ha ha. Wells burst into laughter while Nolan facepalmed. Ichiro's face was dead. And that was the story of perhaps my weirdest day. Jordan stood up and bowed. Clap Wells, Ichiro, and Nolan clapped. Jordan then turned towards Ichiro, Ichiro, tell us a story of your childhood. Wells and Nolan nodded with playful smiles. Hmm, Ichiro pondered his life is quite dull. Maybe I can talk about my previous life. Ichiro thought and nodded. Jordan, Wells, and Nolan concentrated. Ichiro coughed a few times and opened his mouth, it was an ordinary day, I went to train for a few hours, and I left for home after that. I was walking peacefully with warm weather and calm wind blowing my hair, it was peaceful way too peaceful, Jordan, Wells, and Nolan gulped. I reached a certain alleyway I heard a noise in there I was young and foolish, so I decided to check it out, but what I saw there shocked me greatly. Ichiro grimaced while remembering that memory. Jordan's hands were trembling. Wells wiped his sweat. Nolan gulped. Ichiro continued, there I saw a cat. Fighting against a group of dogs, and he was winning. It was incredible. After that, I fell in love with cats, and my favorite fighting stance is cat stance because of that. He smiled and stood up. Ichiro bowed. Jordan grabbed his pillow and threw it towards Ichiro's head, perfect hit. Pa. Ichiro stumbled few meters backward. Boo. Terrible story. Well said with playful shouting. Jordan and Nolan as well started booing. Ichiro snorted and threw the pillow at Jordan, making him fall down on his bed. Oof. Jordan felt the strength of the throw, and it almost injured him. 
Ichiro sat down on his chair. No more stories from Ichiro, gotcha, well said with a playful smile. Ichiro rolled his eyes, it's a good story, though learning cat stance was my first step of developing iron style, Jordan stood up from his bed and asked a question, Ichiro, are you virgin? Nolan and Wells concentrated, this is an important question. Ichiro smirked, I am not. Jordan, Wells, and Nolan went silent they clenched their fists. Jordan pointed at Ichiro, I challenge you to deathmatch. No, don't. Jordan, you will die. Wells tearfully said. Jordan shook his head, this has to be done. Ichiro scoffed, jealous boys, I am glad that I never was jealous of others yup. Nolan patted Jordan's shoulder, please avenge for us. Jordan nodded, Ichiro, only one of us survives. Ichiro stood up and cracked his neck, I am ready. Jordan put his hand forwards, rock, paper or scissors. Are you serious? Ichiro asked with a deadpan face. Jordan nodded, come on. Ichiro put his fist forward. Rock, paper, scissors. Jordan shouted, and his hand became scissors. While Ichiro had rock. N.O.O. Jordan fell down on the ground. Wells face bombed, stop using scissors every fucking time. Ichiro scratched the back of his head and sat down next to Wells. Jordan wiped his tears and lied down on his bed, I am depression. Good night, depression, Wells said. Have nice dreams, depression, Ichiro said. Sweet dreams, depression, Nolan said. Jordan snorted. Ding ding everyone perked up their eyes and looked at Ichiro. Ichiro hummed and took his phone from his pocket. A message? Wells asked. From a girl? Jordan shouted. Ichiro opened his phone and saw a message in the Worldly Talk app, Night Butterfly, hey. Ichiro smiled and started typing. King of Games, hey ya beautiful. Ichiro smiled, he had been chatting with Night Butterfly past one month, and their relationship got to the level of flirting. Is it a girl? Jordan tried to peek at the phone, but Ichiro hid it nicely no one could see the screen except him. Ding, Night Butterfly, humph. You haven't even seen me. Two think it is a girl. Wells cried out, he managed to take a glance at the screen. You dare to talk with girl in our presence? Jordan shouted angrily. Wells and Nolan cracked their knuckles they were ready to rumble. Ichiro smiled and hid the screen again, guys, I am having a conversation stop being rude. Pa! Jordan exclaimed, brothers before hoes. Wells and Nolan nodded. Ichiro smirked and started typing. King of games, do you want to have a call? Ichiro pressed sent and waited for a reply. While Jordan, Wells, and Nolan tried to talk Ichiro out of it, he waited. Then a few minutes later, the answer came. Night butterfly, sure. All right guys, calm down. I am gonna call her all right. Ichiro stood up. Jordan, Wells, and Nolan circled around him. Ring Ichiro called and a few moments later phone call connected. Hey, nighty. Ichiro said with an energetic expression. Jordan, Wells, and Nolan concentrated, trying to hear the voice of the girl. H. Hey, a shy voice came from the phone. Ichiro had a huge smile. Night Butterfly's voice was too cute. He couldn't take it. Jordan gritted his teeth hatefully. Wells clenched his fists. While Nolan cried imaginary tears. Nighty, how is it going, Ichiro asked. Too am fine I went shopping with mom. Azura's voice became cheerful at the end. Ichiro nodded gently he said softly, nice to hear, I arrived at my high school today. To see what kind of schools does Jensa have. I am curious. Azra asked with a rapid heartbeat it felt like she could feel Ichiro's breath in her ear. Ichiro exclaimed and facepalmed, I forgot to say to you, I am not in Jensa anymore. Ah, uh, where? Azra asked curiously. Winter light. Ichiro simply replied and sat down on the chair. The phone call went silent. Nighty. Hello. Ichiro kept saying but didn't get an answer. Ichiro looked at the phone to check if the call got disconnected, but it wasn't. But then he heard a voice, W what did you say? I might have misheard. Winter light, Ichiro said again. Ah uh, W why are you there? 
Azura asked with a nervous and excited face. Ichiro sighed, good place to get stronger, I guess. To see which school, if I may ask. Azura's heartbeat increased. Ichiro didn't think it was a weird question, high school of fighting in cold land. 3C I need to go mom is calling. Alright, good night, Ichiro said softly, and the phone call disconnected. Ichiro put the phone back in his pocket and started talking with his jealous group of friends. In her cold apartment, Azura was lying on her bed while the blanket covered her figure she dropped the phone and looked at the ceiling silently. She put her hands on her face and screamed, Kaiaia, but since her hands were on the way, the scream sounded like mumbling. He is here he is here, her heartbeat increased every second, he is here, should I tell him? Then we could meet up but what if he is disappointed once he sees me, Azra murmured sadly she stood up and walked towards the mirror she saw her beautiful and exquisite looking face, capable of charming everyone. She spun around, her youthfulness clearly visible, but when she grabbed her chest, small, she murmured sadly. She again took her phone and looked at the picture in her phone, a picture she had been staring at for months without stopping, does he like big maybe he will be disappointed should I tell him I want to meet him, Azra lied down on her bed and had a battle of her mind. Should she tell, or not?